Dedication and Prefatory Note of an Introduction to the Birds of Pennsylvania. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Larry Wilson. An Introduction to the Birds of Pennsylvania by George Mish Sutton. Dedication. My mother thinks she does not know much about birds, but she knew enough about them to let me bring them, alive, dead, or worse than dead, into her busy household, and I think she is a good ornithologist. Prefatory Note I have written this book for those who are beginning a study of birds in Pennsylvania, or for those who, after some study in a certain region, wish to know more about the birds in other sections of the Commonwealth. This book is not intended to be a complete reference work. The descriptions of the birds and statements of their status are as brief as I felt I could make them under the circumstances. Many species of birds which have been recorded in Pennsylvania are not even mentioned. These are omitted so as to simplify the list for the beginner, who is confronted with a sufficiently formidable array of new and strange names as it is. All important species are, however, included. Colored illustrations throughout this hand manual would, of course, have been desirable, but their cost is great, and the pen drawings are adequate for field work, perhaps, in fact, even better than fully colored drawings, which often lead the beginner to expect too much from the glimpses he may have of birds in the field. Throughout the manual, I have attempted to stress the points which are of importance to the field student, and have tried to eliminate material which might lead to confusion. Thorough, detailed work on Pennsylvania birds are needed. Such volumes, one on Western Pennsylvania by W. E. Clyde Todd of the Carnegie Museum, Pittsburgh, and one on Eastern Pennsylvania by Dr. Whitmer Stone of the Philadelphia Academy of Arts and Sciences, are in the making now. But it may be years before these completed volumes are ready for distribution, and in the meantime our budding ornithologists are carrying on their studies handicapped by a lack of any sort of reference work which is up-to-date, understandable, simple, and local in its treatment, and within reach of those of average means. This volume has been prepared to meet this need. It is hoped that the ornithological notes of those who use this manual may be so conscientiously written and so carefully kept that they will be of value in the final preparation of the larger, more exhaustive works which are to follow. I have a suggestion to make to those who would like to make this volume more attractive and somewhat personal in character. Why not, as certain birds are identified, color in the pen and ink drawings with watercolor or crayon, so that they will greet the eye in color as the pages are turned? The paper used is such that colors may be applied with safety if care is exercised. Children, in particular, will greatly enjoy this feature of their bird study work. Teachers who like to combine elementary artwork with nature study will welcome such a suggestion. A book which has, in a sense, been thus personally illustrated becomes invaluable to the owner. I should like to extend a word of gratitude to the following people who have helped me in the preparation of this volume. Captain George Finlay Simmons of the Cleveland Museum of Natural History. Mr. Wharton Huber of the Philadelphia Academy of Natural Sciences. Mr. Robert McFarland of the Mount Pleasant Press, Harrisburg. Miss Evangel Sutton, my sister. Mr. Leo A. Lutringer, Jr., my assistant. And Miss Effie Riemann Snyder of Harrisburg. George Mish Sutton, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, July 29, 1928. End of Prefatory Note Section 1 of An Introduction to the Birds of Pennsylvania. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Betty B. An Introduction to the Birds of Pennsylvania by George Mishk Sutton. A Word to the Beginner. As you glance over the pages of this book, you may say to yourself, I can never learn all of these birds. This is a natural attitude of mind upon the part of one to whom many bird names are new and who feels that he doesn't know much about birds. 
it may be reassuring to you to learn that most people know more about birds than they realize already your mind is full of common bird names you wouldn't be reading this book had you not already learned a good deal about some birds here is a bit of good advice instead of taking this book to the field with you in the hope that you may accurately identify every bird you see suppose you choose eight or ten birds which you do not know but about which you wish to learn and concentrate upon these you already know the bluebird the robin the crow suppose you try now the wood thrush the towhee the meadowlark look these up in the book find out whether you may expect to see them at the time you are to make your trip of discovery learn where to look for them what to look for when they appear something about what they will say as they call or sing and fasten these facts in your mind if you adopt this procedure you will not be misled into identifying some bird of the deep woods as a meadowlark or a bird of the open field as a wood thrush some birds will puzzle you of course but as you continue your study these problems will be solved as a serious bird student you will first of all want to be able to describe a bird accurately using some acceptable scientific terms some of these will be new to you but they will all become understandable in a short time on the next page is a chart showing the names of the birds parts you should become so familiar with these words that they will not confuse you many books give complete color keys which are to help the beginner i do not believe much in these because i have always found them tedious and difficult i believe that good sketches obviate much of the need of such keys in making your studies be careful not to expect to find birds during seasons when they do not normally occur on the other hand if you identify a bird at a time which is not indicated in this manual special note should be made for pioneer records such as these are valuable to the author who wants to gather together all data and the last word has not yet been said upon all the movements of even our commonest species bird songs it is my belief that but few people altogether lack a sense of tune some of my students at the university of pittsburgh had difficulty i remember in diagramming bird songs but with a little practice you will be able to jot down syllables which will help you to recall bird songs the well-known names chickadee phoebe and killdeer are all permanent records of this very sort of syllabization of bird songs an attempt to write down what the bird is saying sometimes a bird will be heard again and again before it is seen if my notes concerning songs are at all accurate some of these will help you to find birds which you might have difficulty in identifying from appearance alone notebooks write down all sorts of notes be they ever so incomplete make sketches of birds as you see them diagram the songs and call notes keep all that you write as accurate and free from imagination as possible do not accredit a bird with certain colors until you see them a notebook may take the form of a diary wherein is stated the temperature of the day the weather conditions the length and route of your field trip and the birds which you saw together with notes upon them or your system may be more elaborate with a separate sheet for each species whereon you put all the data which you accumulate more or less perforce in chronological order the principal point to remember is that notes should be written while they are fresh in the mind on the spot if possible to avoid inaccuracies specimens only a few ornithologists can have a complete collection of birds for reference everyone can save feathers of birds or old nests however and when birds are found dead they may be saved as specimens if a permit for holding them is requested from the state game commission when i was a lad i saved feathers which i found in the woods and had a large collection of these some of them i later found were all that were needed in authenticating a good record you will find it helpful to visit a good museum occasionally so as to have a close view of the birds you have been reading about or studying under difficulty in the field here you will see clearly the color patterns the anatomical characteristics and the actual size of the birds that have puzzled you field glasses a good binocular 
preferably one which magnifies about six times, is a great aid to the amateur. The field of the glass, its illumination, ease of adjustment, and such points should be investigated before the purchase is made. A well-made glass with good lenses is probably the best in the long run, even though it be more expensive. Glasses should be handled carefully. They should have a good carrying case and should not be left lying in the sun nor exposed to the rain. Books Many excellent standard works upon birds are available. When I was youngster, I wore out three volumes of Dr. Frank M. Chapman's Bird Life. I devoured the reading matter, cut up the pictures, and studied the technique of the artist who had painted them. By the time I had destroyed the third copy of this helpful volume, I knew the birds treated there pretty well. Chapman's Handbook of Birds of Eastern North America is a desk-side companion today. The little pocket volumes called Bird Guides by C. A. Reed are helpful but the color plates in them have been used so many times that they are worn out, with the result that the colors are often very misleading. Dr. B. H. Warren's volumes on The Birds of Pennsylvania, published in 1888 and 1890, contain much of value and interest, including a series of colored pictures which always elicit praise. These volumes, while interesting historically, do not meet the needs of the Pennsylvania bird student today in the light of present knowledge the excellent state publications birds of new york eaton and birds of massachusetts forbush are magnificently illustrated and are well worth possessing they treat of many of the species found in pennsylvania books on general aspects of ornithology which you will find useful are wetmore's the migrations of birds ball's bird biographies blanchon's bird neighbors and birds that hunt and are hunted chapman's what bird is that Kua's key to north american birds the national geographic society's book of birds and four bushes useful birds and their protection magazines the proceedings of the delaware valley ornithological society published under the title cassinia contain a wealth of material interesting to the pennsylvania student the Cardinal, Journal of the Audubon Society of the Sewickley Valley, and a well-edited periodical, contains articles of interest chiefly to workers in western Pennsylvania. The Auk, the Wilson Bulletin, Bird Lore, the Oologist, the Condor, Western, and Nature Magazine, all are likely to contain articles of interest to Pennsylvania bird students. Bird Hikes Early morning hikes are good but activity among birds is high as a rule until 10 o'clock a.m. or later, so you need not be in haste to get out at 4 o'clock unless you have to go far. The trained bird student so comes to depend upon songs that he stays out as long as the birds are singing. Windy days are poor because the birds are shy. In gentle rains, birds will often be very active and tame. Toward evening, Birds often become active and vociferous again. Only a few of our birds sing during the heat of the midsummer noon. In the field, winter is an ideal time to begin bird study because there are no leaves and because the birds are few and not difficult to identify. If you learn the winter birds thoroughly, you will be ready for the rush of the spring as old favorites return and new friends appear. Midsummer is often a disappointing season because birds are silent and in poor feather. At this time, you will be able to study the plumages of the young birds, however, and you will find much of interest in watching the affairs of family life. Migrant shore birds should be watched during late summer. Fall is the season of trials. Now come the restless, somber-colored hordes, most of them silent, save for a few brief call notes. When you can easily identify all the fall birds, you are a pretty good ornithologist. In approaching a bird, common sense will warn you that you should be as quiet as possible. You should be obscurely dressed, and if you can go under, around, or between bushes rather than through them, you will cause less disturbance. Often the best way to study birds is to find a pleasant, somewhat hidden spot and remain there for an hour, watching all that comes by. A good bird student in the course of his walk 
will try to visit as many different kinds of country as he can he will visit the ponds and marshes the grapevine thickets the open fields and the hemlock woods of his neighborhood he knows that in these different regions he is likely to find different birds in fact unless he does carefully study all of these regions he is not thoroughly studying the bird life of his locality you may have trouble in seeing some birds though you pursue them ever so tirelessly try kissing the back of your hand in such a manner as to imitate the cries of a young or wounded bird this sound will often arouse the curiosity of the wariest bird and he will come close i thus made a squeaking sound once and a robin hit me with full force on the neck she was so convinced that i had one of her young in my dreaded clutches that she gave stern battle these squeaking cries sometimes draw even the birds of prey value of pennsylvania birds birds are of great value from the economic standpoint the insects destructive mammals and reptiles and weed seeds which they destroy are all enemies of man it is amazing that in the scheme of nature certain birds should patrol the air others the fields others the trees others the forest floor and so on so that all outdoors is in a sense cared for by our feathered friends it has been said that our very existence depends upon these birds who make it possible for the trees the flowers and the grain fields to grow and all the while these same creatures are delighting us with their beautiful colors and their cheerful songs game birds are important in pennsylvania with seven hundred thousand hunters faring forth each fall in addition to our popular game birds the bob white wild turkey and ruffed grouse the game commission has introduced the ring-necked pheasant and hungarian partridge these foreigners relieve the burden of shooting from our native game from the economic standpoint only a few birds in pennsylvania may be said to be thoroughly undesirable the goshawk is a savage destroyer of small game and poultry his smaller cousins the sharp-shinned hawk and cooper's hawk are killers the great horned owl is destructive at times other hawks and owls the crow kingfisher starling and other species have some destructive or undesirable traits but they are not altogether bad our valuable song and insectivorous birds have been protected since 1858 certain migratory birds such as the loons grebes herons and gulls have been protected since 1900 by the international bird treaty with canada today we protect one admittedly destructive bird the raven because it is so rare and because of its fame in literary circles helping our bird friends we may encourage birds to live about us if we bear in mind their needs in winter we may feed the chickadees cardinals downy woodpeckers and other birds which live in our neighborhood we may tack pieces of suet on a sheltered branch and scatter grain and grit on feeding counters when snow is on the ground birds have considerable difficulty in getting enough food and our assistance will sometimes keep them from starvation feeding shelters may be very simple or they may be elaborate but they should be placed and built so as to serve the needs of the birds best a feeding shelf built at a window furnishes a very attractive and useful device before spring is upon us we should erect nesting boxes for the purple martins bluebirds and house wrens we wish to attract those who are interested in securing specifications for these boxes should write to the game commission at harrisburg for their bulletin a year's program for bird protection in spring we should think of the trees or shrubs which will attract birds a fruit-laden mulberry tree always attracts birds in midsummer thick bushes placed in clumps will almost surely lure nesting catbirds or chipping sparrows a trumpet vine will mean hummingbirds in midsummer the bird's bath must be arranged such a bath may be very simple but it must not be deep and the edges should slope into the deeper water gradually remember that the water should be changed frequently unless a running stream is provided house cats and birds do not thrive together as a rule if you wish to make conditions as nearly ideal as possible for your bird friends you had better not keep a cat for these animals are by nature crafty and bloodthirsty 
and they will catch birds for sport even though they are well fed if you carefully watch the birds you will become aware of their needs you may find it necessary to shoot starlings occasionally if they persist in ousting flickers from their nests you may have to plant sunflowers to attract goldfinches you may find it desirable to allow part of your property to grow up into weeds and bushes so that it may furnish a home for some unusual bird neighbor at my home at bethany west virginia we have permitted raspberry vines to grow on a hillside back of the house and here indigo buntings nest within a few rods of the open windows life zones in pennsylvania the term life zone is used by scientists in referring to a region where environmental conditions so react upon each other as to form a suitable home for certain plant and animal forms a life zone naturally has no hard and fast boundaries as does a geographical zone its boundaries are determined by temperature rainfall soil altitude drainage and innumerable other factors which so create a certain average whole as to attract certain species of plants birds mammals and so forth which in turn themselves become part of the environment and are responsible for the presence of certain forms these life zones are then associations which naturally develop in sections where similar conditions exist in pennsylvania there are three or four of these associations one noticeable in the southern and southwestern counties has been called the carolinian life zone here such birds as the carolina wren cardinal tufted tit and red-bellied woodpecker live in much of pennsylvania the alleghanian life zone occurs where the least flycatcher wilson's thrush swamp sparrow and rose-breasted grosbeak are to be found in summer higher in the mountains is the canadian life zone here the junco hermit thrush red-breasted nuthatch wilson's snipe and northern water thrush nest as you read this book you will notice that many birds are to be found in northern or mountainous counties others in southern or less mountainous counties and so forth this is an indication of life zone distribution bird migration in pennsylvania some of our winter birds spend the year round in one region certain of them like the song sparrow and crow migrate to an extent the nesting individuals moving southward during winter their place being taken by other individuals of the same species from farther north some winter birds such as the junco golden crowned kinglet brown creeper and tree sparrow visit us from the north and return to their canadian nesting ground with the arrival of spring most of our familiar summer birds spend the winter to the southward many of them in south america they come to us for a few months each year for the sole purpose of bringing forth their young many species of birds pass through pennsylvania en route from their home in the south to their nesting grounds in the north and back again in the fall by far the greater number of species migrate to an extent the phenomenon of bird migration has caused many a student to wonder how did such a tremendous annual movement originate how do the birds endure their great flights across bodies of water the probability is that the migration of birds developed in past centuries as the food supply in the tropics became insufficient for all the nesting birds which tried to bring forth their young there urged by the need for solitude and a good food supply certain birds pushed out from the ancestral range and established a new summer home after the young were reared instinct drew them back to the region which was familiar to them and so great migration routes have developed today the tiny ruby-throated hummingbird rears his young in our woodlands then returns to south america with the young birds our yellow warbler red-eyed vireo purple martin rose-breasted grosbeak scarlet tanager and many others all go to south america food conditions no doubt have something to do with migration movements birds are well clothed with feathers to be sure but many of them depend on an insect diet such as would be difficult to secure during cold winters some of our birds actually do not migrate if a food supply is available most of the smaller birds migrate at night 
following streams or mountain ranges swallows and hawks usually migrate by day ducks and geese by both day and night the ohio delaware and susquehanna river valleys are important routes of migration the shore of lake erie is a resting ground for birds which have flown over this large body of water in fall at presque isle the trees may be alive with birds which have just made the flight the atlantic coast is an important route of migration for many water birds since pennsylvania has no salt water shoreline we do not find some species which are to be found along the coast of new jersey and delaware many birds which occur in abundance at erie in fall rest there until they are able to take another flight then they start southward for a feeding or resting ground south of pennsylvania and therefore skip over most of the commonwealth the distribution of birds and the constancy of their migration routes is a source of much wonder to all of us why should the two palm warblers for instance so invariably be found each year one to the eastward one to the westward of the mountains why should some birds be here in fall and not in spring why should others be so variable in numbers if you keep careful notes upon the migratory birds you may eventually help to solve some of these problems End of section one. Section two of An Introduction to the Birds of Pennsylvania. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. An Introduction to the Birds of Pennsylvania by George Meek Sutton Horned Grebe Through Black Turn Horned Grebe Columbus Oritus Linnaeus Other Names Dipper Hell Diver Description Neck Long No Tail Feathers Toes Flat and Broad Feet at Rear of Body Sexes Similar Adult in Spring large puffy head black with stripe and silken plumes behind eye buffy plumage of back blackish edged with gray secondaries white neck breast and sides chestnut belly silvery white eyes bright pink the pupil encircled with a white ring immature birds and adults in winter grayish black above silvery white beneath grayish on the throat with white cheek patches which nearly meet on nape length thirteen and a half inches range in pennsylvania a migrant throughout the commonwealth from march twentieth to may tenth and from october first to november thirtieth occasional in winter when water is free of ice the white on the sides of the head and the white wing patches distinguish this species in winter plumage from the pied billed grebe the gay spring plumage of the horned grebe is unmistakable look for this bright-eyed diver along the larger waterways its ability in swimming under water causes it to evade its enemies by disappearing beneath the surface rather than by flying grebes have the interesting habit of swallowing their own feathers as they molt or as they pluck them out oibel's grebe colimbus olboelli a much larger bird is very rare in pennsylvania in spring plumage it has a red-brown neck it is about twice as large as either the horned or pied-billed grebe and has a proportionately heavier and larger bill pied-billed grebe podilimbus podiceps podiceps Linnaeus. Other names Dab Chick, Hell Diver, Dipper, Dipper Duck, in parentheses, erroneous. Description Sexes similar, adults in summer, glossy, dark brown above, throat black, neck, breast, and sides grayish, washed with brownish, and indistinctly mottled with blackish lower breast and belly glossy white black band across bill 
immature birds and adults in winter. Similar, but without black on throat and bill. Length, 13 and a half inches. Range in Pennsylvania. Rare as a summer resident, chiefly because there are so few lakes and marshes suited to its nesting. Fairly common as a migrant from April 1st to May 15th, and from August 25th to October 30th. Nest, flat, composed of decaying vegetation, floating among water weeds or anchored by plants which are attached to the bottom. Eggs, four to seven, dull white, usually so heavily stained as to be brownish in appearance. The pied-billed grebe is such an excellent diver and can so artfully escape detection by swimming beneath the surface of the water with only its bill exposed that it is often a difficult bird to observe. On land it is virtually helpless. The shortness of the body of the swimming grebe makes it comparatively easy to identify, and the unmarked wings distinguish this species from the horned grebe. The pied-billed grebe will frequently be seen along smaller streams and in little ponds. Loon, Gavia emer emer, Brunic. Other names, Great Northern Diver, Loom. Description, size large, bill long and sharp, tail very short, with legs sticking out behind. Adults in spring, upper parts black with bluish and greenish reflections, patches on throat and sides of neck streaked with white, back and wings marked regularly with rows of white squares, underparts silvery white, sides black spotted finely with white, eyes red. Immature birds and adults in winter. Upper parts blackish, margined with gray and without white spots. Throat and neck grayish, underparts white. Length, about 30 inches. Range in Pennsylvania, a fairly common migrant along the larger lakes and waterways from March 15th to May 10th and from October 1st to December 15th. Occasional in winter when the water is free of ice. The loon is at perfect ease in the water. On land it shuffles along, using its wings as feet, and it cannot rise in flight from the ground. It lives almost altogether on fish, which it captures under water and swallows entire. As a rule, it is to be seen far out from shore, floating quietly. Easily it slips under the water perhaps to reappear a hundred yards or more from the point at which it went down. The weird laughing cry, which is famous in literature, is not often heard in Pennsylvania, since the birds do not nest here. In the hand, the loon is easily recognized by its striking coloration in spring, or in winter by its long, sharp bill and its large, webbed feet. At a distance, in the water, it may be confused with a cormorant, which has a hooked bill and a rather long tail, or with some of the larger ducks which have shorter, more stubby bills. The smaller red-throated loon, Gavia stellata, usually a rare bird in Pennsylvania, is found during winter or early spring. In winter, the back is gray, flecked with white, in spring, there is a triangular patch of red-brown on the lower throat. It is always white below. Herring gull, Larus argentatus argentatus, Pontopiden. Other names, seagull, gray gull. Description, sexes similar. Adults in summer, white with pearl gray back and wings. Tips of wings black with white spots. Bill yellow with orange spot near tip of lower mandible. Feet pale pink. Eyes pale yellow. Adults in winter, similar, with gray spots on head and neck. Immature birds, 
dark gray-brown at a distance, with blackish bill and dark brown eyes. In the hand, the upper parts are found to be dark gray, considerably marked with buffy. The acquiring of fully adult plumage requires several molts. Birds which are not fully adult may have black-tipped white tails. Young, in their first flight plumage, are darker than older individuals. Length, 24 inches. Range in Pennsylvania, a somewhat irregular migrant and winter resident throughout, save at Erie, where it is common during summer, though it does not apparently nest there. In the interior, it appears in spring as soon as the ice breaks up and is usually noted along the larger waterways. Large gulls seen in Pennsylvania are usually of this species. Their long wings and graceful flight mark them at great distance. The smaller ring-billed gull, which is not easy to distinguish from this species in the field, has greenish-yellow feet and a black band across the bill. Herring gulls are often abundant about the harbor at Erie. Ring-billed gull, Larus deliwarensis, Ord. Description, sexes similar. Adults in summer, like the herring gull, but much smaller, with greenish-yellow bill crossed near tip by black band, and with greenish-yellow feet. In winter, the head and neck are spotted with gray. Immature, gray-brown, tail white with black band near tip. End of bill black. Length, 18 inches. Range in Pennsylvania. An irregular migrant in February, March, and April, and in October and November, sometimes appearing in flocks, occasional in winter. The ring-billed gull should be identified in the field with a glass. It is much like the herring gull in general appearance, and, unless it be compared directly with a larger bird, may pass undetected. Remember the yellowish feet and the black band across the bill. Bonaparte's gull, Croicocephalus, Philadelphia, Ord. Description, size small. Sexes similar. Adults in summer. White with rosy flush on belly. Head black with white spot at eye. Pearl gray mantle and black tipped wings. Adults in winter lack the rosy flush of the underparts and have white heads upon the back of which are two dusky spots. Immature birds are similar to adults in winter but have a black band near the tip of the tail. Length, 14 inches. Range in Pennsylvania. A fairly regular migrant along the waterways from about April 1st to May 10th, sometimes considerably later, and from September 1st to October 10th, not often seen in winter. This, the smallest of our gulls, is often seen in flocks. At Canoe Lake, Crawford County, where they are regular visitors, they circle about rapidly, like terns, resting on the water at intervals or standing on a floating timber. Their black heads distinguish them easily from all other species, save the laughing gull, Croicocephalus atricilla megalopterus, a larger species which nests along the Atlantic coast and which may occur occasionally along the waterways of the southeastern part of the Commonwealth. Common tern, Sterna irudo, Linnaeus. Other names, sea swallow, striker, Wilson's tern. Description, smaller than a gull, with long, deeply forked tail. Adults in summer, top of head glossy black. Rest of body pearl gray, save throat, sides of head and tail, which are white, the outer tail feathers with outer webs pearl gray. Bill red with black tip. Feet orange red. Adults in winter, similar but with fore part of head and underparts white and bill blackish. Immature, 
similar to adults in winter, but plumage considerably washed with brownish, lesser wing coverts slaty, and tail short though forked. Length, 15 inches. Range in Pennsylvania, a rather irregular migrant. The more rapid flight, long forked tail, and habit of pointing the bill downward rather than forward while flying, distinguish the turns from the goals. Common turns are sometimes seen flying gracefully about a small pond, seeking small fish or aquatic insects, which they capture with great dexterity. During migration they are usually silent, and they do not often remain long in one locality. The much larger Caspian tern, Hydropronia caspia imperator, is similar in color pattern to the common tern, but has a much heavier red bill and a short though forked tail. This species, which is decidedly rare as a migrant in the interior, has established a small nesting colony near Erie. The Caspian tern is 21 inches long. Black tern, Cledonius nigra surinamensis, Jimlin. Other name, marsh tern. Description, size small, tail short, forked. Adults in summer, head and underparts black, save under tail coverts, which are white, upper parts gray, bill and feet red. Adults in winter and immature, white with pearl gray back and wings and dusky spots on head, bill and feet dusky, length 10 inches, range in Pennsylvania, irregular as a migrant throughout the Commonwealth, more frequently seen than other terns about marshes and on small bodies of water, usually seen between April 25th and September 30th. Though it is thus to be seen in midsummer irregularly, it is not known to nest in Pennsylvania at the present time. The adult black tern, as it courses about a marsh or pond, is a beautiful, buoyant creature. Its flight is swallow-like. It is probable that this species nests occasionally along the Lake Erie shore or at some of the larger lakes wherever there are marshy shores. End of section two, read by Carolyn Seifarth, October 2023. Section three of An Introduction to the Birds of Pennsylvania. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Stunning An Introduction to the Birds of Pennsylvania by George Mishk Sutton Double-Crested Cormorant Through Blue-Winged Teal Double-Crested Cormorant Phala Crocorax Oritus Oritus Lesson Other Name Shag Description Four toes all webbed together, bill long and strongly hooked at tip, tail stiff and moderately long, plumage thick and firm, adults in breeding plumage, glossy greenish black, save on back which is dark gray, each feather being margined with lighter gray, two filamentous tufts of black feathers on back of head. Neck with thin sprinkling of silk and white feathers during period of courtship. Bill blackish. Marked at base with dull yellow. Sack under bill yellow. Eyes bright green. Immature and adult in winter. The plumage usually seen in Pennsylvania. Without crests and whole plumage brownish black. Somewhat mottled beneath. And with light area on throat. Eyes grayish-green, not bright green. Length, about 30 inches. Range in Pennsylvania. A migrant found principally along the larger waterways from about March 20 to May 10, 
and from September 15 to November 15. It is occasionally seen in winter when the water is free of ice. Cormorants sit low in the water, so that, while swimming, their tails do not show as field marks, but their long necks, large heads, and the strongly hooked bills distinguish them at a considerable distance. In flight, their wings beat regularly. The bulky, wide-winged white pelican, Pelicanus orithorhynchos, is occasionally noted as a straggler in Pennsylvania. It is white with black wing tips and is so noticeably equipped with long bill and throat pouch that it can hardly be confused with any other species. Its four toes are all webbed together, as in the double-crested cormorant. Additional records of this species are desirable. Merganser Mergus merganser americanus Casson Other names Shell Drake Goosander, Fish Duck, Sawbill, American Merganser. Description. One of the largest of the ducks, bill long and narrow with teeth on both mandibles. Adult male. Head and upper neck greenish black, lower neck, patches and wings, and underparts white. Belly suffused with salmon pink, noticeable in some individuals. Back, shoulders, and wings black, rump and tail gray. Bill and feet red, eyes bright red. Adult female, head with two large crests and neck rich brown, marked with white areas in front of eye and on chin and upper throat. Upper parts ashy gray, patch and wings, and breast and belly white. Length, 25 inches. Range in Pennsylvania. A fairly common and regular migrant along the larger waterways and sometimes on the smaller streams from about March 15 to April 20, and from October 1 to December 1. It frequently occurs in winter when the water is free of ice. The mergansers are all expert fishermen and like to fish in swift water. They dive easily and their serrate bills help them to hold their slippery prey. The female merganser is difficult to distinguish from the female red-breasted merganser. In the present species, however, the white area on the chin and upper throat is sharply defined, whereas in the red-breasted species, the chin and throat are not white, but of a brownish color, paler than the rest of the head. Red-breasted merganser. Mergus serrata lineus. Other names. Sheldrake. Fish duck, sawbill. Description. Male with long, graceful crest of fine feathers. Female with double crest, as in the female merganser. Male. Head and upper neck, glossy greenish black. Lower neck, patch on upper chest, patches on wing, and underparts, white. Back, black. Rump and tail, grayish. Breast, reddish brown mottled with black, and on sides marked with a striking double row of black and white feathers. Sides finely barred with blackish. Legs, feet, and eyes red. Female. Head and neck rufous brown, grayish on crown and crest. Throat not white, but of paler brown than rest of head. Back grayish, washed with brown. Underparts white. Sides marked with brown. Bill and feet brownish. Base of lower mandible reddish. Eyes brown. Length 22 inches. Range in Pennsylvania. A fairly common and regular migrant, principally along the larger waterways, appearing somewhat later in spring than the preceding species and disappearing earlier in the fall. It is said that the red-breasted merganser is less frequently seen along the smaller streams than is the larger merganser. Both species eat fish and therefore are not considered as of much value for food. Hooded merganser Lophodites cuculatus Linnaeus Other names Sheldrake Fishduck Description. 
Bill long and narrow, with teeth on both mandibles. Male. Head, neck, back, and tail, black. A high, fan-shaped crest on head, strikingly marked with white. Speculum, white. Sides, rufous, finely barred with black. Breast and belly, white. Eyes, bright yellow. Female. Dull brown, somewhat brighter on the thin crest, and grayer on head and neck. Upper throat, belly, and speculum, white. Eyes brown. Length, 18 inches. Range in Pennsylvania. Fairly common and regular as a migrant from March 25 to April 15, and from October 25 to December 10. It has been noted in summer locally, so there is a possibility that it nests, though there are no definite records at present. The male hooded merganser is one of our most striking birds and cannot easily be confused with any other species. The hooded merganser may be found along a quiet stretch of a small stream where the handsome males at rest do not display their high crests. In such mood, the head has much the appearance of that of the other species of fish duck, thin, long, and snake-like. When rising, the birds beat their wings with amazing rapidity, the white speculum in the wings flickering brilliantly. This species is not so often found in swift water, as are the merganser and red-breasted merganser. Mallard Anas platorincus platorincus linnaeus Other names Gray mallard Wild duck Description Male Head and neck rich glossy green with violet reflections Neck with striking white collar. Back and wings gray. Speculum, violet, bordered with black and white. Rump and upper and under tail covert black. Tail feathers whitish. Breast rich glossy chestnut. Sides gray, finely barred. Belly white. Bill yellow. Feet bright pink. Female. Mottled and streaked all over with grayish brown. Speculum as in male. Bill, dull greenish yellow. Feet, dull pink. Length, 23 inches. Range in Pennsylvania. Common and regular as a migrant from March 1 to May 20, and from October 1 to December 15. Nests locally and uncommonly, chiefly in swampy regions or along small, upgrown streams. Nest. Built in a depression under a bush or in high grass, usually near the water, and lined with down. Eggs. 6 to 15. Pale greenish buff. Duck eggs are usually glossy in appearance. The mallard, best known of our ducks, is the ancestor of several domestic strains of waterfowl. It is usually found in flocks along the shallow margins of streams, where it procures its food by nibbling along the bottom while its tail protrudes from the water. The white tail and red feet of the male, which contrast with the gray of the back and wings, are good field marks as the flock hurriedly rises and makes way. Black Duck Anas rubribris tristis Brewster Other names Black Mallard Dusky Mallard Description. Sex is similar. General appearance, dark brown, darkest on top of head and on back. All feathers margined with brownish buff. Cheeks buffy, streaked with black. Speculum rich violet, bordered with black. And at tips of feathers with white. Underwing plumage white, bill greenish. Feet dusky in black duck. Bright red in the red-legged black duck. Length, 22 inches. Range in Pennsylvania. A fairly common migrant from March 1 to May 10, and from October 1 to December 25. Uncommon and local as a summer resident. Chiefly near lakes or quiet stretches and streams. Nest and eggs like those of the mallard. 
Two forms of the black duck occur in Pennsylvania. The smaller, duller black duck as a migrant occurs at about the same time as the mallard and nests locally. The red-legged black duck, Anas rubripes rubripes, a summer bird of Labrador, comes south later in the fall and has been known even to occur in the northern part of the state in late December. So there is a probability that this form occasionally winters when the water is free of ice. Both the mallard and black duck quack loudly, like domestic ducks, particularly when they are surprised. Large, dark-colored ducks, which show white under the wings as they fly off, are likely to be black ducks. Gadwall Cholesmus streperus Linnaeus Other name Gray duck Description Smaller than mallard. Male. Top of head with low, fluffy crest. Mottled with rufous and black. Sides of head and neck buffy. Streaked and spotted with black. Breast and lower neck black. Each feather with a central spot and border of white, which gives a remarkably beautiful scaled appearance. Back gray-brown. Rump and upper and undertail coverts black. Breast and belly whitish. Sides finely barred with blackish. Lesser wing coverts chestnut. Speculum white. Feet yellow. Female. Similar but duller. And with chest and sides buffy. Thickly spotted with blackish. Underparts white. More or less spotted with black. And with little or no chestnut on the lesser wing coverts. Length, 20 inches. Range in Pennsylvania. A rare and irregular migrant from about March 10 to April 30, and from September 25 to October 30. This is one of our rarer ducks. I have found the yellow feet of this species to be a fairly good field mark, but in the swimming birds, the white speculum, though it be nearly covered by the flank feathers, is a reliable feature. Gadwalls feed in shallow water, as do their close relatives, the black duck and mallard, and they often feed at night. Definite records of this species in Pennsylvania are desirable. Bald pate. Mareca americana. Gemlin. Other names. Widgeon. American widgeon. Description. Male. Top of head white or buffy. Sides of crown. Back of eye glossy green. Spotted with black. Rest of head buffy. Finely streaked and spotted with black. Breast and sides pinkish brown. The sides finely and thickly barred with black. Belly white. Back gray brown. Finely barred black. Bill blue gray. Female. Head and neck pale buffy, finely streaked with black, breast and sides dull pinkish brown, washed with grayish. Belly white. Back grayish brown, barred irregularly with buffy, greater wing coverts brownish gray, their outer webs mostly or entirely white, their tips black, sometimes edged with white, greater underwing coverts white. Length, 19 inches. Range in Pennsylvania. Rather common as a migrant from March 1 to August 15, and from October 1 to November 1. Sometimes abundant, particularly along the larger streams. The white crown patch of the male bald pate not only has given this bird its name, but also furnishes an excellent field mark. The pinkish brown breast and sides are somewhat diagnostic also though this color is not usually seen to good advantage in the field. The call note is said to be a sort of whoo-whoo-whoo. Bald pates are, as a rule, shallow water feeders. The European widgeon, Marica panelepe, should be looked for in Pennsylvania. The male has a buffy crown. 
The underwing coverts of the female are barred, whereas in the female bald pate, the greater underwing coverts are white. Green Winged Teal Nechen Carolinense Gamelin Other name Mud Teal Description Small for a duck, being about half as large as a domestic duck. Male. Head with flowing crest, chestnut. An area around and back of eye to nape, glossy green. Bordered below with a thin whitish line. Chin black. Upper part gray, finely barred with black. Speculum green, bordered with black and buffy. Middle undertail covert black. Lateral ones creamy. Breast and sides pinkish brown, finely barred with black, a white bar on side of breast, belly white or buffy, spotted, sometimes irregularly with blackish. Female. Top of head blackish, feathers edged with rufous, sides of head and neck white, heavily streaked with black, upper parts blackish, all feathers margined with buffy green, speculum on wing, as in male. Underparts considerably mottled, not barred as in male. Length, 14 and one half inches. Range in Pennsylvania. A migrant from March 20 to April 20, and from September 25 to November 10. Often found along smaller streams. Locally, as at Conowate Lake and at Erie, it is common during the height of migration. The teals are our smallest ducks. Their size and remarkably swift flight make them comparatively easy to identify, save in foggy weather when the apparent size of birds in the field is apt to be misleading. The green wing feeds, like the mallard and black duck, by tipping in shallow water and plucking food from the bottom. Blue-winged teal. Querquedula discus. Linnaeus. Description. Size small, as in green wing. Male. Head dark blue-gray with violet reflections. Crown dark brown. Chin and sides of base of bill blackish. A crescent-shaped patch of white in front of eye. Back brown, barred and mottled with black. Breast white, buffy or rusty, heavily spotted with black. Lesser and middle wing coverts, gray-blue, forming a conspicuous color area, particularly in flight. Speculum, glossy green. Female and immature. Crown, dark brown, irregularly streaked with grayish. Sides of head and neck, grayish. Streaked with black. Throat, whitish. Breast and belly, usually whitish, spotted and margined with blackish. Speculum, glossy green. Length, 16 inches. Range in Pennsylvania. A migrant from April 15 to May 15, and from September 1 to October 15. Sometimes quite common. It may nest occasionally in marshy situations. The blue lesser wing coverts of this species are fairly easy to recognize, even at a considerable distance. It is relatively silent while it is passing through Pennsylvania. The green wing is more voluble. At Wildwood Lake, near Harrisburg, blue wing teals occur with some regularity along a marshy neck of land, which protrudes into the lake at the mouth of an inflowing stream. Here the birds rest quietly, feeding in early morning and toward evening, and flying about only when they are disturbed. They are usually mated by the time they reach this latitude in the spring. End of section three. Section four of an introduction to the birds of Pennsylvania. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Shelley Hobson Higgins. An Introduction to the Birds of Pennsylvania by George Mitch Sutton. 
Section 4. Shoveler to Buffelhead. Shoveler. Spatula. Clypeter. Linnaeus. Other name. Spoonbill duck. Description. Comparatively small, but larger than the teals. Bill very large and broad. Noticeably so, even at considerable distance in the field. Male. Head and neck rich black. Glossed with green and violet. Line down back of neck and back dark brown. Belly and sides rich chestnut. Lesser wing coverts grey-blue. As in the blue-winged teal, the greater coverts brownish, tipped with white. Speculum, green. Upper and under tail coverts, black. Eyes yellow. Feet pink. Female. Head and neck streaked with black and buffy bars. Throat buffy. Underparts buffy. Feathers margined and spotted with dark brown and buffy. Feet orange pink, paler than in male. Eyes brown. Bill greenish yellow, blotched with brownish. Immature birds are intermediate in appearance between the adult male and adult female. The immature female's speculum is noticeably greyish, with little green. Length, 20 inches. Range in Pennsylvania. Rather rare migrant from March 1st to April 15th and from September 15th to November 1st, not usually seen in large flocks. The huge bill of this species will distinguish it in any plumage. Its blue wing coverts have much the appearance of those of the blue winged teal. Pintail, Daphila, Acuta, Tsitsihoa, Vielo, other names, Sprig, Sprig tail, spike tail. Description. Neck long and slender in both sexes. Male in mating plumage, which is characteristic of the winter months. Head warm brown, glossed faintly on cheeks with violet. Back of neck blackish, bordered by white stripes, which run down the sides of neck to breast. Back brownish grey. Shoulders black, margined with white or buffy, wing brownish grey, the greater coverts tipped with cinnamon, speculum green, bordered narrowly with white, central tail feathers very long and narrow, black, underparts white, sides heavily marked with fine lines of black, female, crown blackish. Irregularly marked with rich brown. Throat white. Sides of head and neck considerably streaked. Breast buffy. Spotted with blackish. Feathers of sides margined and barred with dark brown and white. Underwing coverts dark brown. Bordered with whitish. The male in summer breeding dress resembles the female. Length. Male, 28 inches in full, long-tailed plumage. Female, 22 inches. Range in Pennsylvania. A fairly common and regular migrant from March 1st to April 15th and from September 20th to December 15th. It has even been known to winter in the northern part of the Commonwealth. The female, while not strikingly marked, may be recognised by the long neck, the sharply pointed middle tail feathers, and by the dark under wing coverts. Pintails are swift flyers and have the ability of rising straight into the air from a pond or from the ground. Wood duck. A. Sponsar. Linnaeus. Description. Smaller than mallard, both sexes with crest. Smaller in female than in male. Male. Head and crest rich glossy green with violet and blue reflections.
A line from bill over eye, a line alongside of crest, and other lines in flowing feathers of crest. White, throat, a band from it up cheeks, and a wide band at nape, white. Breast and an area at either side of base of tail chestnut, the breast spotted with white, band on breast in front of wing, white, sides buffy, finely barred with black, the long flank feathers tipped with striking bands of black and white, back greenish brown, scapulars blackish, glossed with steel blue and greenish, speculum steel blue tipped with white, Primaries tipped with greenish blue. Tail blue back. Eyes red. Bill dusky white and red. Feet yellowish. Female. Area below and back of eye and throat white. Crown brown. Glossed with purplish. Sides of head ashy brown. Breasts and sides greyish. Streaked and mottled with brownish. Belly white, back olive brown, glossed with greenish. The inner primaries tipped with greenish blue. The immature resembles the adult female. The male in eclipse plumage, which he assumes during late summer, is similar to the female. Length, 18 and a half inches. Range in Pennsylvania. Fairly common as a migrant and summer resident throughout arriving in early April and remaining until November 1st. Common are the most species of this family along the smaller streams. Nest, in a cavity in a tree. Eggs, 7 to 15. Buffy white. The male wood duck, thought by many to be the most beautiful American bird, is a gorgeous creature. It is little wonder that an Indian legend tells us that a little grey duck, while on a search for happiness, swam into the end of the rainbow and came forth the brilliant creature we now call the wood duck. Agile almost as a perching bird, these ducks run about on the ground, snapping up insects, or swim buoyantly in quiet pools near the woodland they have selected as their summer home. In a cavity in a tree, Sometimes at considerable distance from the water, and at quite a height from the ground, the down-lined nest is built. The young birds, it is said, clamber out of the nest and fall to the ground as best they can, without being helped by either parent. Surely young birds which survive such an ordeal are prepared for the later battles of life. Wood ducks are fond of acorns and of the seeds of many aquatic plants. The young birds, like the adults, are amazingly agile and run about like young chickens, bright-eyed, attractive and so small as to be fairly ludicrous as they race into the water for a swim. Redhead, Niroca americana, Iton. Description, head high, rising abruptly from bill, both sexes with tendency towards fluffy, round crest. Male. Entire head bright rufous, glossed with purplish. Lower neck, all around, breast and upper back, blackish. Rest of back and scapulars, finely barred with wavy black and white lines of equal width. Wing coverts brownish-grey, wings grey, without a noticeable speculum. Upper and under tail coverts black. Belly white, lower belly more or less barred like back, sides barred as in back, eyes yellow, bill blue-grey. Female, upper parts dark greyish-brown, darker on wings, all feathers more or less margined with buffy or ashy, neck buffy, somewhat mottled, breasts and sides grey-brown, washed or margined with buffy. Belly and undertail coverts somewhat suffused with buffy. Eyes brown. Bill blackish with blue-grey band at a end. Length 19 inches. Range in Pennsylvania. Fairly common as a migrant, noticeably along the larger waterways, 
from March 1st to April 25th and from October 10th to November 15th, sometimes occurs in great flocks. The high head and yellow eyes distinguish the male redhead from the male canvasback, which is otherwise similar in appearance. Canvasback, Aristonetta vallicinaria, Wilson. Description. Bill long and gradually sloping up to the head, which is long and low, different markedly in this respect from that of the redhead. Male. Head and neck rufous, chin and crown blackish, lower neck, breast and upper back black, back and wing coverts barred with black and white, the white lines so much wider as to appear, even at some distance, whiter than in the redhead. Belly white, sides finely barred, upper and under tail coverts and tail black, eyes reddish brown. Bill, blackish. Female. Head, neck, breast and upper back, light rufous. Throat pale. The front parts of head somewhat brighter. Back greyish brown. Feathers washed with wavy white lines, which the female redhead does not have. Belly white. Sides greyish brown. Sometimes marked like back. Length, 21 inches. The female is a little smaller than the male. Range in Pennsylvania. A fairly common and regular migrant, principally along the larger waterways, usually from March 10th to April 20th and from October 1st to December 15th, sometimes abundant, irregular in winter. The white back of the male canvasback is noticeable at a distance. The female, which is rather similar to the female redhead, may always be recognised by the long, rather thin bill and low head. Scorp, Fulix marilla nearctica, Stainugger. Other names, Bluebill, Blackhead, Raft Duck, Greater Scorp, American Scorp. Description, Adult Male. Head, neck, breast and upper back, black. Head with greenish reflections. Back and scapulars barred with black and white. Speculum, white. Upper and under tail coverts, black. Belly white, lower belly and sides finely barred with black. Bill, blue-grey. Eyes, yellow. Female. Area about base of bill, white. Head, neck, upper back and breasts dark brown, margined with buffy on breast. Rest of upper parts, somewhat lighter brown. Sides brown, marked with wavy white lines. Belly and speculum white. Length, 18 and a half inches. Range in Pennsylvania. Fairly common as a migrant from March 10th to April 25th and from October 1st to December 10th. The scorps are among the species of this family's most commonly recorded at reservoirs and along large waterways. The two scopes are not easy to distinguish in the field, and certain identification depends upon the males, for the females are very much alike. The male scope's head shows greenish reflections. The lesser scope's head is glossed with purplish. Lesser scorp. Fulix affini iton. Other names, bluebill, blackhead, raft duck. Description, decidedly similar in both sexes to the preceding species, but smaller, and the male's head with purplish rather than greenish reflections. The barring of the sides of the lesser scorp is stronger than in the scorp. The females of the two species are practically indistinguishable in the field. Length, 16 and a half inches. Range in Pennsylvania, commoner throughout than the preceding species, although some of our field records may be open to question in view of the similarity of the two. The white speculum, dark head and blue-grey bill are good field characters to remember. Ring-necked duck, Perisonetta colaris, Donovan. Other names, 
Bluebill, Blackhead, Raft Duck. Description. Both sexes similar to the scorp and lesser scorp in general appearance, differing in the following respects. In the male ring neck, the chin is white. The head, which has a somewhat higher crest than in either scorp, is richly glossed with purplish blue. There is a rich brown colour about the neck, not easily noted in the field. The back is blackish and the speculum is grey, not white. The female ring neck may be distinguished from the female scorps by the grey speculum. The head and neck of the female ring neck often has a mottled or spotted appearance. In both sexes, the blackish bill, which is crossed near the tip with a whitish band, is an excellent field mark. If the sun is bright, this band may give the impression that the bird is holding some small, shining object in its bill. Length, 16 and a half inches. Range in Pennsylvania. While our records tend to indicate that this species is less common than the scorp or lesser scorp, it is probably fairly regular and common as a migrant occurring at about the same time as the lesser scorp. Goldeneye, Glaucianetta clangula americana, Bonaparte. Other names, Cuphead, Whistler. Description, both sexes with short, stubby bills and high heads. Male, head black, glossed with green, a white spot below and in front of eye. Neck, exposed part of wing coverts, speculum and part of scapulars and underparts white, rest of plumage black, eyes yellow, female, head brown, neck paler, breast, back and sides grey, speculum and underparts white, eyes yellow, length 20 inches range in Pennsylvania. A migrant which sometimes occurs in winter when there is open water, but is not often common. It is to be found from March 1st to April 15th and from October 10 to November 30th. Golden eyes will sometimes be seen resting on a floating piece of ice. The musical whistling sound of their beating wings has been responsible for their common name, Whistler. The large head and ludicrously short bill are fairly good field marks for this species, even at a considerable distance. The strongly contrasting black and white plumage of the male is not easily to be confused with that of any other species. The Barrow's Golden Eye, Glaucianetta islandica, is much rarer in Pennsylvania than the Golden Eye. The male has a purplish head and a somewhat crescent-shaped patch in front of and below the eye. His scapulars are marked with white areas along the shafts. Records of this species are very desirable. Bufflehead, Charitonetta albiola, Linnaeus. Other names, Butterball, Dipperduck. Description, about half as large as a mallard, both sexes with short bills and high, rounded crests, more or less as in the golden eye. Male, head black, glossed handsomely with greenish, purplish, bluish and fiery orange. A large white band across back of head from eye to eye. Lower neck, wing coverts, speculum, outer scapulars and underparts white. Back and wings, black. Lower back and tail, greyish. Eyes, dark brown. Female. Head and upper breast, dull brown. Patch on either side of head. Speculum and breast and belly, white. Length, 15 inches. Range in Pennsylvania. Common, sometimes abundant as a migrant, from March 15th to April 15th and from October 1st to November 10th. It is often seen along the smaller, swifter streams and at small lakes. Mated pairs are usually noted in spring. 
The male, like the wood duck, is a creature of great beauty. The bufflehead is a good diver and can disappear at the wink of an eye with the agility of a grebe. It eats much animal matter, including small fish, which it captures while diving. These ducks are often exceedingly fat, and this tendency, as well as the plump roundness of their body, has given them the common name Butterball. End of section 4「Section 5 of「An Introduction to the Birds of Pennsylvania」「This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org.」「An Introduction to the Birds of Pennsylvania」by George Meeksh Sutton「Old Squaw」to Least Bittern「Old Squaw」Clangula aimalis, Linnaeus. Other names, Old Wife, Sow Southerly, Long-Tailed Duck. Description, Male, with very long, narrow middle tail feathers, longer than in the pintail. Female, without long tail feathers. Male in winter, sides of head washed with grayish brown, sides of back of head and upper neck black, more or less margined with buffy, rest of head, neck, upper back, scapulars, and lower belly, white, back and wings, breast and upper belly, black, bill black with yellowish-orange band across end, eyes pale brown, female, upper parts dark brown, scapulars and back more or less margined with grayish, sides of head and neck white or whitish, breast gray, belly white. The male in summer has the sides and front of head white. The rest of the plumage is chiefly black, save the belly, which is white. Length, male, 21 inches. Female, 16 inches. Range in Pennsylvania. A migrant from February 20th to April 10th and from November 1st to December 20th, sometimes occurring in winter and irregularly very abundant. Tremendous flocks have been noted at Conneaut Lake and at Lake Erie. The old squaw is a handsome and noisy species and demands attention wherever it is found. It usually feeds in deep water and therefore is found but rarely in smaller ponds or along streams. The underwing coverts are dark, and there is no speculum in the wing. Its rapid flight carries it along, a few feet above the water, at from 35 to 60 miles an hour, perhaps faster, and it alights with a swish. It is an expert diver. The scoters. Three species of scoter occur in Pennsylvania. They are diving ducks and are usually to be found only on the larger bodies of water. As a rule, they are not common. They are fond of salt water and are commonly found in the bays along the Atlantic coast. The adult males all have grotesque and highly colored bills. All scoters are commonly called black ducks in the interior. Along the coast, they are called also sea coots. Scoters will, as a rule, be found in large, raft-like flocks. American Scoter Oidemia Americana Swainson Description Male Black with rich purplish reflections Ridges among feathers of neck Bill black with knob at base of upper mandible Peach yellow Feet brownish red Eyes dark brown Female and young, gray-brown in general appearance, with cheek region whitish, sharply defined from crown. Underparts whitish, irregularly barred and mottled with dusky. Length, 19 inches. Range in Pennsylvania, rare migrant and winter visitant from November until early April, commonest, perhaps, at Lake Erie and Conneaut Lake. 
This is probably the rarest of the scoters in Pennsylvania. Further data are desirable. White-winged scoter, Odemia de Glandi, Bonaparte. Description, size large, noticeably larger than a mallard. Male, black with white spot below and at rear of eye, and white speculum. Belly and sides rich deep brown. Bill orange with long knob, black at base, feathers reaching forward on it far beyond corners of mouth. Feet red, eyes white. Female and immature, deep brown, lighter below. Speculum white, spot at base of bill and ear coverts whitish, not always clearly defined. Length, 22 inches. Range in Pennsylvania. As a rule, rare, save at Lake Erie and Conneaut Lake, where it is sometimes fairly common during late fall. It is rarer in spring than in fall. The white speculum of this large, heavy species will serve to identify it at some distance. Surf scoter, Melanita perspicillata, Linnaeus. Description, larger than mallard. Male, black with square crown patch and triangular nape patch of white. Feet red. Bill marked with red, white, and yellow. A black spot near base. Eyes white. Female and immature. A whitish spot at base of bill and on ear coverts, much as in the white-winged scoter. Upper parts dark brown, throat, breast, and sides grayer. Belly white. Length 20 inches. Range in Pennsylvania. Like the white-winged scoter, rare, save at Conneaut Lake and Lake Erie, where it is a fairly common fall and rare spring migrant, which sometimes occurs during the winter. Scoters are occasionally seen along the Susquehanna and the Delaware rivers, but they are not, as a rule, either common or regular. The strange shape and color pattern of the bills of male scoters will distinguish them at once in hand. They are given to flocking, and as they feed, most of the flock may disappear for seconds at a time, to bob up buoyantly as others of the flock slip under. Ruddy duck, Eris matura, jaw mycensis, Jimlin. Other names, butterball, bullhead, bullneck, dipper duck. Description. Both sexes with thick necks, short upper tail coverts, and stiff tails, about half as large as a mallard. Male, crown black, cheeks and chin white, throat, neck, and back rich rufous, lower back and tail blackish, breast and belly silvery white, somewhat mottled along sides. Bill, pale gray-blue, eyes black. Female and immature. Upper parts dark grayish brown, feathers marked with narrow, wavy, buffy bars. Sides of head and upper throat whitish. Lower throat and neck grayish. Underparts silvery white. Length 15 inches. Range in Pennsylvania. Fairly common and regular as a migrant sometimes abundant from April 1st to May 15th and from October 1st to November 15th. It is seen along smaller as well as larger waterways where it may dive readily upon being approached. The ruddy duck, with its stiff upturned tail, is comical in appearance. The male, while in bright breeding plumage, is given to holding himself with a jaunty air. They are expert divers, but sometimes have difficulty in rising from the water, for their wings are comparatively small. As they get under way, they patter with their great feet, while their wings beat the water noisily. The neck of the ruddy duck is unusually large for a duck. The head may even be pushed back into the skin of the neck. 
In most ducks, the circumference of the neck is noticeably less than that of the head at its greatest diameter. Canada goose, Branta canadensis canadensis, Linnaeus. Other names, wild goose, honker. Description, size large, about that of a domestic goose, with about the same proportions. Sexes similar. Head and neck black. A broad band under eye and across throat white. Upper parts brownish gray. The feathers margined with a lighter shade, giving a somewhat scaled appearance. Breast and sides gray brown, more or less as in back. Belly white. Rump and tail black. Upper tail coverts white. Feet and bill black. Eyes dark brown. Length about three feet. Range in Pennsylvania. A regular and sometimes common migrant from mid-February to early April and from October 15th to November 30th. Sometimes occurring in winter, even when ice covers the lakes, at which times the great birds stand about on the frozen surface. As a rule, Canada geese do not stop long in Pennsylvania. Most flocks do not linger here at all, merely passing over. For us, since the days of our forefathers and for the red man who originally inhabited Penn's woods, the V-shaped spring flocks of Canada geese have heralded the breaking up of the winter and, in the fall, the coming of the cold season. Canada geese migrate both by day and night, but they are noticed at night more often than by day, because in the comparative stillness of the dark hours, their loud musical bugling drifts down to us as we lie awake, thrilled at the sound. Could we see the great birds, could we know the distant climb toward which they are heading, some of the mystery might be dispelled. But their long journey, their great bodies speeding along at sixty miles an hour or more, and their wide swishing wings are only suggested by the clamor and challenge that comes to us, holds us spellbound, then gradually dies away as the flock passes on. Canada geese are not so aquatic in habit as are ducks. Large flocks often descend to the fields where they feed upon grass or sprouting grain, and where they walk about in a dignified fashion. It is supposed that an old gander always leads the migration flocks. While this may not be the case, it is reasonable to assume that adult birds, with their experience and intelligence, should determine the movements of the flock. Canada geese sometimes fly in a line, sometimes abreast, but the V formation is characteristic. The greater snow goose, Chen Iperboreus nivalis, a white bird with black wing tips, sometimes flies across Pennsylvania. It has been recorded once or twice in huge flocks. The white fronted goose, Aner albifrons gambelli, a gray goose with a white area at the base of the bill, black spots on the belly and yellow feet, occurs rarely. The brant, Branta bernicla glaucogastra, smallest of our geese and similar to the Canada goose, but with only a suggestion of a white band on the neck, occurs rarely. It is a maritime species, not often noted inland. Whistling swan, Chinus columbianus, ord. Description, size very large neck extremely long, and wings spread sometimes as much as six to seven feet. Sexes similar. Adults pure white, bill and feet black, a small yellow spot at base of upper mandible just in front of eye. Eyes brown. Young birds are pale brownish gray in color, usually darkest on the head and neck. As the immature plumage is replaced by the adult plumage, a vague mottling appears. Length, about four and a half feet. Range in Pennsylvania. A fairly regular migrant along the larger waterways. Rare and irregular elsewhere. Occasional in winter. 
It is usually seen in early spring from March 20th to April 15th, and from October 15th to December 1st. A flock of swans flying in the sunlight is an inspiring spectacle. The birds are so large and their plumage so immaculate that they attract attention everywhere. They sometimes migrate in immense flocks. In storms or on foggy nights, they may become bewildered and descend to smaller streams, but, as a rule, they are found only along large open stretches of water. At Harrisburg, swans sometimes spend the winter along the Susquehanna, when the water is open. The trumpeter swan, Oler buccinator, always a very rare bird in the eastern United States, and of late thought to be on the verge of extermination, is even larger than the whistling swan. The bill of this species is entirely black, lacking the yellow spot which is characteristic of the adult whistling swan, and being of a different shape. American bittern, Botarus lentiginosus, Montague. Other names, thunder pump, bum cluck, steak driver, plum puddin. Description, sex is similar, larger than crow. Upper parts brown, considerably mottled, streaked and barred with black. A glossy black streak from corners of mouth down sides of neck. Throat white. Neck and breast marked with broad buffy brown streaks, which are mottled with brownish gray, in imitation of dead cattail leaves. Belly buffy. Feet greenish. Bill greenish yellow at base, blackish at tip. Eyes bright yellow. Length 28 inches with the neck stretched out. Range in Pennsylvania. Fairly common migrant and summer resident, nesting only in marshy situations. It arrives in early April and leaves in late September or early October. Nest A platform of cattail leaves and stalks, or other dead vegetation usually placed in a remote section of some marsh, among rather high weeds. Eggs, three to five, pale, buffy, brown. The bittern is a terrestrial heron and rarely alights in trees. It may be confused with the immature black-crowned night heron, which, unlike the bittern, often perches on a prominent branch or on a treetop. To know the bittern, one must penetrate the swamp. From the cattails, a great brown bird arises, green feet awkwardly dangling. Rapidly, the creature makes away once it has started. Perhaps it utters a startled squawk as it jumps from the grass. In the spring, male bitterns have a remarkable courtship ceremony, which is accompanied by the queer sounds which have given the bird most of its common names. These names, most of which are very good renditions of the queer sounds the birds give, are bum cluck or plum puddin. The familiar nicknames stake driver and thunder pump also suggest the sounds. While they give these sounds, the male birds inflate their necks and fluff out their feathers as they strut and bow and snap their bills. The sitting mother bird depends greatly upon her remarkably protective coloration. Taken unawares, the hunting bittern will stand erect, with bill pointing skyward, realizing that its dull colors, its streaked breast, and its sharp bill all resemble cattail leaves. The eyes of a bittern are so arranged that the bird can point its bill straight up, yet, at the same time, look directly at us as we approach. Its golden yellow eyes have a serpentine appearance. Young bitterns in their ragged natal down are odd creatures. They clamor about their crude cradle, soon developing remarkable strength in toes and feet. The bittern and young black-crowned night heron are our only large brown herons. The bittern has yellow eyes. The young black crown has dark brown eyes. Least bittern, Ixobricus exilis exilis, Jimlin. 
Description. Size, very small. Body, hardly as heavy as that of a robin. Proportions, those of a heron, however, with long bill and feet and short tail. Male. Crown, which has a crest, back and tail, glossy black. Back of neck, chestnut. Lesser wing coverts, buffy. Greater wing coverts and secondaries, chestnut, darker than neck. Underparts, buffy, somewhat streaked on neck with white and fine lines of brownish. A black patch at each side of breast. Throat, line along sides of back and of breast, and under tail coverts, whitish. Feet, yellowish-green. Bill, yellowish, tipped with dusky. Eyes, yellow. Female and immature. Similar, but black of crown and back, less glossy. Coloration throughout, less striking. Length, 13 inches. Range in Pennsylvania. Rather rare migrant and summer resident, save locally, when it nests in cattail swamps and similar situations. Its date of arrival is open to question, since the birds are so silent and retiring as to pass for the most part unobserved. They probably come in mid-April and leave in late September. Nest, a platform of cattail stalks and similar materials built on the ground, or a few inches above the ground, or in weeds above the water, and is surrounded by high weeds and grasses. Eggs, three to six, pale blue. The least bittern is one of our quietest, most retiring birds, and is therefore but little known. It may occur regularly in cattail swamps where it has never been seen, simply because no one ventures into its damp, shadowy home among the high green blades. It moves slowly as a rule and with marvelous control. As it has very strong feet, it can climb up the cattail leaves where it sometimes perches so as to survey its surroundings the better. If startled, it flies up rapidly. But, like a rail, it does not like to fly far because its long, rather awkward wings appear to tire quickly and it drops back into its retreat where it is usually difficult to find it again. The parent bird has the strange habit of destroying and perhaps eating her eggs if they are disturbed. We found a nest containing two fresh eggs at Sandy Lake, Mercer County. Upon returning a few hours later, I found but a few shells in the nest. I feel certain the parent bird, either the male or female, had destroyed the eggs. End of Section 5 Read by Carolyn Seifarth November 2023。Section 6 of an Introduction to the Birds of Pennsylvania。This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Mike Jankart. An Introduction to the Birds of Pennsylvania by George Mix Sutton. Great Blue Heron through Florida Gallinule. Great Blue Heron. Hardea, Herodias, Herodias, Linnaeus. Other names. Crane, Fish Crane, Sandhill Crane. All erroneous. Description. Size, very large, the largest of our herons. Sexes, similar. Adults in breeding plumage. Blue-gray, Generally speaking, center of crown and throat white, sides of crown and nape black, where long black feathers form a considerable crest, neck grayish brown, tinged with pinkish, a narrow black, white, and buffy line down middle of foreneck, feathers of lower neck much lengthened and narrowed, with whitish and blackish streaks, bend of wing chestnut brown, a ruff of black on shoulders. Breast and belly streaked with black and white. Feathers on legs reddish-brown. Legs and feet black. Lower mandible yellow. Eyes bright yellow. Immature. Similar, but entire crown black and plumage considerably marked. Margined 
and washed with rusty. Adults have plume-like feathers on the lower back, which the immature birds lack. Length, about four feet. Range in Pennsylvania. A common summer resident along all waterways, irregular and local as a nesting species. However, usually found in colonies. The birds arrive in mid-March and remain until late October. They have been noted irregularly during winter. Nest. In Pennsylvania, the great blue heron usually, if not always, nests in trees. In some sections of the United States, it nests on the ground. The nest is a huge, sprawling affair made of long sticks and placed high in a tree, which, if alive, becomes dead as a result of the droppings from the birds. Eggs. Three to six. Pale blue. Reports concerning sandhill cranes in Pennsylvania usually refer to this species, as cranes do not occur here. Cranes have an elevated, short hind toe. The hind toe of a heron is on the same level as the other toes, and therefore shows in the track. Herons fly with their necks doubled back, except when they are springing into the air or alighting. Cranes always hold their necks straight out. The great blue heron is an expert fisherman. Statuesque, he stands in the water, intently watching for fish, which he captures with his great, powerful bill, and he can swallow a 14-inch fish without great difficulty. He has favorite fishing points, and here, in the mud along the bank, his great tracks may be seen. If the bird student wishes to see one of these herons, he usually has but to wait at such a point for the evening hour of fishing and the wide-winged bird, with neck drawn back into the body and feet sticking straight out behind, will fly deliberately down to the angling grounds and there promptly devote himself to capturing a meal. American Egret Casmerodius albus egretta Gmelin Other names Egret White crane Erroneous Description Size large standing about three feet high, pure white with black-tipped yellow bill, yellow eyes, and black feet. In its breeding plumage, it has exquisite plumes on the back. Birds seen in Pennsylvania usually have no trace of these plumes. Length, about three feet with neck fully stretched. Range in Pennsylvania. A midsummer wanderer found chiefly in the southeastern counties where it may occur in some numbers during July and August. The egret, as it stands along a verdant bank, is a creature of great beauty. Its white plumage makes it conspicuous in any setting. It is larger than the little blue heron, which, in its white phase of plumage, also occurs in Pennsylvania during midsummer. The delicate nuptial plumes, stripped from the backs of nesting birds, were once very popular as decorations for women's hats. Little Blue Heron, Florida, Chirulia, Chirulia, Linnaeus. Other names, White Heron, White Crane, Erroneous. Description, Smaller than Egret, White with dusky wingtips, Bill Dark, Dull Gray Green, Feet Greenish. In its breeding range, some birds are dark blue, others white. It is supposed that there are two phases of plumage. In Pennsylvania, the white phase is customarily seen. Length, 22 inches. Range in Pennsylvania. A midsummer wanderer usually seen in the southeastern counties during July and August. This bird should not be confused with the snowy heron, a southern species which does not wander much during summer and which never has dusky spots on the wingtips. The smaller green heron has a somewhat bluish back, but must not be confused with this species. Green heron. Viturides, virisens, virisens, linnaeus. Other names. Fly up the creek, shite poke, green bittern. Description. Size small, sex is similar. Crown, crest, and line below the eye black. Glossed with green, throat whitish, extending down neck as a frontal line 
which widens at breast. Neck reddish-brown, glossed with purplish, back with plume-like feathers, blue-green, appearing blue in most lights. Wing coverts glossy green, margined with buffy. Tail green, belly gray. Some feathers edged with buffy. Bill yellowish with dusky tip. Feet and eyes bright yellow. Immature. Modeled in appearance, considerably streaked with black on neck and underparts. Crest small. No plume-like feathers or blue-gray color on the back. Nestlings are covered with long, irregular down. Length, 17 inches. Range in Pennsylvania. A common summer resident from April 10 to September 30. It is to be found along all small streams and ponds. Nest. Of sticks, placed together as a shallow platform, from 6 to 30 feet from the ground in a bush or tree. Eggs. 3 to 6 pale blue. Green herons sometimes nest in small colonies, but in Pennsylvania are more frequently found in solitary pairs. The green heron has the interesting habit of twitching its tail nervously when it is excited. These small but adept fishermen are usually frightened from some favorite haunt along a stream. They fly up rapidly, uttering loud, harsh squawks, which may be written ki or ski Their yellow feet and blue backs show plainly as the birds fly away. The fact that the green heron's back is so noticeably blue should not lead the bird student to think he is seeing the little blue heron, a species which is rare in Pennsylvania and which, when it does occur, is usually found in its white plumage. Black-crowned night heron, Nyctocorax, Nyctocorax, Ivius. Bodder. Other names. Quack, bull, bittern. Description. Larger than crow, bill heavy, and blunt for a heron. Neck usually drawn in, though it is of considerable length, as in other members of the family. Sexes similar. Adults. Forehead, lores, neck, and underparts white. Somewhat grayish on neck, crown, upper back, and scapulars black. Glossed with green. Two or three long white plumes on back of crest. Wings, tail, and lower back clear gray. Legs and feet yellow. Bill dusky with yellowish green base and bare area in front of eyes. Eyes red. Immature. Grayish brown above. The feathers streaked or tipped with buffy or whitish. Outer webs of primaries rusty. Underparts whitish. Streaked with dark gray brown. Feet and legs yellow, bill dusky. Eyes dark red-brown or red. Length, two feet. Range in Pennsylvania. A summer resident, locally abundant in eastern and southeastern Pennsylvania, where colonies occur along the Susquehanna and Delaware rivers. In western Pennsylvania, the species is rare and irregular. At Erie, it has been noted a few times. It arrives at its nesting grounds in late March or early April and remains until October. Nest. A platform of sticks usually placed high in a tree. Many nests, sometimes hundreds of them, are placed together in a favorite grove which is usually near a lake or on an island in a river. At Harrisburg, the night herons nest on McCormick's Island. Eggs. Three to six. Pale blue. The loud, barking, Quaw of the night heron, as it rises from its fishing ground and flies over after nightfall, is a startling sound. The species may be identified easily from this sound alone. Immature birds look somewhat like a bittern, but the bittern is a bird of the ground, rarely alighting in trees, whereas the night heron, after being frightened from a retreat along the shore, usually alights on a high branch. Night herons sometimes circle over the water snatching their food from the surface like gulls. As a rule, such activities are noted only during the nesting season, however, when the young have to be fed. When there are no family duties, they prefer to hunt at night. The heavy bill and habit of perching with neck drawn in gives the bird a characteristic appearance at a distance. The nesting colony, while interesting to the bird student, 
is offensively filthy and has a disagreeable odor. The young, when newly hatched, give forth a peculiar chuckling peep, which has a somewhat ventriloquistic quality. As they develop, they clamber about the branches, using their necks, wings, and bills in crawling from perch to perch. King Rail, Rallis elegans elegans, Audubon. Description, the largest of our rails, about the size of a crow, but with slenderer body. Sex is similar. Underparts dark brown, feathers of the back and scapulars widely margined with olive gray. Wings and tail olive brown. Throat and areas in front of and above eye white. Neck and breast rich reddish brown much like the breast of a robin. Sides and flanks dark brown or blackish, sharply and widely barred with white. Bill, dull reddish yellow, tipped with black. Feet, dull reddish. Eyes, bright red. Immature birds are darker and less handsomely marked. Length, 15 inches. Range in Pennsylvania. A rare local migrant, probably occasional as a summer resident. It nests only in marshy sections. Nesting records are very desirable. It is to be found from April 15 to mid-September. The king rail, though a rather large bird, is so rare and retiring that it is rarely seen, and Pennsylvania records are few. It has been noted chiefly in the less mountainous counties and is apparently commoner in the fall, when the gunners sometimes take the bird. King rails are weak flyers. Sometimes they drop exhausted in the middle of a city and residents are startled at seeing a queer bird on the streets. Virginia rail. Rallis virginianus lineus. Description. Size of a robin. Sex is similar. Underparts dark brown or black the feathers edged with olive brown or gray, wings and tail dark brown, reddish brown on coverts, forepart of superciliary line and throat, white, cheeks grayish, underparts reddish brown save on flanks and under tail coverts, which are black or dark gray, sharply barred with white, bill and feet reddish, eyes red, Immature birds are darker throughout, and the red-brown of the underparts is replaced by blackish mixed with white. Length, 9.5 inches. Range in Pennsylvania. A fairly regular but local summer resident, sometimes common, from April 15 to September 30. It nests only in marshy situations where it lives among cattails or other aquatic vegetation. Nest of cattail leaves or grasses made in a cup placed at the base of water plants on the ground or a short distance above the water, usually well sheltered from above, sometimes by a canopy of cattail leaves, which has been arranged by the parents. Eggs, 6 to 11, buffy white, spotted with dark or reddish brown. The pig-like grunts and squawks of a pair of Virginia rails may bewilder the casual wayfarer near a cattail marsh. Rails are rarely seen, but may appear along one of the open waterways if the observer remains motionless and silent. Sora Rail, Porzana, Carolina, Linnaeus. Other names, Ortolan, Reed Bird, Carolina Rail. Description, smaller than a robin, bill rather short, sex is similar. Adults, Center of crown, region at base of bill, back to eye, and broad line down chin and throat, black. Front of crown, sides of head, and rest of throat and breast, ashy gray. A tiny white spot, back of eye. Upper parts, olive brown. The feathers with blackish centers, those of the back and scapulars, narrowly but sharply edged with white. Wings, dark brown. The covert, somewhat lighter. Belly and sides of under tail coverts, white. Bill yellow. Feet green. Eyes brown. Immature birds are similar but lack all black on face and throat. The breast and neck are washed with cinnamon brown rather than gray, and the upper parts are darker. Length, 8 inches. 
range in Pennsylvania, fairly common and regular as a migrant, locally abundant from April 25 to May 15, and from August 25 to October 15, occurs as a summer resident wherever marshes furnish it a nesting site. It is not common as a breeding species. Nest. A crude cup made of dead cattail leaves or grass, arched over and well concealed by surrounding marsh vegetation. Eggs, 8 to 16, buffy, spotted with brown. The Sora is a weak-winged bird and during migration often flies so low that it strikes itself against wires. These injured birds are often the only individuals of this retiring species which are seen by Pennsylvania bird students unless the cattail marshes where the birds nest are visited and penetrated. In the home of the Sora, many strange call notes are to be heard when the birds are curious or disturbed. Some of these notes are sweet and musical. Others are strange and hardly bird-like. One call, which is a series of rapidly descending notes, is characteristic. The yellow rail, Coternicops novoborosensis, is smaller than the Sora and is rich, buffy yellow with dark, streaked upper parts. It is exceedingly rare, in fact, virtually unknown, save at Erie and in the marshes about Philadelphia, where it occurs chiefly as a migrant. Additional records are very desirable. The tiny black rail, Cressicus gemicensis gemicensis, is about as large as an English sparrow and is dark brown, sprinkled with white above, with a red-brown mantle from nape down neck and dark ashy gray below with barred flanks and red eyes. The black rail has been noted but a few times in Pennsylvania. Additional records are very desirable. Florida Gallinule Gallinula chlorapis cachinins Fangs Other name, mud hen Description, smaller than crow, bill of medium length, general appearance rail-like, sexes similar, adults, Head, neck, upper back, and underparts, slaty gray. Darker on crown and face, a row of white streaks along sides and indistinct bars of white on the belly. Lower back and wings olive brown. Richest on scapulars and tail. Under tail coverts white laterally, black in middle, bill with frontal shield, red and yellow tip. Feet greenish yellow with red area on tibia just above heel, eyes red-brown, immature, similar but with underparts whitish, no red on legs, and bill brown, with small frontal shield, length 13 and a half inches. Range in Pennsylvania, a rather rare migrant during mid-spring and early fall, rare and local as a summer resident. Nest, a crude cup of dead cattail leaves, placed on the ground or above the water, among water plants. Eggs, 3 to 10, buffy, finely spotted with brown. The Florida gallinule, while not often recorded in Pennsylvania, may be commoner than we suppose. Look for it in cattail marshes, along channels, or little pools of open water. Its call notes are rather chicken-like. End of section 6. Section 7 of An Introduction to the Birds of Pennsylvania. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Rita Boutros. An Introduction to the Birds of Pennsylvania by George Mix Sutton. Coot, Folica Americana, Gemellin. Other name, mud hen. Description, size of a small duck. Feet with wide, flat lobes. Unique among American birds. Sexes similar. Adults, head and neck black. Rest of plumage dark slaty gray, somewhat paler below, and sometimes irregularly barred with whitish on breast and belly edge of wing, tips of secondaries, and lateral undertail coverts, white. 
bill whitish with frontal shield and two small spots near tip mahogany red legs and feet greenish somewhat paler on tibiae and on lobes on toes young similar but with a brownish wash on back and lighter below frontal shield noticeably smaller length fifteen inches range in pennsylvania a fairly regular and common migrant especially on the lakes and larger waterways from april fifteenth to may fifteenth and from september fifteenth to november fifteenth often found in company with ducks rare as a summer resident it should be looked for along the shore of lake erie in summer nest a crude cup made of cattail leaves sometimes placed in a rather open situation but arched over with grasses eggs seven to fifteen pale buffy white heavily and evenly sprinkled with small dark brown spots the coot's queer feet are distinctive as the bird rises from the water it patters along with these until it has sufficient momentum to rise nesting records for the coot in pennsylvania are desirable woodcock rubicolor minor gemellin other names wall-eyed snipe bog snipe description appearance snipe-like with very long bill and large eyes in back of the head but feet very short more as in gallinaceous birds sexes similar the female larger three outer primaries narrow and stiff adults back of crown black crossed with buffy bars upper parts dark brown and black the feathers barred margined and speckled with buffy brown and gray wing coverts buffy brown barred with darker brown under parts buffy tending toward rufus tips of tail feathers gray above silvery white underneath eyes dark brown bill and feet pinkish flesh color downy young buffy brown considerably marked with blackish length eleven inches range in pennsylvania a rather uncommon and somewhat irregular migrant and summer resident coming sometimes as early as the first week of march and remaining until the middle of october it is sometimes common during migration particularly in the fall nest a mere depression in the leaves usually in more or less open woodland sometimes concealed from above by brush or a bush or tree eggs three or four buffy brown spotted with darker brown in spring the woodcock must be sought in some bushy swale along the borders of a marsh or near a small stream where the low banks are constantly moist and where brush and old logs give this retiring species a retreat here the nocturnal birds bore in the mud with their long bills searching for food which they may grasp with the mobile tips of their mandibles when disturbed they fly up rapidly their wings whistling musically as they make off somewhat erratically through the undergrowth the spring courtship flight of the woodcock is remarkable on warm evenings the males bleat in their favorite haunts then as darkness descends mount on whistling wings higher and higher until they are far above the earth they then hurl themselves back and forth as they start pitching toward the earth, the while producing a twittering sound with their throats as they drop at considerable speed to a light not far from the point at which they started. Courting woodcocks will sometimes alight within a few feet of a quiet observer. Because the incubating bird is quiet, and her back so perfectly resembles the leaves and twigs near her, she is very difficult to see. She so implicitly believes that she cannot be seen, that she is not often flushed from her nest. 
Sometimes she will permit her back to be stroked, or her whole body to be lifted from her eggs. Wilson Snipe, Gapella Galenago Delicata, Ord. Other names, Jack Snipe, English Snipe, Erroneous. Description. A little heavier than a robin, but with short tail, very long bill, and moderately long feet. Sexes similar. Upper parts black, plumage edged, barred, and variously marked with white, buffy, and grayish. A light line through middle of crown, another over eye. Wings dark brown, outer edge of outer primary, and tips of greater coverts white. Tail black, tipped with orange buff and white. The outer feather is white, barred with black, throat and belly white, neck and breast buffy, indistinctly barred with dark brown, sides barred with black, under tail coverts buffy, barred with black, bill greenish dusky, feet dull green, eyes which are placed rather far back in the head dark brown. The female is somewhat browner than the male. Immature birds are sometimes quite brownish, especially in the region of the head and neck. Length, 11 inches. Range in Pennsylvania. As a migrant, rather regular and common, particularly in suitable marshes or along the margins of streams, from March 15th to May 20th, and from September 15th to November 10th, as a summer resident, local, known to nest at Pimatuning Swamp, Crawford County, and presumably in other northern counties where there are suitable marshes. Nest, a shallow cup made of dead stalks of various plants, placed on a small island or a water-soaked log, or in a low moist field among the grass. Eggs, four, olive brown, spotted with rich dark brown, chiefly at the larger end. The average bird student knows the snipe as a bird which springs from a marshy spot with startled scape, scape as it zigzags its way to a safe retreat, or mounts in the air to circle and return. At such a time, the reddish-brown band at the tip of the tail and the white belly, which flashes as the bird erratically turns, are good field marks. On its nesting grounds, the snipe is a different creature. High overhead in wide circles, the birds fly, giving forth strange windy hoots, which they are said to produce by spreading widely the outermost feathers of the tail. When the performers come to earth, they may perch on a wayside post, on a fence, or on a tree, an unheard-of feat for a snipe at any other season. The male snipe, and perhaps the female also, performs many queer antics during the nesting season. The downy young, which leave their nests shortly after hatching, are beautiful creatures, dark brown and black, with cream-colored and buffy spots and flecks, which are arranged in a pattern which gives them a protective coloration. They are strong-legged creatures, and can run rapidly, and swim with ease as soon as they leave the nest. The dowager, Limnodromus grisius grisius, a shorebird which resembles the Wilson snipe, is a rare migrant. It is pale rufous, speckled with black below, and variously mottled above in summer. In winter it is brownish-gray above, white below, with a few dark barrings. In all plumages the rump and upper tail coverts and tail are noticeably barred with black and white. Length ten and a half inches. The rare stilt sandpiper, Micropalama hemantopus, has long green legs, but otherwise looks rather like a yellow legs. In spring it has a red-brown patch on the face, and heavily barred underparts. In the fall it is gray above, white below, 
with a few dusky spots on the breast. The upper tail coverts in any plumage are white. The knot, or robin snipe, Calidris canutus rufus, is a rare migrant also. It is dull rufus below in spring, and the upper parts are streaked and barred with black, white, and rufus. In winter it is gray above, with black and white barring on the upper tail coverts. Below it is white with faint dark barring. The upper parts in winter have a scaly appearance, as the result of light margins of the feathers. Length ten and a half inches. Pectoral sandpiper, Pisobia maculata, V.O. Other name, oxi. Description, smaller than robin. Adults in summer, upper parts black, the feathers margined with creamy buff, a distinct superciliary line of buffy white. Rump and upper tail coverts black, narrowly tipped with buffy. Middle tail feathers brownish gray, narrowly margined with white. Under parts white, the neck and breast rather heavily, but finely streaked with blackish and buffy brown. Adults in winter and immature, similar, but the general appearance much more reddish-brown. Length, nine inches. Range in Pennsylvania, recorded chiefly at Erie, a rather rare and irregular migrant in spring, from March 20th to May 15th. Somewhat more common and regular in midsummer and fall, occurring from late July to late October though it is highly probable that individuals do not remain in one place during this period. As nesting duties in the north are completed, the immature birds and adults in fresh plumage come south in flocks. The shorebirds are not, as a rule, common in Pennsylvania. There are not many extensive mud flats where they may feed, and many of the streams have been polluted, destroying the animal food. Erie is such an admirable resting and feeding ground for such birds that many of them stop there after their flight across Lake Erie, then strike out to the southward, flying over most of Pennsylvania. The white-rumped sandpiper, Pisobia fusicollis, which resembles the pectoral sandpiper, but has a distinctly white rump, is a rare migrant, noted chiefly at Erie and in the Pimatuning swamp region. The Baird sandpiper, Pisobia bairdi, is rare, save at Erie, where it is a fairly regular and common fall migrant from late August to the end of September. Least sandpiper, Pisobia minutila, V.O., other names, meadow peep, ox eye. Description, about as large as an English sparrow. Adults in spring, upper parts black, margined and tipped with buffy and reddish brown. Rump and upper tail coverts black. Middle tail feathers black. Outer ones ashy gray. Throat, superciliary and narrow ring about eye, white. Neck and breast buffy, streaked with dark brown. Rest of underparts white, the sides with narrow streaks of dusky. Bill blackish, feet dull green. Adults and young in winter, upper parts brownish gray, breast pale brownish gray or grayish, indistinctly streaked. Length six inches. Range in Pennsylvania. The least sandpiper occurs with some regularity, both in spring and fall, throughout the Commonwealth. It may be found at almost any wayside puddle, or along the margins of streams from early May until about the end of the month, and from mid-August to early October, and is particularly common at Erie. The least sandpiper is noticeably smaller than the common spotted sandpiper, and does not have that species' habit of tipping up its tail. It is, however, very similar in general appearance to the semi-palmated sandpiper, 
which may occur at the same time, but differs in having green feet, and, if the bird be in the hand, in having no partial webs between the toes. Red-backed sandpiper, Polydna alpina pacifica, Coos. Description about the size of a spotted sandpiper, bill slightly curved at tip, adults in spring, back and scapulars bright reddish-brown, the feathers with dark centers, breast white, finely streaked with dark brown, large black patch on middle of belly, lower belly white, adults and young in winter, upper parts gray, wing coverts gray, edged with buffy, under parts white, the breast grayish, the sides sometimes somewhat streaked. Length, eight inches. Range in Pennsylvania, a migrant rare in spring, fairly common in fall, especially at Erie, where it has been noted from mid-August to late October. The gay spring plumage of this species is easily remembered, in the gray winter plumage it is not so easy to recognize, but its somewhat curved bill is diagnostic. Semi-palmated sandpiper, Arayunetes pusillus, Linnaeus. Description, about as large as an English sparrow, half webs between the front toes, which are responsible for the bird's name. Adults in spring, upper parts dark brown, plumage margined with brownish-gray and traces of reddish-brown, rump grayish-brown, upper tail coverts blackish, tail gray, central feathers darkest, under parts white with faint streaking on breast. Young birds in their first fall plumage have a somewhat scaly appearance above as a result of the buffy tips and borders of the feathers. Their breasts are buffy, unstreaked, bill black, feet blackish, length a little over six inches. Range in Pennsylvania, a migrant commoner in the fall than in the spring, and noted chiefly at Erie. It occurs during May and from late July or early August to late September. The legs and feet of this species are black. In the least sandpiper they are greenish. The bill of this species is about straight. That of the least sandpiper is slightly decurved at the tip. In any age or plumage the semi-palmated sandpiper may be recognized when in the hand by its partially webbed front toes. Sanderling Crocythia alba Pallas Description Three toes a little smaller than robin, adults in summer, head, back, lower throat, and sides of breast rusty brown, the feathers edged with whitish and centered with black, wings with white area on basal half of inner flight feathers, belly and narrow margins of tail feathers white, adults in winter, gray above, white below, with white face and eye ring, young in first winter plumage, whitish, streaked with black above, breast buffy, rest of underparts white, length eight inches. Range in Pennsylvania. An abundant fall migrant at Erie from late July on, rare elsewhere. Greater yellow legs, Totanus melanolucus, gemellin. Other name, yellow legs snipe, Description. Larger than robin, legs very long and yellow, bill long, slender, and straight. Adults, upper parts black, head and neck streaked with white, feathers of back spotted and barred with whitish, upper tail coverts and tail white, barred with black, underparts white, breast spotted and sides barred with black. Adults and young in winter, Similar, but with less striking markings, both above and below. Sides only slightly barred. Bill and eyes black. Length, 14 inches. Range in Pennsylvania. A fairly common migrant throughout, 
to be observed at small pools and larger bodies of water from mid-april until may and from early august to latter october not often seen in flocks the greater and lesser yellow legs are much alike in appearance this species being much the larger their loud clear whistles and their habit of lifting their wings high above their backs as they alight are characteristic lesser yellow legs totanus flavipes gamelin other names summer yellow legs yellow legs description remarkably similar to the greater yellow legs in all respects even in habits but noticeably smaller even in the field length almost eleven inches range in pennsylvania a fairly common and regular migrant often commoner than the greater yellow legs and more apt to be noted in small flocks it is to be found from late april to mid-may and from early august to mid-october look for the yellow legs along some mud-flat preferably on an inland pool the clear whistle may be imitated easily and will sometimes lure the birds back after they have taken flight both the greater and lesser yellow legs jerk their bodies stiffly as they become uneasy End of section seven. Section eight of an introduction to the birds of Pennsylvania. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Rita Boutros. An Introduction to the Birds of Pennsylvania by George Mitch Sutton The Solitary Sandpiper Tringa Solitaria Solitaria Wilson Description Smaller than Robin Flight Swift and Graceful Wings and Flight Look Black Adults Upper Parts Dark Olive Brown Head and Neck Streaked and Back Finely Spotted with White Middle Tail Feathers Dark the others white, barred with black, underparts white, the breast streaked, the sides sometimes barred with black. In winter the birds are similar, but are less streaked and spotted. Length, eight and a half inches. Range in Pennsylvania, common and regular migrant from early May until about the first of June, and from mid-July to early October. It sometimes occurs in midsummer and may nest, though we have no actual records at present. The solitary sandpiper is confused more easily with the spotted sandpiper than with any other species. It jerks stiffly and does not bob constantly, as does the spotted when approached. The wings of the solitary are dark, unmarked, while the spotted sandpiper's wings have a band of white which shows plainly in flight, and the solitary's tail appears white in flight, while that of the spotted is dark. Look for the solitary sandpiper at small pools in woodlands or along the grassy margins of slow-moving streams or of ponds. The willet and western willet, Catoptrophorus semipalmatus semipalmatus, and semipalmatus inornatus rarely occur. They are large gray shorebirds, much barred with blackish above and below in spring, plain gray above in winter. The wings always with large noticeable white patches, which show plainly in flight. Length 15 inches. Bartramian sandpiper, upland plover, Bartramia longicauda, Bextein. Other names, field plover, prairie whistler. Description, larger than robin, tail rather long and much pointed, upper parts rich buffy, the head and neck streaked, and the back barred with black. Primaries, dark brown, the outermost barred with white. Inner tail feathers, dark brown, the outer ones buffy, all tipped and edged with white, showing plainly in the field, and all more or less barred with black, and marked with noticeable subterminal band of black. 
underparts whitish, the breast and sides washed with buffy, and marked with black in the form of delicate bars, arrowheads and spots, legs and feet brownish-yellow. Young birds are similar, but the buffy coloration is richer. Length, eleven and a half inches. Range in Pennsylvania, a rather local summer resident, found only in wide open fields, apparently rare in western Pennsylvania, save in Mercer and Crawford counties, where it nests irregularly, but fairly common in southeastern Pennsylvania, where it inhabits the wide fields in the less mountainous districts from early April to mid-September. Nest, a depression in the ground, usually in the middle of a large flat upland field, not near water. Eggs, four, buffy brown, spotted with dark or reddish brown. The eggs are surprisingly large for so small a bird, as is the case in all shore birds. The upland plover is a bird of wide pastures and grassy fields. It is difficult to approach, save at the nesting season, when it may come near so as to lead us away from its young. But its presence is announced by the high and musical whistle, which has given the bird one of its popular names, Prairie Whistler, and which it utters from the ground while in flight or while perched on a fence post, telegraph pole, or tree. The flight of this bird is singularly beautiful, as with wide wings beating through a comparatively short arc, it fairly quivers through the air. All its movements seem tremulous and graceful, and as it alights it lifts its wings gracefully high above its back, and folds them carefully. Its call note, which is heard as the bird is disturbed, is a mellow bubbling whistle, very musical, and with a quality of liquidity which few bird notes possess. The young birds run about shortly after hatching, and are difficult to find. They never go to the margins of streams to hunt their food, as do other members of the family, and when autumn comes they mount to the sky and make their way to the prairies of Texas, where they stop for a time while en route to their winter home in Argentina. If this magnificent bird is given careful protection, it may survive, but unless it is guarded in South America, as well as in its nesting grounds, there is little hope for it. Spotted Sandpiper Actitis macularia, linaus. Other names, tilt-up, tip-up, peep. Description, larger than an English sparrow, with long, narrow, pointed wings. Upper parts brownish-gray, with a faint greenish gloss, more or less barred with black. An indistinct superciliary line of white, face and underparts white, spotted throughout with black, the largest spots on the sides and flanks, wings like back, the bases of the primaries and secondaries whitish, showing in flight, inner tail feathers dark like back, outer ones lighter, about white, but never appearing even in flight, as white as in the solitary sandpiper. Immature birds are not spotted below, and the barring of the upper parts is restricted to the scapulars and wing coverts. There is a slight buffy gray wash on the breast. Length, seven and a half inches. Range in Pennsylvania. Common summer resident throughout from mid-April to late September. It is found along all small streams, sometimes even in the mountains and heavily wooded districts. Nest on the ground, often near a stream, sometimes in a field, and made of dead weed stalks, lined with finer materials. Eggs, four, whitish to brownish buffy, irregularly and sometimes heavily spotted, and blotched with reddish-brown, usually about the larger end. The spotted sandpiper is our best-known shorebird. It is not particularly wary, and frequents all the small streams, which have not been polluted. As it runs along the muddy margin, it bobs and teeters constantly, 
perhaps calling softly. Fluttering out over the water, its wingtips almost touching the surface, it whistles tweet, 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 clearly, and circles back to the shore or alights on a stone or fallen tree. The white areas in the wings show rather plainly in flight. The young are so small and flimsy that they are comical, with their wisps of tails and long slender feet. They can swim readily, however, and run with amazing rapidity. Even the adult can swim and dive if necessary. The spotted sandpiper is a much more energetic, nervous bird than its relative, the solitary sandpiper, and it is not so often found wading about in deep water as is that somewhat larger, darker bird. When the two species fly up, the solitary usually utters two or three loud, sharp whistles as it flies directly away or up into the air. The spotted, on the other hand, usually flutters away, just a little above the water, and customarily circles back to the shore not far away. Killdeer Oxyechus vociferus vociferus linnaeus Other names, Killdee, Killdeer plover Description Three toes, size of robin, forehead patch over eye, throat, ring around neck, and under parts white, the breast crossed by two prominent black bands, fore part of crown and line from bill under eye, blackish, rest of head and upper parts gray brown with greenish reflections, wings with bases of flight feathers white, showing plainly in flight, rump and upper tail coverts bright orange brown, middle tail feathers dark brown, outer feathers white all with white tip and irregular subterminal bar of black, bill black, feet pale flesh color, eyelids red, length ten and a half inches, range in Pennsylvania, a widely distributed migrant and summer resident from mid-March to mid-November, occasional in winter, nest, a depression in the sod or among gravel, sometimes rather carefully lined with pebbles or bits of debris. Eggs, four, whitish to buffy brown, heavily spotted with dark or reddish brown. Our killdeer is a bird of the open pastures. Although it searches for food along the water's edge, it often builds its nest some distance away. The striking coloration and clear whistled cry, killdeer, killdeer, make this one of our most easily identified birds, even at a considerable distance. The large black-bellied plover, Squatarola squatarola sinusurae, is common during the fall migration at Erie, from mid-August to mid-September and later, but is rare elsewhere in Pennsylvania. The black underparts of the adult in spring and the black underwing feathers of the young and adult in winter are diagnostic marks. The call note may be written turi. Somewhat smaller is the golden plover, Pluvialis dominica dominica, whose black underparts and golden flecked upper parts make the spring plumage easily recognizable. It is dull brownish in fall, with golden flecks on the crown and back. At Erie, it is common in fall, from early September throughout the month. Elsewhere in Pennsylvania, it is rare, and it is not noted during the spring, for its northward migration route passes along the Mississippi Valley. Semi-palmated plover, Caradrius semi-palmatus, Bonaparte. Other name, ring plover. Description, like the killdeer in general appearance, but much smaller, and with only one black band around the neck. Rump and upper tail coverts, the same gray-brown as the back. Eyelids yellow, bill short, orange, tipped with black. Length a little under seven inches. Range in Pennsylvania, 
a rather rare migrant during may and from august tenth to october first save at erie where it is regular and common the clear call note of this species carry carry suggests that of the killdeer young semi-palmated plovers coming south for the first time are often very easy to approach the piping plover caradrius melodus which is about the size of the semi-palmated plover and like it in pattern is pale sandy above with a blackish ring about neck black primaries and central tail feathers and bright yellow eyelids and feet this species nests at erie arriving in mid-april and remaining until early september elsewhere in pennsylvania it is very rare ruddy turnstone arenaria interpress morinella linnaeus description size of robin bill sharply pointed adults in spring upper parts strikingly marked with black white and rusty red tail white with black band near tip under parts white marked with black on throat and breast in winter upper parts blackish the feathers margined with grayish lower back white tail as in summer legs orange red length nine and a half inches range in pennsylvania a rare but rather regular migrant in may and september noted chiefly at erie ring-necked pheasant phasianus colchichus torquatus gemellin other names ring-neck pheasant english pheasant description size of a chicken male with a long pointed tail female with shorter more rounded tail adult male head and neck with tufts on sides of head glossy green collar about neck white back and scapulars golden yellow the centers of the feathers glossy green rump grayish glossed with green and marked with black spots wings light gray the primaries barred with black tail brown barred with black and glossed with pinkish breast rich copper red glossed with violet the feathers tipped with black sides golden yellow spotted with glossy purple belly black face bare the skin deep red bill and feet light gray eyes bright yellow female and immature male pale sandy brown the head and neck with a pinkish cast and entire upper parts streaked and barred with dark brown and black giving the bird an entirely different appearance and color pattern from that of the adult male eyes dark brown length male about thirty inches female about twenty four inches range in pennsylvania a permanent resident very common in some districts notably in the less mountainous counties it is becoming common throughout much of the commonwealth through the restocking efforts of the game commission nest a depression in the ground lined with grasses or other vegetation usually placed in a field not far from a brush-lined stream or under a fallen bough at the edge of a woodland eggs eight to twenty olive brown in color glossy in appearance the ring-neck is a native of asia it was brought to great britain at the time of the roman invasion and has become thoroughly acclimated there in many parts of the new world ring-necks have been introduced and they seem to make their way very well they have been present in pennsylvania for only a few years yet during the nineteen twenty seven hunting season a hundred and seventy seven thousand five hundred of the birds were taken as legal game in spite of its magnificent coloration the ring-neck is protectively colored though birds which wander about through the open field where they search for food can be seen easily as they fly up it sometimes takes a second or two for them to get well under way but they fly strongly and make a difficult mark for the sportsmen once they learn the meaning of a gun bob white 
colonus virginianus virginianus linnaeus other names quail partridge virginia partridge description size of small bantam chicken male head blackish mottled with gray and red brown throat spots on neck and a prominent line above eye white back and breast mottled with gray pinkish brown buffy black and white scapulars bordered with buffy rump and tail gray belly whitish barred with black flanks rusty red feathers margined with white female similar but with buffy yellow superciliary and throat length ten inches range in pennsylvania common permanent resident chiefly in the less mountainous counties and usually to be found in cultivated districts nest on the ground in high grass or among brush made of dry grasses arched over with grasses or other vegetation usually placed along a road or at the edge of a field eggs twelve to twenty-four pure white in winter bob whites frequent old weed patches briar thickets or cornfields where the stalks have been left standing they are very sociable and wander about in flocks searching for food roosting together on the ground in a compact ring their heads out and tails together being protectively colored they usually do not fly until they are virtually tramped upon when a flock is disturbed they rush into the air on noisy wings and scatter in all directions after a short time the birds begin to call to each other purly purly and the flock reassembles with the coming of spring the flocks break up male birds mount favorite fence posts stones or low boughs and give the clear whistle which every farmer boy can imitate this whistle is one of the clearest and most powerful of bird notes male and female birds share the duties of incubating the eggs which are turned over carefully so that they get the proper amount of heat sometimes the eggs are so numerous that they are piled upon each other in the nest and at such times the lower layer of eggs must receive special attention as a rule all the eggs hatch among the enemies of bob whites are the black snake which eats the eggs and young the cooper's hawk and the goshawk which capture the adults and the skunk and other ground prowlers which eat the eggs and sometimes the adults half-starved house cats are frequently serious enemies of this popular game bird the hungarian or european gray partridge perdix 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 a bird a little larger than the bobwhite gray in color with a dark brown horseshoe shaped mark on the breast a red-brown tail and reddish eyelids has been released in several parts of pennsylvania as a game bird and is now on the increase the bright red-brown tail of this species is very noticeable in flight End of section eight. Section nine of an introduction to the birds of pennsylvania this is a LibreVox recording. All LibreVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibreVox.org. An Introduction to the Birds of Pennsylvania by George Misk Sutton Ruffed Grouse to Sharp Shin Talk Ruffed Grouse Banassa Umbellus Umbellus Linnaeus Other Names Partridge Grey Partridge Birch Partridge Silvertail, grey phase, pheasant, erinus. Description Size of chicken, with broad, fan-shaped tail, sexes similar, upper parts principally reddish-brown, irregularly marked with black, buffy, grey and whitish, sides of neck with ruffs of broad, black feathers, glossed with greenish, tail reddish-brown or grey, or of intermediate shade, irregularly barred and mottled with black, with a broad blackish band near end and a grey tip, throat and breast buffy, 
rest of underparts white, tinged with buffy and barred with black or dark brown. The bars indistinct on the breast and belly, stronger on the sides. The female, which is a little smaller, has smaller ruffs on the neck, and, as a rule, a shorter tail. Length, 17 inches. Range in Pennsylvania. A permanent residence throughout in the wilder, wooded sections. Variable in abundance as a result of unfavorable nesting seasons. Change of forest conditions. Destruction by natural enemies, disease, and heavy hunting. Nest. A hollow lined with leaves at the base of a stump, under a low hemlock, or under the fallen branch of a tree. Eggs. 7 to 14. Pale. Buffy. The ruffed grouse. Our best known game bird is a creature of personality. Protectively coloured, he waits until he is almost trodden upon, then rises with a startling whir of wings, leaving the wayfarer thunderstruck. The female, as she incubates, is rarely seen, for she does not stir, and her back perfectly imitates her surroundings. In the spring, the male grouse struts and drums at chosen spots in the woodland. On a log, he paces up and down, ruffs lifted, wide tail fully spread and elevated he stands erect and, beating his chest rapidly with his wings, produces the drumming sound for which he is so famous. Grass may drum at any time of the year and sometimes at night, but they do so chiefly during the morning on spring days. The young run nimbly soon after hatching and leave their nest at once. They develop rapidly. After a week they can fly readily, though they are very small. The mother grouse, in luring an enemy from her young, employs broken wing tactics dragging herself over the ground as though she were badly wounded. In the winter, grouse develop long lateral scales on their toes which function as snowshoes. Their neat tracks in the snow lead from a roost under a branch to which dead leaves cling and wander about the bushes and trees where the birds have been feeding on buds, twigs and dried berries. Grouse are especially fond of aspen, birch, beech and maple buds. They are like wild grapevines both for the food and the shelter which they afford. During summer, grouse eat much insect food as well as berries and leaves. They sometimes eat hemlock needles and leaves of mountain laurel. Wild Turkey Melagris Galapavo Silvestris Vailiot Description Size and appearance very similar to that of the domestic bird, but tips of tail feathers and upper tail coverts, rich deep chestnut. Primary barred with black and white, feet mahogany red. A large wild turkey gobbler in spring is a magnificent creature with its rich, iridescent plumage, highly coloured and wattled head, and proud carriage. Length, about four feet. Range in Pennsylvania. Once fairly common throughout the state, especially in the southern mountainous counties, but brought to the verge of extermination through forest fires, excessive hunting, and encroaches of civilization. The Game Commission has brought in some birds from other states to replenish our stock. Some mingling has occurred between wild birds and domestic individuals which have wandered from the farms. Wild turkeys are now to be found chiefly along the ridges of the South Mountain District and seem to be holding their own fairly well. While these are not strictly the original strain, they are nevertheless wild and are therefore fairly representative of the race which once occurred. The wild turkey is a permanent resident. Nest A depression in the leaves, under brush or in a thicket, usually well concealed from above. Eggs 6 to 15, cream buff, thickly but finely spotted with reddish brown. The sight of a flock of wild turkeys coasting on their strong wings from the crest of a ridge to the lower levels is one long to be remembered. The spectacle before us, of weighty, muscular creatures hurling themselves through the air is difficult to believe, accustomed as we are to the flightless clumsiness of their cousins of the barnyard. Having very keen senses, the wild turkeys are difficult to approach, for they are very wary and at the slightest warning make off on a run up the ridge, or leap into the air. In summer they eat many small fruits and insects, including grasshoppers, but in winter, when it is often necessary for them to scratch in the snow, they eat chestnuts and acorns, berries of jack in the pulpit, corn if they live near the farms, and other such food as they can find. In some districts these splendid birds have difficulty in finding adequate food to carry them through the winter, and in such regions the game protect the seeds that the birds are fed, and boy scouts, sportsmen's organisations, and others cooperate in saving the birds. The wild turkey gobbler, notably in the spring, has the same tendencies toward fighting and vainglorious display as has his domestic relative. Morning Dove Cynaidura macrora carolinensis Linnaeus Other names Carolina Dove, Rain Crow, Erinus, Turtle Dove 
Description. Little larger than a robin. Head small. Tail long and pointed. Adults. Crown clear grey. Front of head, face, throat and lower neck. Soft reddish brown. Two small black spots back of and below the eye. Sides and back of neck grey. With patches of iridescent feathers which reflect greenish, golden and purplish lights. Back and wings greyish brown. Some of the coverts and tertials with black spots. Rump and tail grey. The outer tail feathers notably tipped with white, and the parts pinkish brown, eye dist on belly and under tail coverts. Bill black, feet reddish. Female, a sprightly coloured than male. Young birds in their first flight plumage are much scaled in appearance and like the bright colours of the adult. Length, about 12 inches. Range in Pennsylvania, a common summer resident throughout, arriving in late March and remaining until November. It is occasionally found in winter when the ground is free of snow. When food in the form of seed or grain is plentiful, in many sections it is becoming commoner. Nest. A flimsy flat structure made of small twigs, weed stalks, or other bits of vegetation. Placed, usually, on a horizontal branch or in an ample crotch in an orchard tree or willow. Often near a stream, and usually not at great height from the ground. The nest is sometimes placed on the ground. Eggs. Two. White. Doves are often to be seen perched on a prominent dead branch, and at such times their small heads, erect posture, and pointed tails are noticeable. As they fly up from a field, or a light, the white in their outer tail feathers shows plainly, but wherever they occur, they may be recognised by the characteristic whistling sound of their wings in flight and their gentle cooing. The song may be written, Coo! Coo! The opening syllable using three notes, the middle note being the highest in the song. A close range this cry is rough and throaty. At a distance it is mellow and soft, its tender, mournful quality making adequate description difficult. Young doves are fed with partly digested food which the parents pump up from their stomachs. They are helpless, dowdy creatures while in the nest, and they sometimes come to an untimely end when a gale blows the structure from its scant moorings or when, from lack of proper balance, it topples to one side. The white eggs, when fresh, are translucent as moonstones, and the sunlight, in penetrating the thin shells, discloses faintly the colour of the golden yolk. Doves eat a great deal of weed seed. They have no destructive habits whatever, and are worthy of all possible protection. They appear to be on the increase as a result of shortening the shooting season in the south, where they are popular as game birds. Turkey Vulture Cathartes aura septentrionalis wired Other names Buzzard Turkey Buzzard Description. Smaller than a turkey, head and upper neck virtually bare, rougher feathers about lower neck, wings long as in most birds of prey, but feet without the sharp, curved claws of the hawk tribe. Plumage blackish brown, glossed with purplish when fresh, rusty and soiled in appearance when old. Under surface of flight feathers lighter, showing in flight, skin of neck and head reddish, with whitish tubercles and ridges, and some hairs and small feathers. Bill whitish, Feet dull flesh colour, eyes brown. Downy young, white in colour with pale, blue-grey feet and head. Length, about 30 inches. Range in Pennsylvania. A regular and fairly common summer resident in the southern half of the Commonwealth and locally in western Pennsylvania, at least as far north as Crawford County, where it nests in limited numbers at Pymatuning Swamp. It arrives in mid-March and stays until November, or later, in the southernmost counties, and occasionally elsewhere in its range, it remains throughout the winter. Nest. No nest is built. Eggs. Two, whitish, lodged irregularly with black, brown, and grey, placed on the ground in a cavity among rocks or in a hollow log. At close range the turkey vulture is not a beautiful creature. Its carriage is slovenly, its facial expression unpleasant, and its plumage harsh, but circling in the sky, its wide wings hardly moving for hours at a time, it becomes a glorified being, among the most graceful and well-balanced of our soaring birds. It is equipped by nature as a carrion eater, the bare head and neck permitting it to eat the flesh of dead animals without soiling its feathers. Its feet are not used to capturing or carrying prey, but a considerable burden may be carried in the bill. When vultures find a dead cow or horse, word well, seems to travel immediately to all nearby districts, and the great birds swing silently in to the feast. They are frequently seen along roadsides, where they devour rabbits and other small mammals which have been killed by motor cars. It is said that the turkey vulture carries the germs of hog cholera and the dreaded foot and mouth disease. 
This is only occasionally, if ever, true, however, and as a rule, it is a harmless and highly beneficial bird. Nevertheless, it is not protected in Pennsylvania at the present time. Young vultures cannot stand when newly hatched. Marsh Hawk Circus Cyaneus Hudsonius Linnaeus Other names Swamp Hawk Marsh Harrier Pigeon Hawk Erinus Chicken Hawk Hen Harrier Description Face with an owl-like ruff of feathers, wings and tail long, feet long and slender. Adult male, upper parts light ashy grey, somewhat darker on top of head, and slightly streaked on neck. Tips of wings black, tail barred with black, upper tail coverts white, lower parts white, grey on throat and upper breast, and flecked with pale reddish brown on sides and flanks. Eyes bright yellow. Adult female, plumage rich brown. Considerably mottled throughout, sometimes heavily streaked with blackish below, and feathers sometimes considerably margined with buffy upper tail coverts, always white, eyes yellow. Immature birds are usually plain brown, unstreaked below, and have brown eyes. The feet are always yellow. Length about twenty inches. Range in Pennsylvania. A common though somewhat local migrant and summer resident from March fifteenth to November first less often seen in the mountainous counties and occasionally noted in winter. Its summer range depends more or less upon swampy country in which the nest is characteristically built. Nest. On the ground in a swamp, composed of dead weed stalks, cattail leaves, and similar materials, sometimes with neat cup and lining, at other times loosely constructed with little attempt at neatness. Eggs. Four to seven, pale blue or chalky white, occasionally faintly spotted with brown. The marsh hawk is usually to be seen flying near the ground over a field or low meadow, beating its way along rapidly. It pauses at times towards the grass where prey may hide, sometimes wheeling suddenly toward the ground as it captures a mouse or shrew. It may always be recognised by the white upper tail curvet, which show plainly in flight, a mark which our other hawks do not have. Occasionally the marsh hawk circles high in the air where the white patch on the back is not visible. At such times the long and somewhat pointed wings black wing tips, long tail, white appearance of the male and the dull brown appearance of the female would distinguish the species. The male has the interesting custom of looping, the loop during its season of courtship. At the nest the birds are very fierce in defending their young and swoop about the intruder, uttering loud, piercing, flicker-like cries. Its food consists of mice, frogs, snakes and other creatures which are captured among the cattails or on the ground. Occasionally it takes a bird or visits the poultry yard, but, as a rule, it is a beneficial species. It is not protected in Pennsylvania. Sharp-shinned hawk. Accipiter velux. Wilson. Other names. Bird hawk. Blue darter. Chicken hawk. Pigeon hawk. Erinus. Description. Small for a hawk, being but little larger than a robin. Wings comparatively short and rounded. Tail long and square at tip. Female considerably larger than male. Adults. Top of head and neck blackish, base of feathers of nape white, cheeks and malar regions whitish streaked with reddish brown, throat white, finely streaked with black, upper parts blue grey, the tail marked with three or four blackish bands, under parts white, heavily barred with reddish brown save on middle of belly and under tail coverts. Immature birds, brown, not grey, plumage of the upper parts edged with rusty brown, and under parts streaked, not barred, with dark brown. The eyes of adults are usually red, of immatures, yellow. The feet, which are long and slender, are always yellow. Length. Male, 12 inches. Female, 13 and a half inches. Range in Pennsylvania. Migrant and summer resident throughout from March the 1st to November 25th, occasionally to be seen in winter. Nest. Rather large, flat platform made of slender twigs, built near the trunk of a hemlock bough or another sheltered situation usually 30 to 40 feet from the ground. Eggs, 4 to 6, pale greenish-white, handsomely and irregularly blotched with rich brown. The sharp shin is the enemy of all small birds. It is swift in flight and skulks along among the bushes, pouncing upon its victims suddenly. Near the nest of a pair of these birds, located at MacDonald Waterworks, Washington County, there were no small birds. They had probably all been killed or driven out by the sharp shins. Another very small member of this family, the sparrowhawk, is a bird of the open fields, with long, pointed wings and red-brown back. 
The sharp shin sometimes circles rapidly in the open, but does not hover over its prey as does the sparrowhawk. Young sharp shins, which are downy white, are fed upon small birds which are neatly plucked by the parent. End of section 9, read by Inkel. Section 10 of An Introduction to the Birds of Pennsylvania. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. An Introduction to the Birds of Pennsylvania by George Mitch Sutton. Cooper's Hawk to Bald Eagle. Cooper's Hawk, Asipatia Cooperi, Bonaparte. Other names Chicken Hawk, Blue Darter. Pigeon hawk, Erinus, hen hawk. Description. Almost precisely like the sharp shin in proportions and coloration, but larger. The smaller male bird usually being a few ounces heavier than the largest female sharp shin, but not always to be distinguished easily from that species in the field. In the hand, the cooper's hawk may always be recognized by the shape of the tip of the tail, which is rounded, not square, as it is in the sharp shin. Length. Male, 16 inches. Female, 19 inches. Range in Pennsylvania. A fairly common summer resident in wooded sections from March 1st to December 10th, occasional in winter. Nest. A bulky mass of twigs, lined with flakes of bark, usually placed from 40 to 60 feet from the ground in a beech tree. Eggs, 3 to 6, chalky blue-white. The sharp-shinned and Cooper's hawks, both bird killers, are fairly common, and are to be rated as our most objectionable birds of prey. They are not protected in Pennsylvania. Goshawk Aster Atricapolis Atricapolis Wilson Other names Henhawk, Greyhawk, Partridgehawk, Squirrelhawk, Chickenhawk Description A large, heavy-bodied hawk with comparatively short wings and long tail. Female considerably larger than male. Adults Crown black, area above the back of eye, white, marked irregularly with black, rest of head whitish, streaked with black, upper parts blue-grey, tail marked with three or four broad blackish bands, underparts heavily and finely barred with clear grey throughout, also somewhat streaked, particularly on the breast, eyes red or red-brown, sear and feet yellowish-green, immature birds, brown, not grey, plumage of upper parts dark brown, margined and edged with buffy and whitish, and on wing coverts with rusty brown, underparts buffy white, heavily streaked with blackish, length, male 21 inches, female 24 inches, range in Pennsylvania, rare as a permanent resident in the northern, more mountainous counties, known to have nested at seven localities, as a winter visitant, irregular, though in some sections, notably among the eastern counties, to be found with some regularity, from about October 20th to March 1st. Nest, a large mass of sticks, with a shallow cup, lined with bark and occasional sprigs of green hemlock, placed from 40 to 60 feet up in a beech or hemlock tree. Eggs, 3 to 5, chalky white, with a faint bluish cast. The ghost shark is our most savage destroyer of small game. In occasional winter invasions it is abundant, and at such times takes a terrific toll of ruffed grouse, ring-necked pheasants, poultry, and cotton-tail rabbits. In the field, it has a very grey appearance, more so than any other species. Even its heavily marked underparts, at a distance, are grey. It does not often circle in the sky, preferring to fly at about the level of treetops, or, indeed, a few feet from the ground, so as to drop upon unsuspecting prey. The parent birds are formidable warriors when their nest is disturbed. While I was making notes at a nest in Potter County, the heavy female bird struck me on the head, shoulders, and back a dozen times with her large feet. The male was wary, though he joined in the battle occasionally. Rarely does the ghost short capture mice or other destructive small mammals, eating virtually nothing but grouse so long as these birds can be found. It is not protected in Pennsylvania. Red-tailed hawk Buteo borealis borealis gamelon Other names Chicken hawk Hen hawk Description. Large, with broad wings and comparatively short tail, often seen circling in the sky or perched on a prominent dead stub. Female larger than male. Adults. Upper parts dark brown, 
glossed with violet on back, scapulars and wing coverts, somewhat barred with buffy brown, throat white, breast usually crossed by a brownish band or by a row of streaks, rest of underparts whitish, barred and streaked with blackish, particularly on flanks and sides, tipping of feathers buffy, tail bright red-brown with white tip and subterminal band of black, eyes dark brown, feet and sear greenish-yellow, in which her birds are similar, but the plumage of the underparts is considerably mottled and edged with buffy, and the tail is grey, crossed with many narrow black bands. The underparts are often more heavily marked than in the adults, and the eyes are greyish-yellow, not dark brown. Length, male, 20 inches, female, 23 inches. Range in Pennsylvania. Fairly common permanent resident, save at high altitudes, where it is to be found only irregularly during winter. Some red tails migrate into or through Pennsylvania during fall and early winter, but it is now believed that most nesting birds actually remain in one region during the entire year. In many sections of the state it is becoming rare each year. Nest. A bulky affair of twigs and branches, lined with leaves and finer materials, placed usually in a large, high, deciduous tree, at from 50 to 80 feet from the ground. Eggs, two or three, whitish, regularly blotched and spotted with reddish-brown. The red tail may easily be confused with the red shoulder, which, while smaller, has the same proportions. The red shoulder is more often found in swampy country or in the lowlands. The red tail is a bird of the field and open woodlots. The wood shoulder's scream is clear and loud, that of the red tail is wheezy and often whistle-like in quality. The red shoulder's flight is more rapid, at times more owl-like than that of the red tail, and, of course, the red shoulder's tail is never red-brown, but is black, crossed with narrow white bands. Immature red shoulders are to be distinguished from immature red tails with difficulty, partly because the birds do not call much, and partly because there is variation in the size of the sexes, a small male red tail being not much larger than a female red shoulder. In the hand, however, the young red shoulder is more conspicuously streaked below than is the young red tail, and the feet are always slenderer and more delicate than in the larger species. The red tail's food habits are, for the most part, innocent. Nevertheless, it is not protected in Pennsylvania at the present time. Red-shouldered hawk. Buteo lineateus lineateus. Gamella. Other name. Chicken hawk. Description. Smaller than the red tail, with broad wings and comparatively short tail. Adults. Head and neck dark brown. Streaked with reddish brown. Back dark brown with irregular barring and edging of grey and whitish, wings black, barred and spotted with white, lesser coverts rich reddish-brown, tail black, crossed with three distinct but narrow white bands, underparts reddish-brown, barred on belly, sides, and flanks with white, throat whitish, streaked, not barred, with dusky, a black spot on Malar region, under tail coverts white, feet and sear greenish-yellow, eyes dark brown, immature birds, Dark brown above, neck and back streaked and spotted with whitish and buffy, lesser wing coverts reddish brown, primaries edged with buffy brown, tail grey brown crossed with several light bars, under parts buffy white, streaked with black, principally on breast, sides and belly, eyes pale greyish with the yellow cast. Length, male 18 and a half inches, female 21 inches. Range in Pennsylvania. A somewhat local summer resident from March 1st to December 1st, often found along river valleys or in a swampy country, winters occasionally, chiefly in the southern half of the Commonwealth, usually not so common as the red tail. Nest, of twigs, lined with leaves and other fine materials, and usually with a sprig or two of fresh hemlock, built in a hemlock, beech or other forest tree, usually from 30 to 60 feet from the ground. Sometimes the red shoulder adds the material to the last year's nest of a crow and uses this structure as a nest. Eggs, three to six. Pale, greenish-white, irregularly blotched with dark reddish-brown. Even at a distance, the bright, reddish coloration of the underparts of the adult red shoulder should serve to distinguish it. The bird student will do well to remember that the red shoulder and red tail customarily choose prominent perches from which to watch for prey, whereas the cooper's hawk Sharp Shen and Goshawk almost never choose such lookout posts. A large hawk seen on a dead stub in the open is almost certainly a red shoulder or a red tail. 
the flying red shoulder circles more rapidly than does the red tail, and with a glass in the dark, white barred tails should be easily seen. It is fond of snakes, frogs, and mice, which it captures usually in the lowlands. Occasionally it catches a bird or young poultry, but it visits the farms only when food is scarce in its wilder habitat. Young red shoulders whose stomachs I examined at Pymatuning Swamp had eaten only grasshoppers, field mice, snakes, frogs, and beetles. The red shoulder's loud, clear scream, when familiar to the bird student, is diagnostic. The blue jay can imitate this scream almost perfectly, however, so the bird student must use care in recording the species from call note alone. This species, while for the most part innocent in food habits, is not protected in Pennsylvania. Broad-winged hawk Buteo platypateris platypateris Violet Other names Chicken hawk, pigeon hawk, erinus. Description The broad wing, because of its name, is often thought to be one of our largest hawks, but in reality it is one of the smaller species, being about the size of a crow. Adults Grey brown above, throat white, malar region blackish, tail crossed with three distinct and rather broad white bands, underparts warm brown, the belly and sides heavily barred with white, the undertail coverts largely whitish, sear and feet yellowish green. Eyes dark brown, immature, dark brown, with head and neck considerably streaked, wing coverts edged with buffy white, underparts buffy white, heavily streaked with black, tail greyish, marked with five or six black bands. Length, male, 16 inches, female, 17 inches. Range in Pennsylvania, an uncommon and local summer resident from about April 20th to October 1st. This hawk is not found in winter in Pennsylvania, Fred migrates to Central America during the cold months. Nest. A platform of sticks, usually placed in a large crotch of a deciduous tree, and not often at great height from the ground. An old crow nest is sometimes used. Eggs. Two to four, whitish, spotted and blotched, sometimes very handsomely, with rich brown. A small hawk with wide wings, short tail, and the general appearance of a red tail is likely to be a broad wing. Look for it about deciduous woodlands. Its scream is feeble. It nests in woodlands not far from Pittsburgh. Rough-legged hawk. Archibuteo lagopus sancti johannis gamella. Other name. Chicken hawk. Description. Larger than a red tail. Two distinct types of plumage. One light, one dark. Feet, down to the very toes, fully feathered. Light phase of plumage. Head and neck black. Boldly streaked with white. Back dark brown, tail white at base, black on terminal third, breast and throat buffy, broadly streaked with black, feathers of leg buffy, spotted with blackish, belly and undertail coverts black, wing linings white, with black spots at wrist and black tips on all primaries and secondaries, sear and feet yellowish, eyes dark brown, dark face, brownish black, spotted irregularly with white on belly, the tail marked with three or four narrow whitish bands. Length, about 22 inches. Range in Pennsylvania. A rare and irregular winter visitor from the far north, usually seen in the more northerly counties and in fairly open country. The great rough leg will perch on a haystack or a low stump in an open field in preference to a high stub. In searching for prey, it beats over the ground in the manner of the marsh hawk. It is distinctly beneficial in food habits. In any plumage, the bird in the hand may be recognised by the feathered feet. In the field, the distinctly black underparts are diagnostic. Unfortunately, this species is not protected at the present time in Pennsylvania. Golden Eagle Hercula Crisatos Crisatos Linnaeus Description Size, very large. Wing spread from 6 to 8 feet. Female noticeably the larger. Adults Plumage, rich deep brown, save on crown, nape, and hind neck, where the pointed feathers are golden brown. On the basal half of the tail, which is barred with whitish or grey, sear and toes yellow, bill blue-black, eyes dark brown, tarsus, which is fully feathered down to the toes, white or pale buffy, immature, similar, but the basal half or two-thirds of the tail is white, and the undertail coverts are margined with buffy, length about three feet. Range in Pennsylvania, a winter visitant, usually rare, is sometimes recorded several times during a single season. It is most often to be seen in the mountainous counties. 
The golden eagle is occasionally caught in steel traps which have been set for foxes or other fur bearers. Each winter one or two of these great birds are thus made captive or shot by farmers who are protecting their poultry. It is a magnificent creature, with its regal bearing, its deep-set, brilliant eyes, and its sleek, lustrous plumage. In captivity, it is not given to beating itself about, but bears itself with simple dignity, as though it understood the futility of trying to make an escape. In the field, it is to be distinguished with difficulty from the immature bald eagle, the latter bird having white areas on the underwing which the golden eagle lacks. Close at hand, it will be noted that both birds have long feathers on the tibial region, the tips of these feathers sometimes reaching well toward the toes, but in the golden eagle the whole foot, down to the toes, is covered with short, thick plumage. The golden eagle has been known to kill foxes and lambs. There is an authentic record of the killing of a study, though small, fawned by one of these great birds. Pursuing the fawn through the woods, it frightened it over a sharp declivity, and its leg was broken in the fall. The eagle's long, vice-like talons and great bill finished the unfortunate creature. Bald eagle, Heliaetus, Leucocephalus, Leucocephalus, Linnaeus. Other names, American eagle, white-headed eagle. Description, size very large, a wing spread of over six feet, fully adult birds, brownish black with head and neck, tail and upper and under tail coverts, white, bill clear bright yellow, feet dull yellow, eyes bright pale yellow, young birds in their first plumage, almost black, with a regular mottling of white on underparts, bill and sear dusky, eyes dark brown, in somewhat older young the plumage is much mottled with white, buffy and greyish on the upper parts as well as below, and the underwings are blotched with white. As the bird grows older the light areas become more extensive. In the fourth year the head and tail becomes pure white and the mottling of the rest of the plumage does not reappear. Immature bald eagles sometimes have the general appearance of a golden eagle, but the feathers of the feet never extend down to the toes as they do in the golden eagle. Length, a little under three feet. Range in Pennsylvania. Rare and irregular migrant and summer resident, occasionally noted in winter, save at Erie, where it is fairly common. Here it searches for fish and refuse along the shore and nests in the vicinity. In October and November, bald eagles from the north country migrate through Pennsylvania. Following some of the ridges of the eastern counties, they are sometimes noted along the Susquehanna and Delaware rivers, where formerly, and perhaps in limited numbers today, they nest on the larger wooded islands. Nest. A huge mass of sticks and debris, sometimes a wagon node or more, built into the principal crotch or top of a sycamore or other large tree, often at great height from the ground. Eggs. Two or three. Chalky white. The bald eagle is usually seen along waterways or in the mountains. It ranges widely and flies with great majesty, its wide, heavy wings giving it, even at great distance, the appearance of weight and strength. It is fond of carrion and pursues the smaller osprey or fish hawk until that bird is forced to give up the prey which it has captured. Bald eagles rarely take poultry. They sometimes pursue waterfowl, but in Pennsylvania do not destroy much game or valuable wildlife and are therefore protected. The cry of the bald eagle is a barking squeal, sometimes very high and thin, often scarcely to be heard. A dark coloured eagle, with white patches showing on the underwing, is likely to be an immature bald eagle. The golden eagle almost always appears dark from below, save for the basal half of the tail, which is greyish or white. End of section 10, read by Inkel. Section 11 of An Introduction to the Birds of Pennsylvania. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Rita Boutros. An Introduction to the Birds of Pennsylvania by George Mitch Sutton. Duck Hawk, Rinkadon Peregrinus Anatum, Bonaparte. Other names, Peregrine Falcon, Rock Hawk, Bullet Hawk, Blue Hawk, American Peregrine, Ledge Hawk. Description, size medium, female much larger than male, wings long and pointed, plumage very firm and stiff. Adults, top of head and patch below eyes, and on rear part of cheeks, black. 
back wings and tail bluish slate heavily barred with darker gray tail tipped with white underparts buffy barred and spotted with black chiefly on sides and flanks immature upper parts dark brown the plumage considerably margined with buffy or pale brownish area below eye black cheeks brownish underparts dark brown all the feathers widely margined with buffy giving a mottled and streaked appearance sere and feet yellow eyes very dark brown length male sixteen inches female nineteen inches range in pennsylvania a rare summer resident from march to november along cliff-lined rivers it occasionally occurs in migration and has been known to winter in the philadelphia region where the solitary birds live upon pigeons and roost on the ledges of tall buildings nest none is made eggs three to six whitish heavily spotted with rusty or chocolate brown or solid brown laid either on the bare rock in a sheltered niche on a high cliff or in a slight depression in the earth on such a ledge if there be any soil this is one of pennsylvania's rarest hawks along the juniata river and where there are cliffs along the delaware and susquehanna rivers they are sometimes seen beating their way buoyantly high in the air or plunging down from the heights either in pursuit of prey or in play their call note a sharp and rapidly repeated key 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 echoes among the rocks near their nest the birds are vicious toward intruders for speed and daring the duck hawk is famous it pursues and captures the most rapid ducks even teal i have seen it kill pileated woodpeckers and crows but as a rule it captures meadowlarks blue jays robins and shorebirds which happen to pass by its airy or for which it watches from its high vantage point it is particularly fond of domestic pigeons if there be any in the vicinity and will live almost exclusively upon them as long as the supply lasts striking its prey with closed fists it slashes the skin open with the long claws of the hind toe sometimes a duck hawk may be seen from the train window in the vicinity of huntington spruce creek palmerton or dauphin the duck hawk is not protected in pennsylvania pigeon hawk Tinaculus columbarius columbarius linaus description size small a little larger than a sparrow hawk but heavily built and with plumage firm like that of the duck hawk adults blue-gray narrowly streaked with black above an inconspicuous band of buffy or pale reddish brown at neck primaries barred with white tail blackish with three or four distinct though narrow white or grayish bars and a white tip underparts buffy or rich ochreous streaked with black save on throat immature dark brown above the primaries and tail barred with buffy underparts much as in adult birds sere and feet yellow eyes black length about ten inches range in pennsylvania a rare migrant additional records for which are very desirable it usually occurs in late april and early may and in late september and early october it is said to have nested in pike county so many hawks are called pigeon hawk that it is difficult to make pennsylvania farmers and gunners realize that this little hawk is really a comparatively rare bird it flies rapidly directly and is in general appearance much like a sparrow hawk with a blue-gray back i have noted pigeon hawks in pennsylvania only a few times each time the hawk was surrounded and besieged by a flock of swallows one of which it may have been holding in its talons sparrow hawk search nice sparveria sparveria linaus 
other names mouse hawk killy hawk pigeon hawk erroneous description size small not much larger than a robin adults and young alike wings pointed male top of head blue-gray with rusty brown crown patch sides of head buffy or whitish with black marks below eye on ear coverts and on side of nape back rich reddish-brown barred on scapulars and sometimes on back with black wing coverts blue-gray spotted with black primaries black barred with white tail rich rufous tipped with white and with a broad subterminal bar of black underparts whitish or buffy sometimes quite reddish with spots or bars of black on sides and flanks sear and feet yellow eyes dark brown female quite different having the back and tail heavily barred with black the wing coverts reddish brown barred with black and the underparts streaked with pale reddish brown length about ten inches range in pennsylvania a common and widely distributed summer resident from march tenth to november fifteenth occasional in winter nest in a cavity in a tree or in a bird box from twenty to forty feet from the ground eggs four to eight buffy or whitish heavily spotted with reddish brown the trim form of this elegant creature is a familiar roadside acquaintance and the piercing killy 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 of the bird as it hovers looking for prey is characteristic the sparrow hawk is distinctly beneficial feeding upon grasshoppers field mice and other small mammals it is protected by law at all times in pennsylvania osprey fish hawk pandean haliatis carolinensis gemellin description size large wings long giving the bird in flight somewhat the appearance of a gull feet large the outer toe reversible the underside of the toes with spiny scales for holding slippery prey upper parts blackish brown the feathers margined with brownish nape and superciliary white or whitish spotted with black tail with from six to nine grayish bands noticeable particularly on the inner web underparts shining white with spots of brown on breast particularly in the female the under wings are white save the greater coverts and flight feathers which are prominently barred a black area at the bend of the wing bill black feet pale blue-gray eyes orange-yellow length twenty-three inches range in pennsylvania common and regular principally along the waterways as a migrant in april and may and in september and october rare and local as a summer resident additional nesting records are desirable nest a bulky mass of sticks and debris usually placed in a dead tree sometimes at the very top from twenty to fifty feet from the ground eggs two to four whitish spotted with reddish brown or solid rich brown there is much variation in the color of the eggs the osprey is usually seen near a lake or waterway its easy flight gives it somewhat the bearing of a gull but its broad barred tail and dark upper parts distinguish it even at a great distance the osprey's food is almost altogether a fish its firm glossy plumage its great claws its slender long wings are all adapted to the capture of fish upon which it pounces from the air plunging into the water sometimes to be lost to view for a second or more occasionally it grips a fish so large that it cannot extricate its talons and is dragged to an unfortunate death when the osprey rises from a plunge in the water it often halts in mid-air to shake itself free of water a somewhat amusing performance although the osprey eats fish almost exclusively it is protected in pennsylvania 
It sometimes captures the destructive carp, which is such a pest in some localities. It does not often take trout or other valuable food or game fish, and never captures birds or game. Smaller birds, such as grackles, fear the osprey so little that they have been known to build their own cradles among the foundation material of the osprey's bulky airy. Along the Atlantic coast, ospreys sometimes nest on the ground. Barn Owl, Tito Alba Pratincola, Bonaparte. Other names, Monkey-Faced Owl, Golden Owl. Description, Larger than a crow, face with round ruff of feathers about eyes, legs very long and lanky, with sparse feathering down to tips of toes, face white, with reddish-brown area about eye, and narrow ring of reddish-brown at outer edge of facial disc, upper parts golden-brown, much variegated with fine gray barring and black and white speckling, underparts white, buffy, or ochreaceous, finely spotted with black. The under surface of the wings is principally white, but the flight feathers, as well as the tail, are narrowly barred with dark gray. Bill pale flesh color, eyes black, length 18 inches. Range in Pennsylvania, a fairly common, though somewhat local, summer resident, chiefly in the southern and southeastern counties and only rarely in the northern and mountainous counties and at high altitudes from late march to november occasional in winter in the western counties it has been known to nest as far north as crawford county nest in a large cavity in a tree often a sycamore or in a barn or loft wherever the eggs may be laid with safety eggs five to nine white when a country newspaper announces the capture of a creature, half monkey and half bird, the bird student may be fairly certain that someone has found a barn owl. The strange melancholy expression of the bird's face, its peculiarly awkward long legs, and its odd habit of bowing, hissing, and swaying back and forth all make it an object of great curiosity. The barn owl can see perfectly by day, though it is chiefly nocturnal. It preys upon rats, mice, and shrews principally, and is almost altogether beneficial in its food habits. All owls have the habit of throwing up wads of indigestible matter, such as the bones and fur of the mice they have eaten. An examination of the pellets of the barn owl has shown that these creatures eat but very few birds, and virtually no game. Half-grown young in their nest clamoring for food make a considerable outcry. They have insatiable appetites, and during early summer the parents are kept busy bringing in rats and mice for their hungry offspring. The barn owl's golden brown and gray back, its white appearance beneath, and its lack of any ear tufts are good field marks. This species is protected in Pennsylvania. Long-eared owl, Asio otis wilsonianus, lesson. Other names, cat owl, cedar owl, hoot owl. Description, size medium, about that of a crow. Head with two prominent tufts of feathers, which are nearly always held erect in life. Feet fully feathered. Upper parts gray mottled with buffy brown and speckled with black and white, tail with six or eight dark gray bars, face whitish to rich buff, bordered by black, ear tufts black, margined with whitish or buffy, underparts whitish, washed irregularly with buffy, the breast broadly and irregularly streaked, and the sides and belly barred with dark brown and gray feet buffy, eyes bright yellow, length 15 inches, range in Pennsylvania, a fairly common though somewhat local resident, which may migrate to an extent when food is scarce during winter. 
It is usually to be found near hemlocks. Nest. A flat platform of twigs, sometimes built upon the old nest of a squirrel or crow, lined with finer materials and a few belly feathers from the owls. Sometimes an old crow nest is used without any renovation or addition. Eggs, four to six, white. Long-eared owls are neither noisy nor bold, and may therefore live in a region without being known, unless the bird student assiduously searches for them in dense hemlock clumps, in cedars, or thick grapevine tangles, where they are usually to be found. They are principally nocturnal, and it is sometimes difficult to make the birds fly from their perches during the day. Any medium-sized owl which flies from a dense hemlock is likely to be of this species. Its general appearance at such a time is grayish. It is a highly beneficial bird, living almost altogether on mice, which it captures both in the woodlands and at the edges of fields. These it swallows wherever it may be, but the pellets are usually cast up during the daytime at the favorite resting place. So after a few months' sojourn, at one point the pellets become numerous. Pellets of this nature, strewn over the ground, are always a fairly sure sign of the presence of owls. The young, which resemble their parents in color, are remarkably adept at clambering about their nesting tree before they can fly. They are odd in appearance when newly hatched, with their queer eyes and large mouths. Since the eggs are laid and hatch at intervals of two or three days each, the young are of different sizes. The call note of this owl, which I have not frequently heard, resembles a screech owl's quavering whistle somewhat, but is shorter, more whining, and less musical, and is varied with angry coughing sounds. This species is protected in Pennsylvania. Short-eared owl, Azioflamius, Pontopidon, other names, meadow owl, marsh owl, swamp owl, bog owl. Description. Size medium, like the long-eared owl, head with very small tufts, not apparent in field. Dark brown above, the feathers margined with buffy brown, the wings spotted and barred with buffy, the tail with rich buffy and brown bands of about equal width, underparts buffy or whitish, streaked, broadly on breast, narrowly on belly, with dark brown. Feet, buffy, eyes, yellow, length, 15 inches, range in Pennsylvania, a fairly common and regular migrant from March 1st to April 15th, and sometimes later, and from October 1st to November 15th. It has been known to nest once or twice within the Commonwealth. It is sometimes found in winter, particularly in the lowlands of the less mountainous counties. The short-eared owl sometimes hunts during the day. It courses over the meadows and marshes, its wide soft wings carrying it easily but rather unsteadily a few feet from the ground. As a rule, it prefers to hunt at eventide. It nearly always perches on the ground. Its coloration is protective as it sits among the dead grasses or cattail leaves motionless until it springs awkwardly into the air and makes off. It does not often alight in trees, though it may occasionally roost in low, dense bushes or conifers. As the short ear flies away, the light spots on the upper surfaces of the wing and the dark spots at the bend of the wing on the under surface are usually noticeable. Any medium-sized owl which flies up from the ground in the open is almost certain to be of this species. Its food habits are strictly beneficial. It captures mice, preferring to hunt in the open, almost never capturing its prey in the woodlands. It is often found in large flocks during the period of migration. In fact, where one occurs, others are likely to be found. 
flocks sometimes number a hundred or more individuals when these owls visit a farm in such numbers for a week or two they may effectively destroy the mice and other destructive small mammals the short-eared owl is curious squeaking cries given in imitation of a mouse or a small bird will sometimes cause it to come very close where it may hover for several seconds if the observer remains perfectly motionless the short-eared owl is protected in pennsylvania End of section 11section 12 of an introduction to the birds of pennsylvania this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org an introduction to the birds of pennsylvania by george meek sutton barred owl to belted kingfisher barred owl strix buaria buaria barton other names hoot owl black-eyed owl in parentheses rare description much larger than a crow no tufts on the head feet feathered almost to claws upper parts dull chocolate brown each feather with two or three grayish white or buffy bars especially noticeable on scapulars tail and wings distinctly barred face grayish finely barred with dark gray underparts whitish or grayish white tinged with buff the breast distinctly barred the belly and sides streaked with dark brown bill greenish yellow eyes very large dark brown with blue black pupils length twenty inches range in pennsylvania a fairly common but rather local permanent resident found chiefly in deep woodlands and usually along streams or in lowlands not on the ridges as is the great horned owl nest almost always a cavity in a tree though sometimes the deserted nest of a crow or hawk eggs two to four white and quite round i shall never forget my first glimpse of a barred owl in a deep woodland where all was quiet and where shadows lent an air of mystery i suddenly realized that a shapeless ball of brown on a nearby branch was three young barred owls sitting very close together eyes nearly shut as i approached they refused to budge preferring it appeared to keep their eyes closed so as not to be bothered with any unpleasant consideration of an encounter with an enemy when I wrapped the branch upon which they sat, they opened their eyes, popped their beaks, and flew off grunting. Their mother swooped down upon me with an angry cry. The barred owl's song is weird. It is a series of eight or nine hoots which are given with much vigor, and which, at a distance, sound like the barking of a dog. When two or three barred owls join in a chorus, the effect is unbelievably comical. The usual cry is often varied with single hoots, barks, or grunts. It is not blameless in food habits. The usual fare of mice and chipmunks is occasionally varied with squirrels, rabbits, and birds, usually of smaller varieties. A good imitation of the cries of a barred owl may draw the creatures close, sometimes many of them at once. This cry will sometimes attract crows also, who sense the possibility of a good hour's attack upon an ancient foe. The barred owl is not protected in Pennsylvania. Sawet owl, Cryptoglio, Akadika, Akadika, Jimlin. Description Considerably smaller than a screech owl, no tufts on head. Adults, facial disc white with radial streaks of brown. Upper parts dull chocolate brown, finely streaked on head and spotted on back and wings with white. Tail with three or four whitish bars. Under parts white, broadly streaked with dark reddish brown. Legs and feet white, 
feathered down to claws, eyes yellow. Immature, like adult, but head and back unspotted and breast brown, unstreaked. Belly, deep buffy, eyes brownish. Length, 8 inches. Range in Pennsylvania. Nests rarely in the northern and mountainous counties, chiefly to be found as an irregular visitor in winter in northern and central Pennsylvania. Nest in a cavity, frequently a woodpecker's deserted nest. Eggs, three to five, white. This tiny owl is rarely seen, even though it lives in the vicinity. It hunts its food at night and sleeps so soundly by day that it may be captured in the hand. Its food habits are strictly beneficial, and it is protected by law. Look for the sawwet owl in dense growths of alder, hemlock, or in vines. A very small owl of erratic rapid flight is likely to be this species. All records of it are very desirable. Screech owl. Otis Asio Naevios, Jimlin. Other names. Scrinch owl. Little Owl, Red Owl, Gray Owl, Hoot Owl, Squeak Owl, Mottled Owl. Description. Size is small, but little longer than a robin, though heavier. Head with prominent ear tufts, almost always visible in the field. Feet feathered down to claws. Red phase of plumage. Upper parts bright reddish-brown, finely streaked with black, the scapular streaked with buffy white. Under parts white, streaked finely with black, and barred with reddish-brown, chiefly on sides. Gray phase of plumage. Upper parts gray, mixed with brownish, streaked with blackish, and mottled with white and buffy, especially on scapulars. Under parts white, streaked and barred with black, grayish and white, some of the patterns of the feathers being beautiful and unusual. Eyes yellow. Length, nine and a half inches. Range in Pennsylvania. A common permanent resident throughout the Commonwealth. Nest. In a cavity in a tree, often in an orchard. Eggs. Four to six. White. The screech owl is usually a familiar village bird whose quavering song is thought by some to be sad and ominous, by others to be among the most beautiful songs given by our birds. It lives principally upon mice, but it also captures small birds, particularly in the spring when it feeds upon nestlings which it finds in the vicinity. The coloration of the screech owl is interesting. That there should be two distinct types of color pattern wholly independent of age, sex, or season, seems rather useless. Some purpose, at present unknown, may be served by this phenomenon. The screech owl is protected in Pennsylvania. Great Horned Owl Bubo virginianus virginianus Jimlin Other names Hoot Owl, Big Owl, Cat Owl Description Size large, head with prominent tufts of feathers, feet fully feathered down to claws, female noticeably larger than male, facial disc rich orange-brown, ear tufts black edged with rich buffy, upper parts mottled and speckled with gray, black, white, and buffy, throat pure white, under parts buffy and white, finely and thickly barred with black. Feet buffy, tail and wings inconspicuously barred. Eyes large, bright yellow. Length about two feet. Range in Pennsylvania. A fairly common permanent resident throughout, particularly in higher woodlands along the ridges. Nest. An old crow's or hawk's nest, somewhat relined, or a large cavity in a tree or cliff. Eggs, two or three, white and nearly round. The eggs of this great bird of prey are laid early. More than once I have seen the mother incubating eggs, her back covered with snow. In Pennsylvania, nesting usually begins in mid-February, 
though a set of eggs has been taken in late January. The great horned owl is so muscular and so well armed with heavy beak and iron talons that it does not hesitate to capture large prey, such as large chickens, geese, and even turkeys. It is very fond of cottontail rabbits, whose skulls it crushes with a nip of its beak, and often kills skunks, though it may carry a reminder of the encounter for months. It is one of our most destructive birds of prey, though it varies its diet with mice and other harmful creatures. The deep-voiced hoot of this owl is usually heard on early spring nights. A mellow bass hoo <laughs> with remarkable carrying power is the love song. It is sometimes given all night long during late January when the moonlight gives the woodlands a chilly and mysterious brilliance. A loud and startling scream is sometimes given, which is often wrongly attributed to a wildcat. The probability is that a wildcat in its wildest fit of anger or alarm could not produce a sound half so loud and terrifying. In captivity, the great horned owl rarely becomes tame, though it may stand on its perch quietly enough during the day. One which I had at one time was somewhat tractable, yet not to be trusted. It caught the fingers of my left hand one day with its great claws, being unable to extricate myself and being threatened at any minute with a nip from the vicious beak, I summoned aid. I learned a little that day about the terrific grip that closes upon the unfortunate rabbit or skunk this creature captures. Snowy Owl Nyctea Nyctea Linnaeus Other names White Owl Arctic Owl Snow Owl Description Size large, head without ear tufts. Feet so heavily feathered that the claws are sometimes hidden. Plumage white, barred with dark grayish brown, particularly on the back and wings and sides of breast. Individuals vary greatly in appearance, some being pure white, others being heavily barred. Younger birds are usually darker. Eyes bright yellow. Length about two feet. Range in Pennsylvania. A rare and irregular winter visitor, particularly in the northern counties, and occasionally common as during the Heimel invasion, which occurred in 1926-27. to The snowy owl is a bird of the open fields, not of the woodlands, and, like the rough-legged hawk, is likely to be seen perched on a fence post, a haystack, or on the ground, rather than in a tree. Its white plumage makes it a prominent feature of the landscape, save when there is snow on the ground. In Pennsylvania, its food includes small game animals and birds, mice and other small mammals, and, occasionally, poultry. It is not particularly harmful since it usually confines its hunting to the open fields. In the North Country, it preys upon waterfowl. Its flight is very strong and rapid. It is not protected in Pennsylvania, though it should be because of its great rarity. Yellow-billed cuckoo, Cochizos americanos americanos, Linnaeus. Other name, rain crow. Description, a long, slender bird about the size of a robin with very long tail and curved bill. Feet with two toes pointing forward, two backward. Upper parts olive gray, glossed with green, the primaries rich reddish brown, apparent in flight. Tail with outer feathers black, broadly tipped with white, the outer vein of outer feathers also white. Underparts white, bill blackish, the lower mandible rich yellow, eyes dark brown, eyelids yellowish, length 12 inches. Range in Pennsylvania. A summer resident from early May to late September found chiefly about orchards and shade trees, principally in the southern and less mountainous counties. Additional nesting records of this species are desirable. Nest, a loose platform of twigs placed on a horizontal branch, usually not more than 15 feet from the ground. 
eggs three to six, pale greenish blue. The cuckoos are slim retiring birds which often are not seen unless they fly from the thick leaves where they have been searching for caterpillars, their favorite food. The yellow-billed cuckoo's very reddish wings serve to identify it at considerable distance. Its song is an unmusical series of cucks. No song is given which resembles the word cuckoo, our birds receiving their name merely from their relationship to the famed English bird. Black-billed cuckoo, Cochizos erythotalmus, Wilson. Other name, rain crow. Description, upper parts grayish-brown, faintly glossed with greenish and bronze, outer tail feathers narrowly and inconspicuously tipped with white. Underparts white, somewhat grayish on throat and breast, bill black, eyes dark brown, eyelids red. Length, a little under 12 inches. Range in Pennsylvania. A summer resident from early May to latter September. I have found this species common in some of the northern counties where the yellow-billed species was rare. Nest a rather well-built platform of twigs lined with leaves and a few grasses, usually but a few feet from the ground on a horizontal branch in a rather thick clump of saplings or in alders. Eggs, two to five, glaucous green, somewhat like those of the yellow bill, but darker and smaller. The black-billed cuckoo is fond of lowlands which are upgrown with young saplings, or of alders along streams. It is sometimes seen in orchards. The song of the black bill differs from that of the yellow bill in that the syllables are grouped, usually in threes. The song might be written the last syllables dying off gently. The yellow bill's song is louder. Like its slightly larger relative, the black bill is fond of caterpillars, and both are very valuable birds. They eat so many woolly caterpillars that their stomachs become lined with the spines from the bodies of their prey. Belted kingfisher, Streptocherila alchena, alchena, Linnaeus. Description. Head large with long bill and prominent crest. Feet small and short. Plumage firm and compact. Male. Head and crest blue-gray. The feathers with dark centers. Two spots, one in front of and one under eye, and collar about neck, white. Back and band across breast blue-gray. The wings and tail considerably spotted with white. Bill blackish, eyes dark brown. Female and young, similar but with sides and a broken band across lower breast, bright reddish brown, noticeable in the field. Length, 13 inches. Range in Pennsylvania. A common and widely distributed summer resident from late March until the end of October, occasional in winter when the streams are open. It does not occur along streams which have been polluted by mining refuse and other poisonous waste products. Nest, at the end of a six-foot burrow in a bank, made of a few fish bones and scales crudely scraped together. Eggs, usually seven, glossy white. The burrow, while usually dug rather high on a bank, directly along the stream, is sometimes located at some distance from water, it is dug with the bill and feet. The flashing white collar and underparts of the kingfisher gleam as he flies rapidly along his chosen stream, giving his loud, rattling call. As he perches on a favorite overhanging stub, he elevates his crest, rattles once or twice, then becomes quiet as he watches the pool below him. Suddenly, he dives from his perch, there is a splash, and he disappears beneath the surface. In a few seconds, he arises, a slim, glistening fish in his mandibles. 
He makes off upstream, rattling again and again as the fish ceases its struggles, then swallows his prey head first entire. In addition to fish, he eats crayfish and other small aquatic creatures and sometimes mice. When the young hatch, they are naked and ugly. They soon are covered with pin feathers, however, and when the tips of these break, the young begin to look like their parents at once. Several days before they leave the burrow to learn angling for themselves, they scuttle about on their short feet, sometimes coming to the entrance for a moment to glimpse the world that is soon to be such an unfolding of adventure for them. They rattle like their parents, and if a hand is thrust in among them, they pick savagely at the fingers, either in anger or with the belief that a larger, finer fish than parents ever caught has come to be swallowed. Kingfishers capture some trout and other valuable food or game fish and are therefore not protected in Pennsylvania. End of section 12. Read by Carolyn Seifarth, June 2023. Section 13 of An Introduction to the Birds of Pennsylvania. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This recording is by Michelle Fry, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. An Introduction to the Birds of Pennsylvania by George Mick Sutton. Section 13. Harry Woodpecker through Whippoorwill. Harry Woodpecker. Dryobates villosus villosus. Linnaeus. Other name, sapsucker. Erroneous. Description, smaller than a robin. Like other woodpeckers, usually seen perched on the trunk of a tree or flying in a strongly undulating fashion through the air. Adult male, top of head, line through eye and line from lower mandible to rear part of head, black, nape bright red, rest of head white, back black with white median stripe, wings black, spotted profusely with white, tail black and outer features white, unspotted, underparts white. The adult female is precisely the same, but lacks the red nape. Young birds have a crown red, the tips of the feathers lightly speckled with white. Length, nine and a half inches. Range in Pennsylvania, a common permanent resident, usually to be found in the higher woodlands, but often also found in the towns. Nest, a cavity in a tree trunk usually from 25 to 60 feet from the ground, the entrance about 2 inches in diameter. Eggs, 3 to 5, glossy white. The hairy woodpecker's loud, sharp, peek, peek, is a welcome sound in winter woods of northern Pennsylvania, where so few birds are found during the cold season. This species is an enemy of all wood-boring larvae. Its sharp, chisel-like bill, long, barb-tipped tongue, strong feet, and stiff tail, all being peculiarly adapted to existence on the tree trunks. It is sometimes found in orchards, but about towns and human dwellings is not nearly so often seen as its smaller, more confiding relative, the downy woodpecker. Downy woodpecker Dryobates, pubescens, medianus, swainson. Other name, sapsucker, erroneous. Description, about the size of an English sparrow. Precisely like the hairy woodpecker, but noticeably smaller, with shorter, weaker bill, and the outer tail feathers distinctly barred with black. The downy is quieter, less energetic bird than its larger cousin. Its call note is softer in quality, and its song, which is composed of a series of call notes rapidly repeated, is more musical than that of the hairy woodpecker. Length a little under seven inches. Range in Pennsylvania, an abundant permanent residence, often seen in the towns. 
nest a cavity in a dead stub usually from fifteen to thirty feet from the ground the entrance about one and a half inches in diameter eggs four to six laid on a heap of small chips at the bottom of the cavity glossy white the careful bird student can distinguish the hairy and downy woodpeckers from the call notes general appearance flight or even from the sound of their pounding on wood which in the hairy is so loud and positive in nature as to suggest at times a much larger bird the amateur however may have some difficulty in distinguishing the two species the downy and hairy both like to be fed suet during the winter they will come regularly to the feeding counter and often become quite tame yellow-bellied sapsucker Spirapicus varius varius linnaeus other name yellow-bellied woodpecker sapsucker description smaller than a robin with all the characteristics of the woodpecker tribe to which it belongs adult male top of the head and throat rich deep red lines below crown patch back of eye and enclosing throat to form prominent breast patch black lines above and below eye white back black spotted with white wings black with prominent white patch on greater coverts and primaries spotted tail black the central and outer feathers marked with white underparts whitish and pale yellow barred on sides and flanks with blackish gray adult female similar but throat white Immature birds are similar to the adult female, save on the head and back, which are brownish throughout. Spotted irregularly with black and on top of the head with flecks of red, yellow, and glossy black. Length, eight and one half inches. Range in Pennsylvania, a common migrant, sometimes abundant, from March 30th to May 15th, and from September 1st to November 15th, rare and local as a summer resident in the northern and mountainous counties casual in winter nest a cavity in dead or living wood often in a yellow birch from thirty to sixty feet from the ground eggs three to six glossy white the sapsucker is for the most part a quiet and rather dignified woodpecker rarely does it pound noisily at a dead stub searching for grubs as a rule it is to be seen drilling its sap wells on the lower trunk of a maple apple or hemlock where it clings sometimes for hours at a time if unmolested these wells which penetrate only to the sap bearing layer of bark are made in regular rows here gathers the sap which the bird regularly swallows together with all the small insects which have come to drink this sap drilling is a destructive trait for many valuable trees are girdled annually through the attacks chiefly of the migrant birds during the summer the parents capture only insect food for their young the mewing note of the sapsucker will startle the beginner in bird study it is almost as convincing an imitation of the cry of a cat as is the scolding querulous call of the catbird and is a familiar sound of the spring woods when courtship starts sapsuckers quite forget their dignity and go flashing through the treetops sometimes three or four in a flock bowing and dancing displaying their spotted wings and tails and giving forth loud and incessant flicker-like cries of plica plica a sapsucker sometimes actually becomes intoxicated with the juice it has drunk and wanders through the woods bumping into trees and branches grasping the bark as best it can with toes which are marvelously adapted to holding to rough surfaces even while the bird sleeps pileated woodpecker flotomus pileatus abiticola bangs other name red-headed woodpecker erroneous cock of the woods log cock woodcock erroneous indian hen black woodpecker description size large about that of a crow both sexes with prominent triangular crests 
adult male high crest and line from lower mandible to middle of head bright glossy red narrow line back of eye and prominent line from bill under eye to neck and down to edge of breast white throat whitish patch at base of folded primaries and irregular barring on sides and flanks white the underwing lining and most of the inner web of primaries white showing plainly in flight rest of plumage brownish black eyes bright orange yellow female similar but front of head brownish only the rear part of the crest red immature birds are similar to the female length seventeen inches range in pennsylvania a rare permanent resident found chiefly in the northern mountainous counties but a few still persist in the southwestern counties and locally elsewhere it is becoming somewhat commoner as a result of rigid protection nest a large cavity in a tree drilled by the birds usually in a dead stub though sometimes in a living yellow birch at from twenty to sixty feet from the ground eggs three to five glossy white the magnificent logcock is all too rare in pennsylvania but wherever the striking creature swings noisily across a valley or pounds with its great bill into soft wood the bird student receives a thrill few of our birds can afford its flight is rather slow and laborious and noticeably less undulating than in other woodpeckers it is given to searching for food in deep shadowy woods where it is sometimes the only bird to be found and where the sound of its hammering gives the only hint of life in the vast stillness the call of the pileated is a high irregular cackle something like the spring song of the flicker but more noisy and irregular an imitation of this cry a clapping of the hands or a beating of a dead stub with a stick will sometimes bring the curious bright-eyed creatures very close too close if the gunner be of the law-breaking kind the fact that this bird is sometimes called woodcock and therefore regarded as a game bird has led to the destruction of many of them they are naturally creatures of the wilderness and have never been really common careful protection will be necessary if we are to keep them from extinction in this commonwealth the food of the pileated woodpecker is chiefly grubs bored sometimes from the very center of great trees its long barb-tipped tongue aids it in securing its food in looking for the bird seek the wild wooded mountains listen for the cackling cry watch for a big black bird with flashing wing linings and attempt an imitation of its hammering by beating two sticks together the red-headed woodpecker melanerpes erythrocephalus erythrocephalus linnaeus other name redhead description a little smaller than a robin adults head neck and upper breast rich deep red upper parts glossy blue black the terminal half of the secondaries rump and upper tail coverts white tail black the outer feathers tipped and somewhat edged with white lower breast and belly white a reddish or buffy cast in the middle immature birds head and neck grayish brown somewhat mottled upper back glossy black barred with gray wings black the terminal half of secondaries barred with black and white tail usually as in adults under parts white the sides more or less streaked and spotted with dark brown or gray length nine and a half inches range in pennsylvania a local but usually common summer resident from april fifteenth to october first casual in winter nest a cavity drilled in a dead tree or telegraph pole usually from fifteen to thirty feet from the ground often in an oak eggs three to five glossy white the white wing patches of this bird are conspicuous particularly in flight and its loud cry queer queer is a familiar roadside sound it is given to capturing insects flycatcher fashion and is an accomplished acrobat in the air 
the food of the red head is varied and while it often eats grubs it also takes other insects and much small fruit occasionally an individual develops the habit of eating the eggs of other birds red-bellied woodpecker centurus carolinus linnaeus other names ladderback zebra woodpecker shiv sapsucker erroneous description a little smaller than a robin adult male top of head and back of neck bright glossy scarlet rest of head neck and underparts ashy gray the region about the bill and the belly usually tinged with red upper parts including wings strikingly barred with glossy black and white upper tail coverts white with median streaks or sagittate markings of black tail black the feathers considerably marked with white adult female similar the fore part of the head gray immature birds are similar to the female but the belly is often tinged with brownish rather than red length nine and a half inches range in pennsylvania fairly common in the extreme southwestern counties local sometimes common in other western counties as far north as crawfish county and through the southern tier of counties a permanent resident wherever found nest a cavity drilled from twenty to sixty feet from the ground usually in a forest tree eggs three to six glossy white the squirrel-like cry of this woodpecker which may be written chiv chiv is a familiar sound in some of the woodlands of green county its call notes resemble those of the redhead and flicker and are considerably varied the principal range of this species is the southern united states it is gradually moving northward however like the cardinal and should be looked for in all central counties the bright red top of the head and prominently barred back are good field marks northern flicker Colaptus auratus luteus bangs other names golden-winged woodpecker yellow hammer wake robin ground woodpecker wickup clap yarrup high hole plicka ant bird and many other names most of them colloquial description a little larger than a robin male top of head gray scarlet patch on nape black patch extending backward from each lower mandible rest of head cinnamon brown back of wings olive brown barred with black the wing linings and shafts of feathers bright yellow noticeable in flight rump and upper tail coverts white tail feathers black above edged with whitish bright yellow below breast with prominent black patch under parts light cinnamon brown each feather with round black spot at tip under tail coverts barred with black female similar but lacking the black marks which extend backward from the lower mandibles immature birds similar to the female but with red sprinkled over top of head length twelve inches range in pennsylvania an abundant and widely distributed summer resident and migrant from march fifteenth to november fifteenth casual in winter nest a cavity drilled in a living or dead tree often an apple or maple from four to forty feet from the ground eggs five to eleven usually seven or eight glossy white the flicker is one of our best-known birds living in the towns and conspicuous as it is with its golden wing and tail linings its white rump patch its easily imitated cries it is familiar to all and has won for itself many a nickname it is often seen hopping about on the lawn its ability in perching or in standing on the ground marks it as a creature of wide adaptation yet on the tree trunk it is a normal woodpecker using its still tail feathers as a prop the flicker is very fond of ants patiently it will sit on an ant hill probing its long saliva covered tongue down into the burrow drawing the insects out and eating them by the dozen it may remain thus at an ant hill for half an hour at a time filling its gizzard and crop with insects 
whose bites and acid flavor seem not to be objectionable. Flickers sometimes become annoying when they choose a tin roof or a favorite spot on a gable as a drumming point. At such a place they will roll out their challenge at sunrise on the spring mornings, wakening all the household. Occasionally they drill their nests in houses under the eaves and thereby may do considerable damage. The courtship dance is animated and beautiful. With handsome wings flashing and tail widely spread, the birds bow to each other, calling rapidly, Wicca! 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 Flickers are considerably persecuted by starlings, which oust them from their nests and use the cavities as their own. Whippoorwill Stethochalcis vocifera vocifera Wilson Description Head and eyes large, bill very small. Mouth lined with long hair-like feathers, which protrude in front of the bill. Feet small and weak. Plumage soft and lax. Color pattern highly protective. Head and upper parts rich deep brown and gray. Streaked, mottled, and barred with black, buffy, and whitish. A noticeable white band across the throat. Tail with terminal half of three outer feathers, white, no white spot in wings. Under parts, buffy, irregularly and finely barred and marked with blackish. Eyes, deep brown. The female differs only in having a throat patch and tips of the outer tail feathers, buffy instead of white. Length, ten inches. Range in Pennsylvania, a somewhat local summer resident from April 20th to September 30th, found only in deep woodlands. Nest. None. Eggs. Two white spotted sparingly with grayish lilac and brownish and laid on the leaves or ground without even a depression. The whippoorwill is never seen flying high in the sky and the absence of white spots in the wings always distinguishes it from the nighthawk. To find a whippoorwill, one must go to the deep woods, where, in a quiet tangle of ferns or bushes, a dark brown, silent-winged creature may fly from the leaves to flutter a few rods farther on and drop again to the ground. The well-known song, which is given with such constancy and fervor on spring and summer nights, may be written, Chuck, whippoorwee Chuck, whippoorwee Sometimes the song is repeated two hundred times or more without cessation. End of section thirteen. Section fourteen of an introduction to the birds of Pennsylvania. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit. LibriVox.org. An Introduction to the Birds of Pennsylvania by George Mitch Sutton. Nighthawk to Least Flycatcher. Nighthawk, Cordalis Minor Minor, J.R. Forster. Other names: Bull Bat, Whip Poor Will, Erroneous, Goat Sucker, Night Jar, Mosquito Hawk. Description. Mouth without prominent bristles, protruding in front of short bill. Wings long and pointed, tail forked. Male, upper parts black, barred, and variously marked with whitish, gray, buffy, and cream color. The flight feathers blackish. The middle of the primaries marked with a prominent bar of white, which is especially noticeable from below, in flight. Tail with a white bar across all but the middle feathers. Throat marked with a prominent white patch. Chin and upper throat black. The feathers tipped with buffy. Underparts whitish. Regularly and heavily barred with blackish. Female. Similar but lacks the white on tail. The throat patch is buffy, and the underparts are buffy barred with blackish. Length 10 inches. Range in Pennsylvania. A common migrant, but very local summer resident, from the first week of May to mid-September. During the fall migration, it is likely to occur in large flocks. Nest. None. Eggs. Two. White. Heavily spotted with gray, placed on the ground. In the open. Not, as a rule, in woods. 
The nighthawk is a familiar bird of summer evenings, when even over the cities it circles back and forth, calling as it hunts its insect food. Pia, pia, in a rough, grating voice. In spring, it courts its mate by plunging rapidly downward on set wings, producing with the vibrating primaries a booming sound which has given the bird the nickname Bullbat. It is one of our most beneficial birds. During the day, it sleeps or rests on the ground, or sits lengthwise on a horizontal branch. It has recently taken to laying its eggs on gravel-roofed buildings in the city. Young nighthawks, equipped as they are with strong feet, can run nimbly. The parents, though able to fly well, have lost much of the power of their foot muscles and can scarcely walk. Chimney Swift Cotura pelagica Linnaeus Other name, Chimney Swallow, erroneous. Description Wings very long, bill and feet very small. Tail of stiff feathers, all with noticeable spines at tip. Sexes alike. Plumage brownish-black, grayer on the throat, a deep black spot in front of eye, a ridge of feathers over the eye, forming a sort of brow. Length, five and a half inches. Range in Pennsylvania. A common migrant and summer resident from about the middle of April to October. It is widely distributed and occurs in all towns. Nest. A shallow, basket-like structure of small twigs glued together with saliva from the bird's mouth and fastened to the bricks on the inside of a chimney or rarely on boards on the inside of a barn or in a hollow tree. The nest has no lining. Nests built in a chimney are usually placed well down from the top. Eggs, four to six, white. The familiar chimney swift, with its cheerful, chittering cries and its rapid bow and arrow flight, is a common bird in all Pennsylvania towns. In the wilder sections, in the mountains for instance, it is rare. It has come to depend upon chimneys almost exclusively as nesting sites. This is a valuable bird, eating only flying insects, which it captures from the air. It alights nowhere save inside the chimney, where it clings to the rough bricks with its exceedingly strong and sharply clawed feet, using its spiny tail as a prop. In securing nesting material, it breaks dead twigs off with its feet while flying, lifting these to its mouth while in the air, there to cover them with saliva. Ruby-throated hummingbird. Archaeolochus colubris, Linnaeus. Other names, hummer, ruby-throat. Description, our smallest bird, bill about twice as long as head, feet small with downy plumage at base. Wings with comparatively short bones, but with powerful muscles. Tail feathers pointed in male, rounded in female. Adult male. Upper parts glossy, bright green. Wings and tail with steel blue or violet reflections. Throat gorgeous orange-red in proper lights, velvety black from some angles. Breast with noticeable white patch. Rest of underparts grayish, glossed with green on sides. Tail forked. Female. Similar, but with almost pure white underparts and no ruby throat patch. Tail somewhat rounded, with three outer tail feathers tipped with white. Immature. Similar to female, the male having its throat streaked with dusky and sprinkled with occasional ruby feathers. Length, three and three quarters inches. Range in Pennsylvania. A common migrant and summer resident from May 1st to October 1st, and sometimes later. Nest. A small dainty structure made of plant down, lichens, and cobwebs, saddled to a horizontal and often dead branch, from 10 to 60 feet from the ground, in an orchard, yard, or woodland. Eggs. Two. Plain white. The rapid buzzing flight of these birds as they wander about the cannas, honeysuckles, and nasturtiums, fanning the leaves and petals with their shining wings as they search for nectar and tiny insects, is known to all who have a flower garden. The hummingbird should not be confused with the hawk moth or sphinx moth, which come out at about the same time in the evening, and which have much the appearance of tiny birds as they buzz among the flowers. Kingbird. Tyrannus, Tyrannus, Tyrannus. Linnaeus. Other names. Bee bird, bee martin, tyrant flycatcher. Description. Smaller than a robin, with upright attitude in perching, sexes alike. 
Upper parts dark gray, darkest on head, wings, and tail. Crowned with concealed patch of orange-red. Wing coverts, edged with lighter gray. Tip of tail, white. Underparts pure white, washed with grayish on throat and breast. Eyes dark brown. Young birds are similar, but lack the crown patch, are duller in appearance, and the plumage is often more or less tinged with buff. Length, eight and a half inches. Range in Pennsylvania. A migrant and summer resident, common in the agricultural districts, rather rare in forested districts, from mid-April to mid-September. Nest. Well constructed of dead weed stalks, string, and plant fibers, lined with softer materials, placed from 4 to 30 feet from the ground, in alders, orchard, or other trees, usually in a crotch of several branches, and well toward the end of the branch. Eggs, four, sometimes three or five, white, spotted with dark brown. The kingbird is often to be seen on a barbed wire fence, telegraph wire, or prominent dead stub where he watches for passing insects or for hawks or crows, which he chases with energy and effect. As he flies, his wings beat rapidly with a fluttering motion, and the white tip of his widely spread tail shows plainly at considerable distance. His challenge note, which may be written, Pitink, Pitink, irregularly repeated, is the only outcry usually heard, though he occasionally indulges in a softer effort which may be called a song. If a small pebble is tossed at him in play, he watches it carefully in a curiously puzzled fashion, as though he were at the point of capturing and swallowing it. He has some difficulty in tiring and capturing insects as large as a dragonfly, but he is very fond of these strong-winged insects, and pursues them assiduously. Rarely, he captures bees, and these are usually drones. He is at his best when he chases a hawk, owl, or crow. At such times, his anger mounts, and he gives battle with all the fury of his small body thrown into the noisy and vicious attack. So determine a combatant is he that he sometimes actually alights on his larger, more awkward enemy, picking at the plumage and perhaps at the skull and eyes. Crested Flycatcher Myarchus Crinitus Boreus Bangs Description A little smaller than a robin, with upright perching attitude and dignified, masterful bearing. Sexes similar. Upper parts grayish olive-brown, outer primaries edged with dull reddish-brown, and inner vein of all tail feathers pale reddish-brown, which often shows plainly in flight. Throat and breast light gray, belly pale yellow. Length 9 inches. Range in Pennsylvania. A fairly common migrant and summer resident in the orchards and woodlands from mid-April to mid-September. Nest. Of vegetable fiber, roots, downy material, and a cast-off snakeskin or two, in a cavity in a tree or a nesting box, at from 10 to 40 feet from the ground. Eggs, 3 to 6, creamy white, heavily streaked, longitudinally, with rich brown. The crested flycatcher's loud, incisive, creep, creep, rings through the spring woodlands as the handsome bird seeks mate and nesting place. His large, crested head and yellow underparts are usually obvious in the field. He is given to perching on high dead branches, usually beneath the canopy of outer leaves, and he turns his head from side to side thoughtfully as he watches for passing insects which he captures with great agility. This is our only bird which regularly uses cast-off snakeskins in its nest. These may serve to frighten off intruders. Phoebe, Cyarnus Phoebe, Latham. Other names... Bridge bird, Phoebe bird, Peewee, erroneous. Description, larger than English sparrow, with upright position and comparatively long tail, which is occasionally quickly lifted as the bird watches for insects. Upper parts, grayish, olive brown, darkest on top of head. Bar on wings noticeable in field. Tail with outer edge of outer tail feathers, white, not noticeable in field. Under parts, white suffused with yellowish, and tinged with brownish-gray on breast and sides. Bill and eyes black. Length, 7 inches. Range in Pennsylvania. Abundant migrant and summer resident from mid-March to November. Nest. Of moss and vegetable substances, lined with finer, softer materials, and placed on any projection which will hold it, under a bridge, on a stone ledge, in a well, or spring house, 
or under the roof of a porch. Eggs, 3 to 6, white, rarely with a few small brown spots. The simple call notes, fiti b and z b, and the habit of wagging or jerking the tail now and then serve to identify this bird, even though no colors be noted. Look for it along small streams or near rock ledges, where the nests are built in April. The Phoebe is a confirmed eater of insects, and is one of our most valuable birds. It comes with the pussy willows and the first cries of the tiny tree frogs, and stays until the host of migrating warblers has all but passed through. Olive-sided flycatcher Natalornis borealis borealis Swainson Description Smaller than a robin, with upright carriage and dull unmarked appearance. Upper parts, sides of breast, and sides, dark olive gray. Wings and tail darker. Throat and middle of breast and belly, very pale yellow or yellowish white. Under tail coverts, marked with dusky. A loose tuft of fluffy, silver white feathers on either flank, sometimes protruding through wings on back. Bill dark, save base of lower mandible which is yellow. Length, seven and a half inches. Range in Pennsylvania. A rather regular but rare migrant from mid-May to about the end of the month and from late August to the middle of September. As a summer resident found only in coniferous woodlands at high altitudes or in the northernmost counties. Nest? Rather well made of twigs and mosses, placed on a branch of hemlock or other conifer at from 25 to 40 feet from the ground. Eggs? Three or four, creamy white, spotted, chiefly at larger end, with reddish brown. The olive side will usually be seen on the topmost twig of a tree, sitting quietly in a dignified upright manner. His call note, pit per weir, is very distinctive, not to be confused with any other bird song of this latitude. The white tufts of feathers on the flanks I have found not to be a good field mark, for they do not, apparently, often show, but the call note and the dark sides are unmistakable. At Pimatuning Swamp, I have seen fair-sized flocks of olive-sided flycatchers late in spring. The bird is usually so rare that the sight of several of them sitting about on tips of the hemlocks is long to be remembered. Additional records of this species are desirable. See illustration page 87. Wood Peewee, Myocanus virens, Linnaeus. Description, about the size of an English sparrow with upright perching attitude. Adults, dark grayish olive above, the wings with two rather indistinct whitish wing bars. Underparts, white or pale yellowish, washed with grayish on sides of throat and on breast. Upper mandible dark, lower mandible yellowish, eyes black. Immature birds, similar but the wing coverts tipped with buffy and underparts more yellowish. Length, six and a half inches. Range in Pennsylvania a common migrant and summer resident from May 1st to October 1st. Nest, a shallow cup made of vegetable fibers, small twigs, cocoons, lichens, and moss, saddled on a horizontal branch from 25 to 40 feet from the ground, usually in a shady woodland. Eggs, three or four, creamy white, with a wreath of dark brown spots about the larger end. The wood peewee's plaintive, musical, peewee, peewee, the first half ending with an upward inflection, the latter with a distinct falling, is a characteristic bird note of the summer woodlands. The singer is usually seen high in a tree, not near the ground, as is the phoebe. It does not have the habit of flicking its tail. A bird of the shadowy woodland, not of the open stream sides, it will not be confused with any other bird if its song may be heard. In appearance, it is much like the other small flycatchers. The song is often almost perfectly imitated by the starling, so that peewee songs heard in winter or in unlikely places should be investigated. The Small Flycatchers The bird student will find the shy, dull-colored small flycatchers difficult to identify. All forms of the group found regularly in Pennsylvania, aside from the phoebe and peewee, are dull olive green or grayish above, lighter or whitish below, have a more or less noticeable eye ring and two noticeable wing bars. These small flycatchers are so similar in size and color that it is at times almost impossible to distinguish specimens in the hand, but
but they are reasonably easy to identify in the field, chiefly from their call notes, which are very distinctive, from their habitat, which differs considerably, and from the dates upon which they are seen. They are all under six inches in length. All of these birds have an erect, perching attitude. None of them, strictly speaking, sings a song. All are equipped with broad, flat bills for capturing insects. Yellow-bellied flycatcher. Empidonyx flavaventris. W.M. and S.F. Baird. The yellow-bellied flycatcher is a migrant in mid-spring and early autumn, not found during the summer, save at one or two high altitudes where it nests rarely. It is always rather noticeably yellow below and is found in low, thick woodlands, not often far from the ground. The call note is a nervous tsik or shebek, its song a querulous tsuik, with a rising inflection. In fall, immature birds are sometimes exceedingly abundant. Acadian flycatcher, Empedonyx viricens, Vielo. This flycatcher lives in shadowy woodlands along ravines, where long swaying branches of beech, maple, or hemlock overhang a stream. Here, not at great heights, is built the shallow, thin nest where the three eggs are laid. These are creamy white, spotted with dark brown at the larger end. The call of this bird may be written pitiyuk, or wheezy, and is of an explosive character. Do not look for this bird save in woodlands along streams. It will not be found in swamps or in orchards. It comes in early May and stays until mid-September and occurs chiefly in the southern and less mountainous counties. Alder flycatcher, Empedonyx trili trili, Ojubon. The alder flycatcher will be seen in low growth along streams or in swamps, often actually among alders. Its sides are yellowish, but the belly is always white. The song of the species, which is usually delivered from a prominent and sometimes high perch, may be written Becky Weir, and is different from any other flycatcher song, save perhaps that of the olive sided. Its nest is a compact structure built in the alders two to three feet from the ground, usually in a swamp. The three or four eggs are white, sparsely spotted with brown. The alder flycatcher is found chiefly in the more northerly countries as a summer resident, from early May to September. Least flycatcher, Shebek. Ampedonyx minimus, W.M. and S.F. Baird. The least flycatcher is a bird of open aspen copses, or orchards. Its energetic Shebek, which is given with a violent toss of the head, is always characteristic and is responsible for its common name. Look for the bird during migration in May and in September. As a summer resident, it occurs chiefly in the more northern countries, where it builds its deep nest in the crotch of some low tree. The eggs, three or four in number, are pure white. Feathers are often used in the nest, which is made of vegetable fiber and hair. End of section 14. Section 15 of An Introduction to the Birds of Pennsylvania. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. An Introduction to the Birds of Pennsylvania by George Mitch Sutton. Horned Lark to Bobolink. Horned Lark, Otocorus alpestris alpestris. Linnaeus. This northern relative of our prairie horned lark visits Pennsylvania occasionally in winter, especially in the northern countries. It is a larger, more reddish bird, and the line above the eye is distinctly yellow, sometimes quite colorful. Prairie horned lark, Otocorus alpestris praticola, Henshaw. Other name, shore lark. Description, larger than an English sparrow, a bird of the ground, with straight toenails, the hind one very long. Adult male. Patch on forepart of crown with lateral lines leading to two tiny tufts or horns on nape. Patch in front of and below eye, and another on upper breast, black. Forehead and line above eye whitish, sometimes very faintly tinged with a yellow. Throat pale yellow. 
back of head and upper parts pale grayish brown mixed with reddish brown on neck, back, and wings. Middle tail feathers brown, the other feathers blackish, the outer veins of the outer feathers white. Lower breast and belly whitish, suffused with pinkish brown on sides and flanks. Bill, feet, and eyes black. Female and immature. Similar but duller. Young birds in their first plumage are much spotted, with pale yellowish above, and with blackish below. Length, a little over seven inches. Range in Pennsylvania. Local permanent resident, sometimes quite common and found only in the opener sections, on bald hilltops, or in wide fields in agricultural districts. Nest. A cup in the ground, lined with grasses, plant down, and other vegetable material. Eggs. 3 to 5, greenish white, heavily marked with grayish brown, sometimes with a wreath of heavier spots around larger end. The nest is always placed in a wide open field, sometimes on a bare hilltop. It is built very early in the season, sometimes in early or mid March, while snow is still on the ground. In the windy open fields or on treeless hilltops, this demure and dull colored bird lives. As he walks or runs among the short grass, twittering in a companionable way, standing still for a moment to survey his surroundings, then wandering off again. Little is noted to remind us of the glorious courtship song which this bird of the ground gives during early spring, and for which he should be as famous as the English skylark. Mounting upward from the clods, he finally reaches a far height, where he pours out his melodious tinkling music, minute after minute, sweeping about in wide circles, or steadily flying into the wind. Thirty or forty times he may give his song, then becoming tired of his performance, downward he drops to the earth in long, graceful sweeps to alight unconcernedly. He sometimes sings from the ground or from a fence post. Horned larks are given to flocking together in the winter, and when snow covers the ground they sometimes come into the farmyards or congregate along roads, where they eat horse manure or waste grain. Look for the black facial markings of these plain brown birds and remember that they will be found only in open country. Blue Jay Cyanacita cristata bromia Oberholzer Description Larger than robin, sexes similar, both with prominent crest, nostril covered with tuft of feathers, head, crest, and back grayish-blue, forehead and a noticeable collar across lower throat, ear coverts, and back of crest black. Region about eye, whitish. Throat and underparts grayish-white, darkest on sides. Wings and tail, bright turquoise blue. The greater coverts, secondaries, and tertials, tip broadly with white, and all of the feathers barred strikingly with black on their exposed surface. Tail feathers barred with black. The outer ones tip noticeably with white. Feet and bill, black. Eyes dark brown. Length about 12 inches. Range in Pennsylvania. We should expect the blue jay to be a permanent resident in Pennsylvania wherever it is found. It occurs the year round, notably in the southwestern and southern counties, and is usually a summer resident and early spring and midfall migrant from March 20th to November 1st. As a summer bird, it is somewhat local in distribution. Nest. A bulky mass of twigs, rootlets, and weed stalks, rather well-made and neatly cupped, placed from 10 to 30 feet from the ground, usually in a more or less open situation and often in a conifer. Eggs, 3 to 6, pale gray-green or greenish-gray, heavily marked with dull and indefinite brown and gray spots. The blue jay's colors and manners are unmistakable. As he flies, the white-tipped outer tail feathers and secondaries show plainly. As he perches, his crest is prominent. But when the bird student essays to identify the blue jay from call notes alone, there may be trouble. For this bright creature not only has a considerable vocabulary of his own, but also imitates other birds extremely well. He can reproduce the scream of a red-shouldered hawk so faithfully that small birds of the vicinity drop into silence for an instant. More than once this cry has misled me. As a rule, he screams, peer, peer, in a dominant harsh voice or gives violin-like squeaky calls, the pattern and musical intent of which are known only to himself. He is a confirmed nest robber and is not protected by law in Pennsylvania. 
While it is true that he eats the eggs and young of smaller birds, yet he has some food habits in his favor, and at worst is a handsome villain. The nest is defended valiantly by the parents. I once climbed to a blue jay's nest and took the last remaining young one. As I started to descend, I felt a sharp blow on my forehead. When I reached the ground, my face was lined with blood. The parent bird had punctured my skin with her beak. In fall and winter, blue jays are very fond of beech nuts and acorns. At the feeding counter, they often choose peanuts if these are to be found. Their hardy manner and brilliant colors make them an attractive addition to any flock of bird neighbors, in spite of their objectionable traits. Northern Raven Corvus Corax Principalis Ridgeway Description Much larger than a crow, bill and feet very strong and heavy, feathers of throat long and pointed, not rounded, entire plumage black, glossed with steel blue and pale greenish and purplish, length about 24 inches, wing spread about 4 feet. Range in Pennsylvania A rare permanent resident found only in the wildest mountain gorges, chiefly in the central counties. Nest, a very large and bulky affair, deeply cupped like a crow's, usually placed in an inaccessible niche on a cliff or high in a tree. It is made of twigs and branches and is lined with moss, hair, grapevine bark, and rootlets. Eggs, three to six, usually pale bluish or bluish green, spotted with brown, olive, and gray. Ravens might easily pass for crows were not their cracked, raucous voices to echo solemnly through the gorges which they inhabit. Looking up, we may see the great black birds circling through the sky like hawks. We may be near enough to note that the tail is not rounded as in the crow, but wedge-shaped, the middle feathers being noticeably the longest. When a raven does not soar nor croak, he appears much like a crow, and identification ought to be either from notes or flight or from direct comparison with crows. These smaller cousins, incidentally, mob the raven with as much gusto as they exhibit in attacking an owl. Crow. Corvus. Bracarincos. Bracarincos. Brem. Description. Black, glossed with bluish and purplish, underparts duller in appearance. The crow is probably our best-known bird. Length, 19 inches. Range, in Pennsylvania. In southeastern counties, the crow occurs the year-round, and during winter in great flocks. Elsewhere, it is chiefly absent in winter, returning in late February or early March, and remaining until December. It is widely distributed and abundant as a summer resident. Nest, a bulky structure made of twigs, moss, and leaves, lined with hair, grapevine bark, and moss, placed from 20 to 60 feet from the ground in trees. Eggs, 3 to 6, generally light bluish green, heavily spotted with brown and gray. Call notes, flight and appearance and bad habits of the crow are all well known and need no discussion. It should be said, however, that its destruction of ground-inhabiting insects, tomato, and tobacco worms, and small mammals, is to its credit. The crow is not protected in Pennsylvania. Fish Crow Corvus ossifragus Wilson The fish crow is decidedly smaller than the common crow, 16 inches in length, though this is not noticeable in the field. The underparts are brightly glossed as above, and the call notes are decidedly different from those of the crow, being higher and not sounding like a call. The fish crow occurs in Pennsylvania, chiefly along the Susquehanna and Delaware rivers, and is not usually seen far from these streams. At Harrisburg, a large colony nests at McCormick's Island. Fish crows often pick their food from the surface of the water like gulls. Starling Sternus vulgaris vulgaris Linnaeus Other names Blackbird, erroneous Black sparrow, erroneous Description a little smaller than a robin, with a long pointed bill and short tail. Feathers of head and neck narrow and pointed. Walks when on the ground. Adults in spring. Plumage, black, highly glossed with blue, green, purple, and violet, particularly on the neck. All feathers above more or less broadly tipped with creamy or buffy. Unspotted below, save on sides and flanks. Wings brown, the coverts glossy all feathers edged with brownish gray, feet mahogany red, bill yellow, eyes dark brown. 
in winter. Similar, but underparts as well as upperparts spotted with whitish or creamy buff. Bill brown, not yellow. Young birds before they molt into the first winter plumage are dull grayish brown, unmarked. Their bills are blackish brown. Length about 8 inches. Range in Pennsylvania. Now found in almost every county and rapidly encroaching upon the western or more mountainous counties. Exceedingly abundant in the southeastern counties. Occurring locally at certain seasons in flocks of thousands. Nest of grasses, leaves, and weed stalks, placed in a natural cavity in a tree, a woodpecker nest, or bird box. Eggs, three to six, pale blue. Introduced from Europe about 50 years ago, the starling has extended its range rapidly, so that it is today one of the abundant birds of most of Pennsylvania. It is very gregarious, and, save in the spring, is usually seen in immense flocks, walking through fields or wheeling about in the air with fluttering flight. It nests early, utilizing all available cavities, and if there are not enough to go round, it permits flickers or red-headed woodpeckers to dig one and then ousts the owners so as to use the new cavity for its own nest. It has been known actually to kill flickers in driving them from their newly made nests. As starlings become increasingly abundant, there is grave danger of their making it difficult for some of our birds to rear their young at all. The starling is a great mimic. It has a characteristic high, thin squeal and numerous chuckling notes, which it intersperses with imitations of the wood peewee, bob white, and other well-known birds. As it sings, it puffs out its throat feathers, and during spring shakes its wings in ecstasy. Favorable remarks must be made concerning the food habits of this bird. It eats, especially during spring and summer, much noxious insect life, noticeably larvae, which it finds in lawns and fields, and it preys upon the dreaded Japanese beetle. As its natural enemies come to assert themselves, it may eventually become a desirable bird citizen. Starlings roost together in great numbers. They like to congregate in barn lofts, cupolas, or steeples, or along the high window sills and cornices of buildings, where they squeal all night as they crowd each other or take short flights in the soft glow of the electric lights. Bubblelink Dolichonyx or Rizavorus. Linnaeus. Other names. Skunk bird. In fall, reed bird. Rice bird. Description. Bill short, conical, and sparrow-like. Tail feathers sharply pointed. Adult male in spring. Glossy black, with broad patch of buffy yellow on nape and hind neck. A few streaks of yellowish on the back, and scapulars, lower back, rump, and upper tail coverts, white. The upper part of the rump patch, grayer. Tertials and greater coverts edged with buffy. Underparts sometimes indistinctly barred with buffy. Eyes brown. Bill black. Feet mahogany red. Female. Sparrow-like in appearance, buffy in color, heavily streaked above, lightly on sides. A black line back of eye, and crown blackish divided by median buffy line. Immature birds in first fall plumage are similar to the adult female, but much lighter in appearance, sometimes quite yellow, noticeably so in the field. The adult male after a complete early spring molt is rich in appearance, the brownish tips of this plumage wearing off in forming the nesting plumage with which we are best acquainted. Length 7 inches. Range in Pennsylvania. A summer resident, common in certain localities, almost altogether absent elsewhere. It is to be looked for from mid-April to early May until mid-October. Nest. On the ground in a grassy meadow, well hidden from above and difficult to find, made of grasses and rootlets, lined with finer materials. Eggs. Three to seven, pale grayish, spotted and scrawled, sometimes quite heavily, with dark brown and olive gray. Robert O. Lincoln is not to be found in every meadow where daisies grow, and where the grass is deep and green, but in those wide green lowlands or grassy slopes which he has chosen for his own, the gay songster reigns supreme, flying on tremulous wings over the flowers, trailing into the grasses to let his legs and wings hang limp while he continues his bubbling song, flying boldly toward the intruder and luring him aside. The bobolink's song is a marvel of bird music. It seems to spring from an inexhaustible supply of strange syllables and genuine musical notes, offered in a tumultuous jumble 
as profligate as the manner in which the bird lets himself fall into the grass while he continues to sing. Sometimes I have thought the birds wanted to stop their song but could not. And meanwhile, the female is warned of the approach of an enemy. She sits quietly on her nest or slips away. In the autumn, the birds abandon their nesting grounds and flock in the grass fields, garden patches, or swamplands, where goldenrod and rank weeds furnish food and shelter for the night. Here, the yellowish young troop along, gaily calling, wink, wink, as the weed tops bend with the weight of their plump bodies. On a cool night, they rise to pass to the rice fields of the south, where they will be shot by the thousand as the dreaded rice bird, and thence to South America, their winter home. End of section 15. Section 16 of An Introduction to the Birds of Pennsylvania. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This recording is by Michelle Fry, Baton Rouge, Louisiana in may two thousand twenty three an introduction to the birds of pennsylvania by george mick sutton section sixteen cowbird through evening grosbeak cowbird molothrus atter atter budart other names cow blackbird and blackbird Description, smaller than a robin, bill short, heavy, and sparrow-like. Adult male, head, neck, and breast, coffee brown, with faint purple gloss. Rest of plumage, black, with greenish reflections over most of the surface, but bluish and purplish in certain lights. Adult female, noticeably smaller than male, dull gray-brown all over, slightly streaked on underparts, and paler on throat. Young birds are similar to the female, but are somewhat more buffy on the throat, and the underparts are slightly more streaked, the feathers being edged with buffy brown. Length, about 8 inches. Range in Pennsylvania, an abundant summer resident from about March 15th to November 1st, casual in winter. Nest the cowbird builds no nest, but lays its eggs in the nests of other, usually smaller species, and does not incubate them nor care for the young in any way. The species most commonly thus parasitized in Pennsylvania are the red-eyed vireo, yellow warbler, phoebe, song and field sparrow, oven bird, scarlet tanager, and others. I have never found cowbird eggs in a red-winged blackbird's nest, and, as a rule, red wings chase cowbirds away from their home swamp angrily whenever they appear. When the cowbird comes in spring, he is usually concerned over his mating, and while he is not a songster, he puts much energy into his high, thin squeak as he bows, almost upside down, with wings and tail outspread in the top of some tree. This same high note is often to be heard as the birds, in groups of three or four, pass over, undulating slightly in the manner of their tribe. On the ground, the cowbird walks in a quiet and dignified manner. It may be seen in pastures, sometimes perching on the cows' backs, where it captures insects. I once saw a flock of them remain an entire morning near a newly born calf, evincing great interest in the little creature and its mother. The female is an expert at locating nests. Evidently, she watches smaller birds, learns where they are building their nests, and then while they are not watching her, slips in and deposits her egg. Sometimes the egg is laid long before the nest is completed. Occasionally, when an egg is thus deposited before the rightful owner of the nest has laid her eggs, the little birds build another bottom in their nest, sealing the heavy egg beneath the hair and vegetable fiber. Yellow warbler nests are thus sometimes several stories high, and I have more than once found eggs sealed into the foundation material of the nests of larger birds. 
i remember one scarlet tanager nest which held two eggs of the owner and four of the cowbird and there was an additional cowbird egg sealed in the foundation material being larger than his nestmates the young cowbird claims the most attention he may actually push the other young and eggs out of the nest the cowbird's food habits are not objectionable however and no ill effects seem to result from this parasitism upon smaller birds red-winged blackbird agelaus phoenicius predatorius wilson other names swamp blackbird red wing in autumn reed bird description smaller than robin adult male in spring black with bluish reflections and occasionally narrow rusty edgings lesser coverts bright scarlet an outer row of largest feathers buffy or whitish eyes dark brown bill and feet black males in first breeding plumage similar but likely to be more marked with rusty and some of the feathers of the scarlet patch are streaked with dark brown adult males in winter upper parts edged with rusty adult females heavily streaked with dark brown and buffy above and with blackish and light gray below a pinkish or orange buffy suffusion over the face particularly on the throat immature birds are similar to the females young birds in the molt in august and september are strangely blotched with black and buffy length male about nine and a half inches females about eight and a half inches range in pennsylvania a common though somewhat locally distributed summer resident from mid-march to early november found as a nesting bird only where there are cattail swamps or low meadows sometimes noted in winter nest a neatly woven basket of dry grasses suspended usually between cattail stalks a few feet above the water in a swamp or in weeds or bushes in a low meadow eggs three to six pale blue spotted and scrawled chiefly at the larger end with black at about the time the hilarious tree frogs set up their evening choruses the red wing returns his handsome plumage enlivens the stretches of dead cattails and his tuneful liquid song delights the ear as he sings he spreads his blazing wing patches and fluffs out his glossy plumage the males come north in a body before the females arrive the females set to work building the nests almost at once if the weed growth is low in the swamp they build them but slightly above the water those built by females which arrive later are higher if nests are suspended upon growing cattail leaves or stalks they are sometimes overturned by the unequal growth of the vegetation let a hawk or crow appear near the red wing swamp and a spirited chase ensues almost with the kingbird's persistence the brilliant males sometimes several of them dive and scold at the intruder the while the smaller creatures of the swamps cease their noises and watch the busy scene red wings occasionally do considerable damage in grain fields in late summer and early autumn but their food habits are for the most part beneficial or at least not harmful meadowlark sternella magna magna linnaeus other name field lark description size of robin with short tail large strong feet and long pointed bill male upper parts brown the plumage of the back marked with black and margined with creamy and whitish the tertials and middle tail feathers barred with black line above eye yellow in front and buffy behind cheeks gray throat breast and belly bright yellow the breast marked with a prominent black collar sides buffy streaked heavily with dark brown and black outer tail feathers white showing plainly in flight eyes dark brown bill brownish feet flesh color female similar but duller adults and young in winter much browner the yellow of the breast considerably clouded by brown tips of the new plumage which wear off as spring approaches 
Length, ten and a half inches. Range in Pennsylvania, an abundant summer resident from mid-March until November. Casual, sometimes fairly common, in winter, if food is available. Nest. A depression in the ground, in a wide field, among deep grasses, lined with dry grass, the surrounding grass pulled into an arch above. Eggs, three to six, white, spotted with reddish-brown, chiefly at the larger end. Meadowlark nests may sometimes be found by dragging a rope loosely stretched between two persons across the meadow. The high, clear whistle of the meadowlark, as he perches in a tree or stands erect on the ground, is a familiar bird song of the early spring. His bright breast glows in the sunshine as he stands for an instant, then disappears altogether as he lowers his head and walks through the grass. Let him slip out of sight for a second, and it may be difficult to see him again, for he is protectively colored, the margins of the feathers of his back forming lines which resemble the dead grasses. As he flies, his wings beat in a muscular fashion, and the white outer feathers of his short, widespread tail show plainly. If his nest is nearby, he may perch on a post and call with a rough chattering as he flashes his tail energetically. The meadowlark's food habits are chiefly beneficial. It eats many grubs and cutworms, confining most of its foraging to the ground. In the early fall, they sometimes congregate in great flocks during the latter part of the period of molt. They do not usually sing at such times, but when the new plumage is complete and the day warm, the whole flock may begin to sing with remarkable effect. Orchard Oriole Icterus spurious, Linnaeus. Other name, orchard bird. Description, smaller than the Baltimore Oriole. Adult male, head and neck, back, wings and tail, black. The greater coverts and secondaries edged with white. Breast, belly, rump, upper tail coverts. And lesser coverts of wing, rich deep chestnut. Female, olive gray above, yellow on face, underparts and rump, wings with two whitish bars. The male in its first breeding plumage is like the female, but has a black throat patch, length a little over seven inches. Range in Pennsylvania, a rather rare and exceedingly local species, found chiefly in the southern counties, but occasionally as far north as Crawford County in western Pennsylvania. It arrives in late April or early May and remains until September 15th. Nest a pouch of grass which is green when the nest is constructed, usually swung between upright twigs at the top of a small tree, rarely in a conifer. The nest is not so deep as that of the Baltimore Oriole and is never swung at the tip of a drooping branch, so far as I know. The exceedingly bright and varied song of this species may puzzle the bird student who hears it for the first time. It is hardly deliberate enough to suggest an oriole, but it is full-throated and tropical in fervor and decidedly noticeable. The flight is characteristic, giving the impression that the wings are never lifted above the back. Orchard orioles are likely to nest in groups, several pairs in one neighborhood. They are so irregular in their occurrence that the bird student must watch assiduously for them. Baltimore Oriole Icterus galbula, Linnaeus Other names, hangbird, hangnest, golden robin Description, smaller than robin, adult male, head, neck, back, wings, and tail, black, lesser coverts, orange, tertials and greater coverts, edged with white, outer tail feathers, tipped with orange or yellow, Breast, belly, rump, and upper tail coverts, bright orange, deepest on the breast. Female, olive brown above, yellow below, breast somewhat tinged with orange, wings with two noticeable buffy yellow bars, tertials prominently edged with whitish. Immature birds are similar to the female. Eyes dark brown, bill and feet blue-gray, length seven and one-half inches. Range in Pennsylvania, an abundant summer resident from latter April to early fall. 
it is not often seen in the fall as it usually leaves before the middle of september nest a deep pouch of plant fibers horsehair and string lined with soft materials swung from the tip of a branch usually of an elm maple or sycamore fifteen to sixty feet from the ground eggs four to six white scrawled with blackish chiefly at the larger end the male oreo is one of the most gorgeous birds with his bright colors and loud assertive song in the full flowered apple trees the dignified creature crawls about nipping at buds or snatching up insects the female builds the nest and the young call for food incessantly often attracting attention to it some of the orioles call notes and alarm notes are exceedingly harsh and grating calling to mind the tropics their ancestral home rusty blackbird euphigus carolinus Mueller. description smaller than robin adult male in spring entire plumage glossy blue black bill and feet black eyes pale yellow adult female slate color somewhat glossy above wings and tail blackish adult male in winter black all the feathers edged with buffy brown the top of the head almost solid brownish young birds in their first winter plumage are chiefly responsible for the name of the bird they are rusty brown paler on head richest on back with slate colored wings and tail a dark line through the eye and pale yellow eyes length nine and a half inches range in pennsylvania a fairly common and regular migrant sometimes abundant from early or mid-march sometimes earlier to early may and from september tenth to november fifteenth it usually occurs in flocks this is our blackest blackbird in the spring in the fall it is hardly a blackbird at all look for this species in swampy situations or along margins of streams it likes to walk about on the ground and through water like a sandpiper and is more terrestrial than the red wing the spring flocks sometimes burst forth into song and the effect in the distance is that of sleigh bells a jangling jolly chorus a single male's efforts hardly merit being called a song rusty blackbirds are grackle-like in actions and their whitish eyes suggest grackles but they do not have the trough-shaped tail and the tail feathers are about of equal length purple grackle and bronzed grackle quiscalus quiscula ridgewahi oberholster and quiscalus quiscula aeneas ridgeway other names blackbird crow blackbird description males larger than robin with large tails distinctly trough shaped especially in flight the male purple grackle's head and neck are brilliant iridescent blue and violet the body which appears blackish at a distance is glossed with blue green plum color and bronze and the back and scapulars and sometimes the sides are crossed with iridescent bars the male bronzed grackle's head is iridescent greenish blue with little or no violet reflection and the body is rich glossy bronze without iridescent bars in both these forms the females are similar but duller and noticeably smaller the eyes of all are pale yellow young birds are dull brown and when quite young have grayish eyes which turn to pale yellow as the bird grows older length male twelve to thirteen and a half inches range in pennsylvania the purple grackle is found east of the allegheny mountains the bronzed grackle occurs west of the alleghanies in the mountainous sections the farms intermingle to a certain extent grackles are abundant summer residents from mid-march to november nest a large amply cupped structure of grasses weeds and other materials sometimes strengthened with mud usually built in a coniferous tree in a yard or on a campus from twenty to sixty feet from the ground but also built in willows in bridges high buildings and rarely among cattails eggs three to seven pale blue gray or whitish scrawled and blotched with brown black and gray 
this is the bird which is everywhere called black bird it is a bird of the town not of the wilds preferring to nest in parks cemeteries and college campuses among the pines spruces or cedars it eats many cutworms but does some damage in grain fields and in destroying fruit grackles walk sedately about the lawns their white eyes gleaming with a ghostly brilliance the call note is a harsh shack evening grosbeak hesperophona vespertina vespertina w cooper description smaller than robin beak very large and heavy male forehead line over eye scapulars lower back and rump sides of breast and belly dull yellow crown and most of wing brownish black secondaries and their greater coverts white a prominent field mark rest of plumage olive brown female grayish the back and scapulars faintly washed with olive yellow wings tail and upper tail coverts considerably spotted and marked with white tips of the inner webs of all the tail feathers white bill pale yellowish gray length eight inches range in pennsylvania a rare and irregular winter visitant noted chiefly in the northern counties in pike and tioga counties it has been noted with some regularity during the latter part of recent winters it is usually to be seen in small flocks and it often occurs in towns evening grosbeaks see so little of man in their wilderness home in the great northwest that they are surprisingly unsuspicious when they visit us during the winter they are sociable almost always being seen in flocks and they feed upon seeds of maple and other trees upon frozen apples and upon berries which they find notably those of the mountain ash occasionally they visit the leafless shade trees of towns pine grosbeak pinacola enucleator liqueura muller description about the size of a robin a small bunch of bristling feathers over the nostrils bill sparrow-like but upper mandible somewhat curved like a parrot's adult male gray suffused with soft rose red principally on the crown rump upper tail coverts and breast wings and tail dark brownish gray the wings with two prominent white bars adult female gray the crown rump upper tail coverts and breast more or less strongly suffused with yellowish or olive the wings and tails as in the male immature males resemble the adult female but are brighter length nine inches range in pennsylvania a rare and irregular winter visitant recorded from many sections of the commonwealth but doubtless of most frequent occurrence in the more northerly counties the pine grosbeak has been well named so fond is it of coniferous trees and the food it finds among the needles and buds that its bill is frequently covered with resinous substances in pennsylvania the bird also eats the berries of mountain ash sumac and similar plants it is sometimes quite unsuspicious being unacquainted with the ways of man and will allow the observer to approach very closely the call note is a clear bell-like whistle its full song is rarely to be heard in this latitude end of section sixteen Section 17 of an Introduction to the Birds of Pennsylvania. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. An Introduction to the Birds of Pennsylvania by George Mix Sutton. Purple Finch. Corporacus purpureus purpureus melin. Other name linnet description size and general proportions of english sparrow nostrils covered with small bristly feathers tail slightly fold adult male head and breast rosy pink not purple some of the feathers with dusky tips and a darker streak through the eye back brownish gray streaked 
and suffused with rose color wings and tail brownish belly whitish sides somewhat streaked with brownish adult female very sparrow like in appearance in fact closely resembling a female english sparrow but the whitish under parts heavily streaked with dark brown the immature male is much like the female and this plumage is held through the first nesting season the subsequent molt leading into the rose red plumage of the full adult length a little over 6 inches range in pennsylvania a fairly common and regular migrant throughout from mid march to mid may and from september 15 to october 31st as a summer resident it is found only in the northern and mountainous counties and it is decidedly local as a nesting bird it is irregular though at times common in winter nest a neat structure with wide full cup constructed of plant stems and fibers lined with finer materials placed in a conifer orchard tree or sapling at from 20 to 40 feet from the ground eggs 3 to 5 pale blue wreathed about the larger end with spots and lines of black the lovely purple finch is all too little known it occurs at some time during the year at every locality in pennsylvania yet it is not a familiar bird the song alone should win it wide acclaim as a bird neighbor for delivered from the top of a tree or from a vine or weed it is one of the brightest most varied of our bird melodies and is given with such enthusiasm that we recognize in the singer a canary like interest in prolonging the performance purple finches are often seen among the budding branches of a fruit tree balancing on the slender twigs as they eat birds and capture occasional insects the females are virtually silent until they have cause to depart then they swing off into the air bound merrily higher and higher above the tree tops and make off as they call tick tick in a characteristic tone this important call note should be remembered it often serves to identify the species when the colors cannot be seen in its nesting range the song of this finch is to be heard during all the spring and early summer days at pymatoning swamp restless males sang almost constantly while their mates assembled nesting materials an ecstatic flight song is frequently given when the bright male flutters high into the air and still singing descends on trembling wings to the twigs and new leaves the purple finch habit of eating birds and flowers of trees including valuable orchard varieties causes it to be unpopular when it is too common red or american crossbill loxia curvirostra pusilla glogger description size and general shape of english sparrow but mandibles sharply pointed and crossed adult male deep dull red brightest on rump browner on back wings and tail brownish black female dull olive green yellowish on the rump head and back indistinctly streaked with blackish under parts mixed with whitish immature male like the female with some red mixed in the plumage length 6 inches white winged crossbill loxia leucotera melin description size and shape of english sparrow male dull rose pink brightest on rump more or less streaked with blackish on back wings and tail black the wings with two prominent white bars the tarsals sometimes tipped with white belly and under tail coverts whitish female dull grayish green yellowish on the rump grayish below the wings as in the male with two prominent white bars immature male similar to the female but mottled irregularly with pink length 6 inches range in pennsylvania both crossbills are irregular winter visitors sometimes abundant they are usually found among coniferous trees the red crossbill nests rarely in our higher mountains 
among the coniferous trees. These two species are nearly always to be found together during winter and in any plumage may be recognized by their wings. Those of the white winged species always having two wing bars, those of the red crossbill never being marked. The crossbills feed upon seeds of hemlock, pine and spruce which they secure by wrenching off the scales of the cones with their sharply pointed and crossed beaks. Red pole Acanthus linearia linearia linus Description Smaller than the English sparrow, conical bill, sharply pointed, nostrils covered with tufts of bristling feathers, adult male, crown bright red, chin and upper throat blackish, neck and back grayish brown, streaked with buffy and whitish, rump grayish, tinged with pink, wings and tail dark brown, the wings with two white bars, breast and cheeks washed with delicate rosy pink, belly white, sides buffy streaked with blackish, female similar but more heavily streaked above and without pink on breast or rump, length 5 inches. Range in Pennsylvania a rare and irregular winter visitor from the far north. It sometimes occurs during the entire winter, but it is usually seen during the latter part and chiefly in the northern counties. Red poles like goldfinches swing about through the air with strongly undulating flight. They give a rasping, querulous squeal as they lift their crests and watch us. The birds are fond of weed seeds which they pick up from the snow. Usually they sit with feathers considerably fluffed out and at such times the rosy breast of the male is noticeable. Goldfinch Astragalinus tristis tristis linus Other names Salad bird Wild canary Thistle bird Yellow bird Description Smaller than English sparrow, bill sharply pointed, adult male in summer, bright lemon yellow with black crown, wings and tail, the wings crossed with two white bars, the lesser covers yellow like the body, and the tail feathers with their inner waves white, upper tail covers grey, adult female in summer, upper parts yellowish brown, the crown unmarked, below, Dull yellowish, wings and tail more or less as in male, but not so black, nor so strikingly marked. Lesser coverts dull olive green. Adult male in winter, like adult female, but lesser wing coverts yellow, breast dull yellow, belly whitish, sides brownish. Young male in winter, similar but the lesser wing coverts are dull greenish or greyish. Young males in summer, like the adult, but the lesser coverts are dull greenish or greyish. Length 5 inches. Range in Pennsylvania. A common permanent resident, somewhat irregular in winter, and often not known as a winter bird because of the complete change of color and habits. Nest. A compact, neatly built cup of weed stalks and vegetable fiber. Lined with soft materials, placed from 3 to 30 feet from the ground, often in a shade tree on a branch extending over the highway. Eggs 3 to 6 pale blue. The goldfinch is comparatively unknown as a winter bird. With the change of color, the birds become wilder in disposition, no longer frequent the lawns and roadsides and band together in large flocks. In summer, the brightly colored males are very noticeable as they swing about among the flowers in a field or perch on dandelions in the yard. They are brilliant singers even in winter and may be recognized at a great distance in the summer by the flight song which has been written by Chick Cody and which is repeated with each bound of the deeply undulating flight. This bird nests very late, eggs being laid in latter June and July. In spring, 
they are sometimes considerably mottled in appearance as the brown winter plumage drops out and is replaced by the yellow of summer this prenuptial molt is usually complete by the middle of may or earlier and with the brighter plumage return all the familiar call notes and graceful motions which we associate with these attractive birds goldfinches are fond of sunflower and cosmos seed and we may lure them to the garden perhaps for the entire year by planting such flowers as these regularly pine siskin spinus pinus pinus wilson other name pine finch description smaller than english sparrow bill sharply pointed a tuft of small feathers over nostril upper parts grayish brown streaked with black the feathers margined with buffy wing feathers aged with yellowish and yellow at base tail dark gray brown neatly forked all but middle feathers yellow at base under parts white washed with buffy and heavily streaked with black length 5 inches range in pennsylvania a somewhat irregular migrant in april and may and in september and october sometimes very common irregularly abundant in winter it has been known to nest in the mountainous counties when winter flocks of these sociable finches visit pennsylvania the birds feed largely upon the seeds of hemlock and alder merrily they bound about through the air giving their rough querulous squeal in looking for this bird remember that the heavily streaked underparts and the yellow on the wings and tail are unmistakable siskins will sometimes be found feeding among the alders not far from the ground they often wander about with flocks of goldfinches english sparrow passer domesticus lineus other names sparrow house sparrow description male chin and throat black crown gray cheeks whitish back of head neck and back reddish brown the back streaked with black a prominent white wing bar under parts grayish white wings and tail dull brown female grayish brown with an indistinct wing bar a darker line through the eye and a rather distinct superciliary line length about 6 inches range in pennsylvania an abundant permanent resident principally in the towns and on the farms nest a bulky mass of dry grasses usually domed over and lined warmly with feathers placed in crevices in buildings in bird houses in cavities in trees and rather rarely on a branch of a tree eggs 4 to 6 white spotted with gray the amateur bird student may do well to fix definitely in his mind the size and appearance of this abundant bird since it is advisable to know these when making the acquaintance of other bird friends and especially when studying the rather difficult sparrow group english sparrows are not altogether objectionable during summer they prey upon almost all kinds of insects including the hard shelled and disagreeably scented insects which many birds pass by nevertheless we regret that these birds are so abundant because of their tendency toward driving out some of our more beautiful native birds snow bunting plectrophinax nivalis nivalis lineus other names snowflake snowbird description a little larger than an english sparrow male in winter upper parts dull reddish brown darkest on the crown feathers of back with partly concealed black bases causing a streaked effect outer primaries black white at base secondaries white middle tail feathers black other ones white under parts white female similar but duller and with primaries all dark brown 
and wide secondary is somewhat tipped with dusky length 6 and 3/4 inches range in pennsylvania a rare and irregular winter visitant save at erie where it is fairly regular and sometimes common on the outer beaches from november to early march it is occasionally seen in small flocks in other northern counties a single snow bunting in flight might suggest to the bird student an albuministic sparrow of some sort but a whole flock of the remarkably colored creatures as they swing over a dead weed field can but bring the instantaneous thrill which a glimpse of such exotic creatures always brings snow buntings are usually seen in flocks often in company with horned larks or tree sparrows their companions in the north country and they have a jovial twitter the lapland longspur calcareus laponicus laponicus occurs rarely during early spring or late fall migration or in winter it is about the size of an english sparrow and in winter has a concealed reddish patch on the neck a concealed blackish belly and is to be seen in fields where it sometimes associates with snow buntings horned larks or tree sparrows vesper sparrow poisids gramineus gramineus melin other names grass finch grass or ground sparrow bay winged bunting road sparrow description size of english sparrow general appearance grayish above lighter below considerably streaked above and on breast and sides outer tail feathers white lesser wing coverts reddish brown not particularly conspicuous save at close range length 6 inches range in pennsylvania a common summer resident from early april to late october it is not found in woodlands nest a cup in the ground in an open field lined with grasses hair and other fine material eggs 3 to 5 white spotted and scrawled chiefly at larger end with blackish the vesper sparrow is not very easily recognized by its appearance alone as it stand on the ground or on a fence post but if the bird student will remember that this species is always found in the open never at great distance from the ground and that the white outer tail feathers always show in flight identification should be easy the bright song is given with great enthusiasm often in a remarkably beautiful evening chorus at the beginning of this song we usually hear two accented descending whistles which stand out more prominently than any other portion of the warbling performance look for vesper sparrows along fields and road sides in country districts end of section 17section 18 of an introduction to the birds of pennsylvania this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org read by prajakta an introduction to the birds of pennsylvania by george mix sutton savanna sparrow passerculus sandwichensis savanna wilson description smaller than english sparrow general appearance above gray considerably streaked and with white underparts considerably streaked on breast and sides with black line above eye pale yellow not noticeable in field save at close range in ideal light a blotch of blackish in middle of breast length 5 and 1/2 inches range in pennsylvania a fairly common but not often recorded migrant and a local and sometimes common summer resident particularly in the central and northern counties from early april to mid october nest a depression in the ground in an open field lined with grasses and other soft material eggs 
फोर टू सिक्स पेल ब्लूइश और ब्लूइश ग्रीन इेगुलरली एंड समटाइम्स हेविली स्पॉटेड विथ ब्राउन लुक फॉर सवाना स्पैरो इन स्प्रिंग एंड समर ओनली इन वाइड ओपन फील्ड वेयर द ग्रास इज शॉर्ट हियर इज अ स्लाइट बजिंग थ्रिलिंग सॉन्ग मे बी हर्ड फ्रॉम अ स्पैरो विच इज प्रोमिनेंटली स्ट्रिक्ट बिलो एंड विच हैज मच द अपियरेंस ऑफ अ सॉन्ग स्पैरो बट डज नॉट बॉप इट्स टेल एज इट फ्लाइज नॉर सीक कवर इन बुशेस If the bird student will remember that this species is to be found only in wide fields usually when there are no bushes and that there are no prominently white outer tail feathers as in the vesper sparrow he may find this little known bird fairly common in his region in fall it is found in weed patches along roads or in bushy fields grasshopper sparrow Amodramus savanarum australis minard other names yellow winged sparrow yellow winged bunting description smaller than english sparrow tail feathers rather short and pointed adult male general color buffy brown the upper parts streaked with black and margined with whitish in characteristic pattern bent of the wing yellow this mark usually not evident in the field for part of superciliary line yellow noticeable in good light in the field female similar but duller length 5 and a half inches range in pennsylvania a rather local summer resident throughout from late april to early may to september 15 it is found only in more or less flat wide meadows not usually in marshy places and never in woodlands nest a depression in the ground beneath a clump of grass lined with fine dry grasses eggs 4 to 5 white spotted chiefly around the larger end with reddish brown here is a bird which will more than likely pass unnoticed unless the fine insect like song is heard some bird students never realize that this species nests in their region for they never hear this song and they have not the patience to trail about after every little brown bird they see the grasshopper sparrow's song is dry unmusical and buzzing and it seems a fitting accompaniment to hot midsummer fields which are covered with dust and upgrown with coarse weeds The bird is almost never seen save while it is singing from the top of a weed or from a fence post on the ground it disappears almost at once for its colors are highly protective the flight is fluttering and somewhat erratic if the bird flushes from the grass it usually does not alight near at hand but zigzags to a far corner of the field and drops into the grass the smaller henslow's sparrow nemus pisa henslowi susurans has a greenish cast over the head and neck this retiring unmusical little bird occurs in pennsylvania as a very rare and exceedingly local summer resident its ludicrously short song chislick is to be listened for in low meadows where the grass is thick and deep additional records of this species are very desirable the nelson's sparrow amos pisa caudacta nelsoni occurs at eri as a migrant particularly in the fall white crowned sparrow zonotrichia leucophrys j r forster description one of the largest sparrows being larger than an english sparrow adult male crown white with two broad black streaks along either side and a blackish streak through eye rest of upper parts grayish brown considerably streaked under parts clear light gray palest on throat and belly and somewhat brownish on sides adult female similar but duller immature 
similar but crown buffy and brown and under parts more buffy length a little under 7 inches range in pennsylvania a regular and fairly common migrant throughout from latter april to may 20th and from october 1 to 20 the large size and noticeable markings of this sparrow make it comparatively easy to identify it is not often so common as its near and similar relative the white throated sparrow from which it differs in having no yellow before the eye or on the bend of the wing and no white throat patch the song of the white crowned sparrow is composed of soft rich whistles which have a plaintive character similar to that of the well known white throat's peabody song with an additional rough undertone between first and latter parts of the song the white crown while in pennsylvania nearly always occurs in flocks usually in the woodlands in brush piles or along hedges remember that a bird with a white crown need not necessarily be this species for the white throat also has such a crown but the plain gray throat of the white crown is usually easy to detect in the field since the birds are not white all members of the sparrow tribe are seed eaters white throated sparrow zonotrichia albicollis melin other name peabody bird description a little larger than an english sparrow similar in general appearance to the white crowned sparrow adult male crown white marked laterally with two black bands which extend backward to nape four part of superciliary line yellow rest of upper parts rich brown streaked with black and margined with grayish bend of wing yellow not usually noticeable in field chin and throat pure white in contrast with gray of breast belly whitish sides washed with brownish female and young similar but duller length 6 and 1/2 inches range in pennsylvania a regular and abundant migrant throughout from mid april to may 20 and from september 15 to november 1 the clear fragile whistle of the white throat is one of our most beautiful bird notes and is a familiar song of the spring woodlands it has been written as sweet sweet peabody 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 the white throat and yellow spot in front of the eye must be looked for in this species a trained observer can recognize the white throat easily by its characteristic rather metallic call note but the beginner had best depend on the markings of the bird which are easy to note sometimes these birds are common about lawns in towns tree sparrow spizella arborea arborea wilson description about as long as but slenderer than an english sparrow tail longer proportionately than an english sparrow's crown patch bright rufous rest of upper parts brownish gray streaked with black and reddish brown wing with two noticeable white wing parts under parts brownish gray whitish on chin and throat and in middle of belly a dusky spot in center of breast female similar but duller bill yellow with dusky tip length about 6 inches range in pennsylvania a winter visitant from the far north arriving in october and remaining until late march or april the tree sparrow is a bird of weedy fields and hedges in flocks they search for seeds which have fallen upon the snow when the winter sun shines they call in companionable and softly musical notes in spring the tree sparrow has a gay somewhat warbler like song which i believe is not very well known among our bird students the tree field and chipping sparrows are similar in appearance 
Identification of these birds should not be difficult. However, if one remembers that the tree sparrow is a winter bird, while the field and chipping sparrows usually arrive in spring after the tree sparrows have returned north. If by some chance the three sparrows do occur together, remember the black spot in the breast of the tree sparrow and the yellowish bill field marks which the other two species do not have. Chipping Sparrow Spizella passerina passerina baxteen Other name Chippy Description A small slender sparrow noticeably smaller than the English sparrow. Male Crown bright reddish brown Four part of crown and line through eye black Line above eye whitish Rest of upper parts grayish brown, streaked with black, chin and throat white, rest of under parts grayish, bill black, female, similar but duller. In winter, both sexes are similar but they are much more strict, particularly on the crown. Length, under 5.5 inches. Range in Pennsylvania. An abundant summer resident from early April to mid October. Nest A neat cup made of fine weed stalks and grasses, lined almost invariably with horse hair and placed in a low bush or rose vine, or sometimes at some distance from the ground in an evergreen tree. Eggs 3 or 4, delicate blue. Wreathed about the larger ant with black spots and scrolls. Look for the chippy as a rule only near houses or farms. It is not a bird of the wilds and because of its confiding disposition has come to be associated with our very doorsteps. The monotonous though cheerful chipping song of this bird is familiar to all who listen for bird calls. So rapidly are the chips of its song given that it is almost impossible to imitate it. Remember the black bill and unmarked underparts of the chipping sparrow. Field Sparrow Spizella pusilla pusilla Wilson Description Size small This is one of our slenderest, smallest sparrows. Male Crown patch rufus Upper parts grayish brown Streaked with black and rufous, wings with two prominent white wing bars, underparts whitish, unmarked, bill pink, female similar but duller, young similar but somewhat more streaked, length 5.5 inches, range in Pennsylvania, an abundant summer resident from early April to mid October and occasionally later. Nest a neat cup made of fine grasses and slender weed stalks lined usually with finer grasses and as a rule not with hair placed on the ground among weeds or in a low thick bush in a pasture or field. Eggs 3 to 5 bluish white spotted with reddish brown. The clear whistled trill of the field sparrow is a welcome promise of spring as the bird just returned from the south, sings in the brown fields. The song is often but a simple repetition of the same note, becoming more rapid toward the end and running into a sort of trill. This bird is rather shy and in flying away gives us a rather unsatisfactory glimpse of fairly long tail and greyish rump. If we look carefully at the little creature with a glass, we note the white wing bars, the dark eye which is surrounded with a greyish ring and the pink bill. Slate colored Junko Junko Hamelis Hamelis Linaus Other names Snowbird Junko Description About the size of an English sparrow but with a longer tail. Male Head, neck, breast and upper parts slaty grey Sometimes brownish on the wings and back. The outer tail feathers pure white, always showing in flight. Bill pink, narrowly tipped with dusky. 
female and young similar but duller and often browner length a little over 6 inches range in pennsylvania best known as a winter visitant from october 1 to about the 1st of may or later rather rare and local as a summer resident in the higher mountains nest a cup of fine grasses built in a bank in woodlands eggs 3 to 5 white spotted with brown the junco is easy to recognize anywhere because the dark plumage of its back contrasts so startlingly with the white outer tail feathers its song is not so easy to recognize however being a rather musical chipping song resembling that of the chipping sparrow but more deliberately given junco's do not often sing during the winter but with return of spring they trill in the sunlit corners of the woods where they feed upon weed seeds nesting records of the junco in pennsylvania are desirable song sparrow melospiza melodia melodia wilson other name ground sparrow description about the size of an english sparrow but with relatively longer tail sex is similar above rich brown streaked with grayish and black a rather distinct gray superciliary a buffy streak back from lower mandible under parts white heavily streaked with black especially on breast and sides a blotch in the center of the breast length a little over 6 inches range in pennsylvania in much of the pennsylvania the song sparrow is abundant year round it is migratory however to an extent and summer resident individuals may be replaced during winter by birds from farther north nest a neat cup built of grasses lined with finer materials and usually with rather bulky foundation built on the ground in a sheltered situation or in a low bush eggs 3 to 6 greenish or grayish white rather heavily spotted with brown the song sparrow's heavily streaked underparts will distinguish it from all other sparrows save the rare lincoln's sparrow the savanna sparrow which is found only in wide open fields the fox sparrow whose tail is bright reddish brown and the female purple finch look for song sparrows along brooks among the bushes as the brown birds fly away their rounded tails pump rather regularly the song is bright and varied with usually two or three accented repeated notes which give it a syncopated rhythm and is generally delivered from the topmost twig of a bush or low tree lincoln's sparrow melospiza lincolni lincolni is a little known migrant in may and september which may be far commoner than it supposed it looks much like the song sparrow but has a buffy area across the chest and the streaking of the underparts is finer look for this species along the brushy margins of streams the song which is remarkably sprightly gurgling performance is quite unlike that of any other sparrow which i have heard backman's sparrow pequua astivalis backmani is a very rare summer resident known from southern countries only this species looks like a song sparrow but it has no streaks on the underparts it is found on brushy hillsides swamp sparrow melospiza georgiana latham description a little smaller than an english sparrow with the proportions of a song sparrow male in summer crown rich reddish brown rest of head gray a black line through the eye and a buffy streak extending backward from the lower mandible back reddish brown streaked with black the feathers margined with grayish no wing bars under parts grayish the sides washed with olive brown female 
similar but duller male in winter somewhat streaked crown patch and duller in general appearance length a little under 6 inches range in pennsylvania a migrant in latter april and may and in september and october in the northern counties and at higher altitudes locally it occurs as a summer resident nesting where there are suitable marshes nest of grasses with bulky foundation and neat cup usually placed a few inches from the ground or above water in a clump of weeds or in cat tails eggs 3 to 5 pale blue blotched and spotted irregularly with brown look for the swamp sparrow as a rule only in marshy country the gray unstreaked underparts the red brown crown patch and a shy furtive manner characterize this species its song which is usually delivered from a cat tail or high weed stalk but often from a hidden spot among the weeds is somewhat like a chipping sparrow's with the chips given much more slowly and loudly end of section 18section 19 of an introduction to the birds of pennsylvania this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org an introduction to the birds of pennsylvania by george mick sutton fox sparrow passerella iliac iliac merum description larger than an english sparrow male rich warm brown on crown and back these regions somewhat streaked superciliary line and neck gray ear coverts brown slight wing bars rump upper tail coverts and tail bright reddish brown very noticeable in the field particularly when the bird is in flight underparts white breast and sides heavily streaked with black female similar but duller length a little over 7 inches range in pennsylvania a common and regular migrant from mid march sometimes earlier to april 20 and from early october to november 15 it is one of the earliest of the spring migrants its rich red brown rump and tail are sufficient to distinguish this bird from the other sparrows but not always from the hermit thrush a bird with a surprisingly similar color pattern when seen from the rear or in flight the thrush has a slender bill of course and has the habit of elevating the tail when it alights usually the fox sparrow occurs in flocks in spring it indulges itself in song a rich ringing melody among the most impressive of our sparrow songs the call note is a heavy ch somewhat like the alarm cry of the brown thrasher look for the fox sparrow in thick woodlands among grape vines and similar tangles this species responds readily to squeaking towhi pipilo erythrothalmus erythrothalmus linnaeus other names chewink ground robin swamp robin jory guffy local description a little smaller than a robin with long tail and comparatively short wings male head neck upper breast and upper parts black the base and part of the outer wave of the primaries and spots on the tertials white three outer tail feathers with white tips the outer wave of the outer feather entirely white sides and under tail coverts rich reddish brown bordered irregularly with black spots along sides of belly belly white eyes bright red bill black female similar in pattern but black of male replaced throughout by rich grayish brown quite bright in some individuals eyes bright reddish brown length 8 and 1/2 inches range in pennsylvania 
an abundant migrant and summer resident in all woodlands usually from early or mid april to late october or later occasionally it is found in the dead of winter even when the snow is deep nest a cup of grasses and slender weed stalks generally placed on the ground rarely in a low bush lined with finer materials and usually located in the woodlands at the base of a small tree under a may apple plant or in a bank eggs 3 to 5 white thickly evenly and finely spotted and sometimes blotched with reddish brown grayish and black the tohits interesting habit of scratching among the leaves is characteristic and rather amusing like a little hen the bird bustles about on the ground jumping back and forth as the leaf mold flies and as the small terrestrial insects and fallen weed seeds are exposed a tauhi thus hunting for food may make a laughably big noise its flight is jerky not usually rapid and the tail pumps and flashes considerably showing the white tips of the outer feathers plainly none of our woodland birds more clearly displays white in the tail than does this ground inhabiting species unless it is the smaller junco listen for the often repeated rather loud call note of this bird tui as he elevates his crest and flicks his tail the song is rather musical and resembles somewhat the following syllabization pretty pretty the last part being run together so rapidly as to be scarcely pronounceable the tauhi sings from the top of a bush or low tree and while performing lets his tail hang limp and lifts and throws back his head young tohis carefully guarded by their voluble and agitated parents are hard to find in their leafy home they have heavily streaked underparts and therefore look a good deal more like the race of sparrows to which they belong than do their parents cardinal richmondena cardinalis cardinalis linnaeus other names red bird virginia cardinal or red bird cardinal grosbeak description smaller than robin both sexes with high crests and huge pink bills adult male bright deep rose red richest on breast back wing and tail feathers edged with grayish region in front of eye and on throat black bill orange pink eyes brown female grayish brown above buffy white and grayish below the crest wings and tail tinged with red noticeable especially in flight young male like the adult female but the underwing linings are pink and the breast is blotched with red length 8 inches range in pennsylvania an abundant permanent resident in southern and western pennsylvania and locally in the mountains it is extending its range northward along the river valleys nest a neat but rather thin cup of weed stalks and grasses scantily lined with rootlets and other fine materials eggs 3 or 4 white spotted and speckled with lilac and grayish both the male and female cardinal sing a loud whistling song which may be variously written as puri puri ripa ripa fichu fichu or pocha pocha many times repeated the call note is a metallic chirp cardinals are sometimes familiar dooryard birds since they stay the year round a special effort should be made to feed them corn soot nuts sunflower seeds and grit during the snowy spells cardinals like to nest in shadowy places and will sometimes rear their young in shrubbery or vines which grow about our porches rose breasted grosbeak hedemelles ludovisiana linnaeus description smaller than robin 
with very large beak adult male head neck and upper parts black the wings tail and upper tail coverts marked with white triangular breast patch and underwing linings light rose red rest of under parts white streaked on sides with black bill white or pinkish white eyes dark brown adult female sparrow like in appearance being dull brown streaked with black above the wings marked with two whitish wing bars the under parts buffy streaked with brown on breast and sides young males like the females but with rosy under wing linings adult male in winter like adult female but the wings and tail more or less as in the spring plumage and rosy breast patch showing to an extent length 8 inches range in pennsylvania a somewhat local and irregular migrant throughout and a summer resident chiefly in the central and northern counties from late april to mid september nest a cup made of vegetable fibers and rootlets often so thin that the eggs show through placed in a thick tree in a low damp situation 8 to 25 feet from ground eggs 3 to 6 pale blue green spotted with brown the song of this bird is a bright musical warble resembling the carol of a robin both sexes incubate the eggs and the male may sometimes be heard singing softly or in a full throated manner while at his domestic duties these birds eat many destructive insect pests including the much dreaded colorado potato beetle the call note may be written eek indigo bunting passerina cynia linaus description adult male in spring bright glossy green blue all over purplish on head somewhat dusky on wings and tail and the belly sometimes marked with a few whitish feathers bill and eyes black adult female grayish brown lighter below the lesser coverts and edge of wing and tail feathers bluish two obscure grayish wing bars young birds like the females adult males in winter similar to those in spring but all feathers tipped widely with brown giving an effect much as in the female length 5 and 1/2 inches range in pennsylvania a common migrant and summer resident from late april or early may to mid september sometimes very abundant in favorable localities nest a rather firm deep cup made of weed stalks and plant fibers placed a few feet from the ground in a raspberry or other low bush usually at the edge of a woodland or in an open space among the trees eggs 3 to 5 very pale blue or bluish white in the very top of a tree along the hot midsummer road side sings the brilliant male during the lazy noon hours his bright rich music an accompaniment to the damp warmth which rises from the fields or to the dust that settles on the leaves near the road approach the singer carefully or he will fly before you get a good glimpse of him the female is not easy to recognize unless she happens to be with or near her mate she is very dull in color and is not often seen raspberry and blackberry thickets are the favorite haunt for this bird the larger blue grosbeak curaca carolia carolia should be looked for in southern counties records for this rare species are very desirable the dickseasel or black throated bunting spiza americana is a very local summer resident which should be looked for in open fields it is english sparrow like in appearance but has a yellow breast its song may be written tick tick chuk 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 scarlet tanager piranga olivacea melin description larger than the english sparrow with bill which is heavy like a sparrow's but longer and not so conical adult male in summer bright scarlet are brightest red bird with black wings and tail 
pale olive green bill and dark brown eyes adult female olive green above dull yellow below male in winter olive green like the female but with black wings and tail male birds in changing plumage such as is found in late summer are much blotched in appearance length a little over 7 inches range in pennsylvania a common migrant and summer resident of the woodlands from late april and early may to mid september nest a rather shallow thinly constructed cup made of rootlets and weed stalks placed from 20 to 40 feet from the ground usually in a deciduous tree eggs 3 to 6 pale blue green speckled with reddish brown the slow crawling movements and lazy rather harsh warbling song of this bird strongly suggests the tropics its ancestral home its song is much like a robin's but it is more alto and is harsher and lazier and its call note is a plainly given chipper which is often more frequently heard in the damp woodlands than any other bird note of midsummer the intensity of the male scarlet tanager's full plumage fairly takes the breath at a distance the dull female may suggest a vireo or a large warbler but her movements are always characteristic of this family purple martin progne subis subis linnaeus description larger than english sparrow wings long and pointed tail moderately long and noticeably forked adult male rich purplish and bluish black the lower velvety black feet and bill black eyes dark brown adult female blackish glossed with blue above forehead underparts and imperfect collar around neck gray belly whitish immature birds like the adult female length 8 inches range in pennsylvania a fairly common but extremely local migrant and summer resident from early or mid april to mid august and occasionally later nest made of leaves and grasses in a cavity in a tree crevice in a building or in a bird house from 12 to 40 feet from the ground eggs 3 to 7 white spluttering notes some of which resemble an old fashioned music box announce the return of the martins to their accustomed nesting quarters gracefully the glossy birds sail about calling to each other capturing insects and perching near or upon their nest they have almost all together given up nesting in hollow trees and prefer to use bird boxes it appears though in such towns as venesburg ligonia and cowder sport they nest in any cranny among the buildings which they can find martins are very fond of dragonflies they have the interesting habit of bringing green leaves into the nest during summer either as new lining for the nests or to make the young birds cooler or for some other reason in late summer they band together sometimes in tremendous flocks depart for some congregating point along the new jersey or delaware coast or elsewhere and prepare for the journey to their south american winter home purple martins are temperamental in choosing their nesting quarters certain towns do not please them and they will not apparently nest in other towns they nest anywhere cliffs fallow eaves fallow petrocalidon albifrons albifrons refine skew description about the size of an english sparrow but with long wings tail of moderate length not noticeably forked sexes similar adults forehead buffy white crown and back glossy steel blue the latter obscurely streaked with white cheeks ear patches chin and throat rich reddish brown back of neck narrow collar and under parts grayish belly white wings and tail blackish glossed with blue rump pale reddish or orange brown very noticeable in flight young dull grayish brown 
the rump noticeably rusty though not as plainly so as in adult length 6 inches range in pennsylvania a fairly common migrant throughout and extremely local summer resident chiefly in the northern counties from early or mid april to early or mid september nest a bottle shaped structure of mud lined with grasses and feathers the funnel shaped entrance to the nest pointed outward and downward it is built under the eaves of a barn or other building always on the outside or on a cliff or bridge abutment usually many nests are found together eggs 4 to 7 white or creamy white speckled with reddish brown look for the buffy rump patch of this slow flying graceful swallow which gathers mud for its nest without alighting on the ground and whose conversational twitterings sound like the squeaks produced by rubbing a piece of wet rubber with the finger in early spring and during later summer several kinds of swallows will be found together in the migratory flocks cliff swallows are easily driven from their nests by english sparrows or startlings they will not use bird boxes put out for them barn swallow hirando rustica erythrograstis bodda art description smaller and slenderer but longer than an english sparrow with long pointed wings and very long deeply forked tail which is noticeable in flight or while the bird is perched on a wire adult male forehead chin and throat rich reddish brown line through eye and band across breast blackish upper parts blackish highly glossed with steel blue the inner margins of the tail feathers marked with white spots rest of under parts and wing linings pale reddish brown adult female similar but duller young birds almost white below and with only moderately long though noticeably forked tails length 7 inches range in pennsylvania an abundant migrant and summer resident from mid april to late august or early september nest a cup of mud lined with feathers and few grasses built upon a rafter on the inside of a barn or other building usually in a more or less inaccessible spot eggs 3 to 7 white spotted with brown every farmer boy loves the cheerful swallows which twitter so amiably and circle so tirelessly about the barn capturing insects above nearby pools and darting through the doors or sometimes through mere cracks in the boards so unerringly these birds have good reason to be popular for they are not only beautiful and companionable neighbors but they are distinctly beneficial because of their capturing of myriads of flying insects which they eat or feed to their ravenous young i once saw a black snake at the nest of a barn swallow high on an upper rafter in a barn loft and it had eaten two of the young before i interrupted its meal end of section 19section 20 of an introduction to the birds of pennsylvania this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org read by doreen marcot an introduction to the birds of pennsylvania by george mitch sutton section 20 tree swallow white-bellied swallow to blue-headed vireo tree swallow white-bellied swallow Iridoprocne by color, Belot. Description: Smaller than an English sparrow, tail of moderate length and not deeply forked. Adult male, upper parts glossy blue-green, brightest on crown and back, less colorful on wings and tail. Entire underparts pure white. Female, similar but duller. Young birds, like the female, length. Six inches, range in Pennsylvania, a fairly common migrant throughout, but a rather rare, 
and local summer resident in northern counties and at high altitudes, from early April to late August. As a nesting bird, it is almost always found near a body of water. Nest of grasses and other vegetable matter lined with feathers placed in a cavity, an old woodpecker nest, or in a bird box, usually from 15 to 60 feet from the ground, in a tree at the edge of a lake or in the water. Eggs, 3 to 7. White. The swallows are easily distinguished once their outstanding characters are firmly fixed in the mind. This bird has white, absolutely unmarked underparts. The bank swallow's white breast is crossed with a brownish band. The rough wing's throat and breast are gray. I have seen tree swallows nesting at Conneaut Lake, Crawford County, and at several of the lakes in the mountains of northeastern Pennsylvania. Bank swallow. Riparia, riparia, riparia. Linnaeus. Other name. Sand Martin. Description. Smallest of the swallow family. Considerably lighter and slenderer than an English sparrow. Sexes similar. Adults. Grayish brown above. Wings and tail noticeably darker than back in flight. Underparts white. Breast crossed by a narrow, dull brown band. Distinctly noticeable when the bird is at rest. Tail not deeply forked. Length about five and a quarter inches. Range in Pennsylvania, formerly found at several points during summer where it does not nest now due to pollution of the streams. It is a fairly common migrant and local summer resident from mid-April to early or mid-September. Nest of grasses and rootlets lined with feathers placed at the end of a long burrow which is usually several feet above high water mark and sometimes five to six feet long. Eggs three to six white or creamy white. This little swallow usually nests in large colonies. It has a graceful fluttering flight, much less direct and rapid than that of the somewhat larger, though amazingly similar, rough-winged swallow, which occurs in many parts of Pennsylvania where the bank swallow does not nest. In identifying this species, take care to observe closely the brown band across the breast and the light brown back which contrasts with the blacker wings and tail. Rough-winged swallow. Stilgidopteryx serapennis serapennis. Audubon. Description. About the size of a barn swallow. Outer web of outer primary with tiny recurved hooks along the entire edge, noticeable when the thumb or fingernail is drawn along it. These hooklets are sometimes absent in the female. The purpose they serve is not known. Adults, above brownish-gray, quite dark on wings and tail, throat and breast pale brownish-gray, belly white. Immature, similar, but the outer web of the outer primary has no hooklets, and the gray of the throat and breast is sometimes washed with reddish-brown. Length, five and three-quarter inches. Range in Pennsylvania, a rather rare, somewhat local, and never abundant summer resident from April 15 to September 1, found almost altogether in the more southern and less mountainous counties. Nest of grasses and weed stalks lined with finer materials, but not with feathers. Placed at the end of a burrow in a bank, as is the bank swallows, or in crevices in rocks along a stream, in abutments of bridges, or sometimes in pipes about dwellings which stand near streams. Eggs, three to six, white. The rough wing's graceful sweeping flight is less fluttering than that of the bank swallow. All of the swallows usually allow fairly close approach and therefore should not be difficult to identify. Cedar waxwing, Bombacilla cedrorum, Belot. Other names, cherry bird, cedar bird. Description. Plumage soft and silken. Feet rather short and small. Head with high crest. Bill small. Adult male. Head, neck, breast, and back glossy olive brown. Forehead and line through eye, chin, and throat black. A white line extending backward from lower mandible to beneath eye. Black forehead bordered behind with white. Wings, rump, and tail blue-gray. Secondaries tipped with small waxen appendages. Tail prominently tipped with pale yellow. Sides and belly sulfur yellow. 
Undertail coverts whitish. Bill, feet, and eyes black. Female, similar, but usually lacks the waxen appendages on the secondaries. Young birds, similar, but with only a small crest and noticeably streaked. Waxen appendages sometimes occur on the secondaries of the female as well as on the tips of the tail feathers in both sexes. Length, a little over 7 inches. Range in Pennsylvania, an erratic and irregular permanent resident, being sometimes abundant, sometimes absent for several seasons, usually seen in flocks. Nest, neatly built of weed stems, twigs, and fibers, lined with softer materials, placed in a tree, usually from 12 to 20 feet from the ground and toward the end of the branch. Nesting often takes place rather late in summer. I have seen a female sitting upon her eggs as late as September 11. Eggs, three to six, blue-gray, spotted with black. The cedar waxwing's trim form and sleek plumage make him an outstandingly handsome bird. He has no song, however, giving forth only a fine, shrill ee which is scarcely audible to some observers. A flock of these plump-bodied birds sometimes sit in a treetop, their feathers fluffed out. They catch insects like flycatchers. Sometimes they indulge in a queer little dance, in a cherry tree which is full of fruit. They sometimes pass tidbits between them in a strangely deliberate, polite fashion. They are very fond of cedar berries, poke berries, and their fruits of the Virginia creeper, but the name cherry bird is well earned. Remember the crest, the upright carriage, the flocking tendency, and the yellow-tipped tail of this species. The waxwings are the only birds which have their tails tipped with yellow. The northern or bohemian waxwing, Bombacilla garula, is to be found rarely in winter. Records of this species in Pennsylvania are very desirable. It is like the cedar waxwing in color, but it is larger. The undertail coverts are rich reddish brown, and the wings are marked with a white patch on the primary coverts, white tips on the secondaries, and white and yellow edgings on the primaries. When bohemian waxwings appear, they are likely to be docile and unsuspicious, and will therefore give the observer an excellent opportunity to identify them satisfactorily. Northern Shrike, Vanius borealis, Vilot. Other name, Butcher Bird. Description. Size of robin, but with larger head and large, strongly hooked bill. Sexes similar. Adults. Top of head, hind neck, and back light gray. Lightest along outer edges of scapulars and fading into white on rump and upper tail coverts. Line above eye, white. Broad line through eye to ear coverts, wings and tail, black. Tips of the secondaries, base of the primaries, and tips of outer tail feathers white. Underparts, finely barred with light gray. Bill, feet, and eyes black. Young birds, brownish gray with dark brown wings, and tail which are marked with white, much as in the adults. The underparts are finely barred with brownish. Length, ten and a half inches. Range in Pennsylvania, Rather rare winter visitant from late October or November to March. It is found chiefly in the northern counties in more or less open regions. The shrike's striking black and white plumage will suggest a mockingbird. Its harsh cries have a sinister quality, however, suggesting a bird of prey. The heavy hooked bill and strong feet assisted in capturing the mice, small birds, and insects, which are its food, and which it impales upon thorns or on barbed wire. Records of the species are desirable. Migrant Shrike, Lanius Ludovicanius migrans, W. Palmer. Other name, Butcher Bird. Description, smaller than robin, with proportionally large head and strongly hooked bill. Sex is similar. Top of head, hind neck and back, clear gray. Shading into whitish at outer edges of scapulars and on rump and upper tail coverts. Wings and tail, black. Tips of secondaries, base of primaries, and tips of outer tail feathers, white. Broad band through eye, back to ear coverts, black. Underparts, white. Grayer on breast and belly, which are not barred. Range in Pennsylvania. A rather rare and local migrant and summer resident from early March to November. 
nesting chiefly in the Lake Erie coastal region and elsewhere in flat, open country. Nest, a bulky affair made of twigs, lined with feathers, placed in a thorn tree not far from the ground. Eggs, three to six, white, spotted with gray or olive gray. When a shrike moves from one perch to another, it drops to within a few inches of the ground and moves along with characteristic buzzing flight, at which times its gray, black, and white plumage is conspicuous. In the field, its head appears large, and it is given to perching in prominent barren places, on the top of a tree or on a wire. The Vireos The Vireos are a difficult group for the beginner. They are dull in color. They come at a time when other birds are abundant, and they do not, for the most part, have particularly noticeable songs. In identifying the vireos, it is well to remember that all of them move deliberately, turning the head from side to side pensively, and crawling about the branches in a very characteristic fashion. No vireo has any white in the tail, as have many of the otherwise similarly colored warblers. Note that the first three species have no wing bars. The other three have two wing bars. Red-eyed Vireo Vireo Silva Olivacea Linnaeus Other name? Preacher Bird Description Size of English Sparrow Adults Top of head blue-gray Line above eye white Bordered above with a blackish line Line through eye blackish Rest of upper parts olive green Under parts whitish Washed with olive green and pale yellowish on the sides, eyes reddish or red-brown, young, similar but duller, length six and a quarter inches, range in Pennsylvania, abundant migrant and summer resident from late April or early May to late September and October. Nest, a pensile cup made of vegetable fibers, cobwebs, and so forth, lined with grapevine bark, placed on a branch of a low sapling, usually from five to ten feet from the ground. Eggs, three or four, white, with a few dark brown spots. The oft-repeated song of this bird, which is delivered all during the warm hours of the summer days, has been responsible for the name Preacher Bird. This song, given while the bird searches for food among the leaves, is repeated at intervals of a few seconds, sometimes apparently for hours at a stretch. Look for the red eye in shady woodlands where there are deciduous trees. The harsh note of alarm is not unlike the well-known cry of the catbird. Philadelphia Vireo Vireo Silva Philadelphica Cassin Description Like the red-eyed Vireo, but smaller, with slightly shorter bill, greener upper parts, and rather decidedly yellow underparts range in Pennsylvania, a rather rare and little-known migrant in late April and early May, and in September, found usually in alder thickets in the company of various species of the warbler family. This species is not easy to identify in the field. Its song, which is like the red eyes, but more rapidly delivered, may be heard in the spring, but in the fall, the chances are the bird will pass unnoticed since neither its song nor its color in any way attracts attention. All records are desirable. Warbling Vireo Vireo Silva Gilva Gilva Vilot Description Like the red eye, but smaller, less strikingly marked, the top of head being almost the same color as the back, the sides less tinged with yellow. Length 5 and 3 quarter inches Range in Pennsylvania a common summer resident from late April to late September, usually found in or near towns. Nest, a pensile cup, made much like the red eyes, but found high in shade trees in towns or along country roadsides. Eggs, three or four, white, with a few small spots. Dull, plain in appearance, this is one of our most perfectly named birds, for its song is a warble, a somewhat unmusical, wheezy, lisping warble, usually delivered from the shade of a big tree. Yellow-throated Vireo Lanivirio flavifrons, Vilat Description About the size of the red eye, but with line in front of and around the eye 
and chin, throat, and breast clear light yellow. Two prominent white wing bars and the blackish tertials strongly edged with white. The sexes are similar. Length, 6 inches. Range in Pennsylvania. Fairly common, but somewhat irregular summer resident from late April and May to September. Nest. A deep pencil cup swung from a branch high in a large deciduous tree standing at the edge of a woodland or in an open field. Eggs. Three or four. Buffy white a few red-brown spots. The song of this species, which is deliberate and alto in quality, has been written, Mary, Mary, come here, the ear with a downward inflection. White-eyed vireo, Vireo greasius greasius, Bodert. Description, smaller than the red eye and with a more sprightly manner. Line above and around eye, yellow. Wing with two yellowish or white bars. Sides yellowish, breast and belly grayish, chin and throat white, eyes white, rather noticeable in the field. Length, five and a quarter inches. Range in Pennsylvania, an extremely rare migrant in the western part, east of the mountains somewhat commoner, particularly along the Susquehanna and Delaware drainage, where it sometimes nests. Nest, a neat pencil cup placed in a low bush or tree, usually not far from the ground. Eggs, three or four, white, with a few dark brown spots. The song, which may be written, Pit Pititachi Weir, does not suggest a vireo at all. Remember that this bird will be found among low, thick bushes. Blue-headed vireo. Lanivirio solitarius solitarius, Wilson. Description, size of the red eye, but upper part of the head rich blue-gray, with a prominent line in front of and around eye white, wings with two noticeable bars, sides yellow, irregularly washed with olive green, chin, throat, breast, and belly white, length a little over five and a half inches, range in Pennsylvania, a fairly common migrant and summer resident. It is the first of the vireos to arrive in spring appearing in mid or latter April, and remaining until October. It nests only at high altitudes in the mountains or in the northern counties. Nest. A neat and beautifully built pencil cup, swung on a horizontal hemlock, which hazel or alder bough, usually deep in the woodlands. Eggs, three or four, white, with a few small black spots. The song of this handsome vireo is rich and beautiful. Easily the most musical of all our vireo songs. It is to be heard chiefly in the depths of the coniferous woodlands. Unusually elaborate and prolonged songs are sometimes given in the spring. Remember the prominent white eye ring of this species. End of chapter 20. Section 21 of An Introduction to the Birds of Pennsylvania. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. An Introduction to the Birds of Pennsylvania by George Miksha Sutton. Black and White Warbler, Magnolia Warbler. Black and White Warbler, Minealtilta varia, Linnaeus. Other names, Black and White Creeper, Black and White Creeping Warbler. Description, black and white all over, the colors about evenly balanced, giving bird in the field a streaked appearance, noticeable particularly in the male. Since no other warbler is thus streaked with black and white all over, it is thought that this description is sufficient. Females and young. Duller, the young with buffy washings on sides. Length, five and one-third inches. Range in Pennsylvania. A migrant and summer resident from late April and early May to September. It is rather local as a summer resident, though it may occur in any suitable woodland. Nest. A cup of rootlets and fine grasses placed on the ground at the base of a sapling or a fallen bough or log, usually in rather open woodland. Eggs, four or five, white, with a neat wreath of fine red-brown spots about the larger end. 
This bird is nearly always seen creeping about the trunks and larger branches of trees, and its boldly streaked plumage is unmistakable. Its song, which has been written, We see, we see, we see, we see, is wiry and unmusical, and the untrained ear will probably not catch it. Look for this bird in any woodland, particularly where there are deciduous trees. The southern prothonotary warbler, Protonotaria citria, is rarely recorded in the southern counties. This species has blue-gray wings and tail, no wing bars, and the head and breast are rich orange-yellow. Records are desirable. The yellow-throated warbler, Dendroica dominica dominica, is a long-billed species which looks a good deal like a black-and-white warbler with a yellow throat. It occurs in the southernmost counties. It may be found as a nesting bird. Worm-eating warbler, Helmetheros vermivorus gemellin. Description. Crown and superciliary buffy brown, prominent black streak at either side of crown, black streak through the eye, underparts buffy, the centers of the undertail coverts darker, upper parts olive green, much as in a vireo. Female and young, similar but duller. Length, five and a half inches. Range in Pennsylvania, in southern and particularly southwestern Pennsylvania, this species is a fairly common summer resident from early May to mid-September. It is found chiefly in deciduous woodlands along streams. It is rare in central and northern counties. Nest, a neatly built cup of rootlets, hair, and vegetable fiber placed on the ground, usually at the base of a sapling. Eggs, four or five, white, finely speckled, with reddish-brown. The song of this comparatively little-known species is very much like that of a chipping sparrow. If you hear a chipping sparrow in the woods, you had better look for the bird. You may make a startling discovery, since chipping sparrows are rarely found away from human dwellings in Pennsylvania. The worm-eating warbler is nearly always found near the ground, and it is usually necessary to keep quiet so as to let the bird approach if you wish to have a good look at it. Blue-winged warbler Vermivora pinus, Linnaeus. Other name, blue-winged yellow warbler. Description, adult male, front of head, breast, and belly, bright clear yellow, sharp black line through eye, back of head, and back olive green, wings and tail blue-gray, the wings with two noticeable white bands, the tail with white spots at tips of inner webs of outer feathers. Female, much duller, the whole top of the head being greenish, as a rule. Length, four and three-quarter inches. Range in Pennsylvania, a decidedly local summer resident from early May until mid-September to be found in all but the mountainous counties. Nest, a cup made of leaves, lined with fine grasses, placed at the base of a weed or a little bush, usually in a low meadow or at the edge of an alder swamp. Eggs, three to five, white spotted with reddish-brown, chiefly at the larger end. The characteristic song of this bird may be written zwi chi, the former syllable with an inhalant, the latter an exhalant quality. Later in the summer, other songs are given which combine this song with many chips. Look for the blue wing near the ground in a swampy situation among alders or willows. In the fall, it sometimes occurs in higher woodlands along with other migrating species. Golden-winged warbler Vermifora chrysoptera, Linnaeus. Description, male, top of head, yellow, line through eye, and chin and throat, black. An area from lower mandible back to neck, white, back of head, neck, wings, and tail, gray, wing with lesser and most of greater coverts, pale yellow, outer feathers of tail with white spots on inner webs, breast and belly white, the sides washed with grayish. Female, similar but duller, the black of the head being replaced with gray, length 5 inches. Range in Pennsylvania, a rather uncommon and local summer resident from early May to September, found in low meadows or in bushy edges of woodlands. Nest of leaves lined with finer materials and often somewhat arched over with leaves, placed at the base of a bush. Eggs, 4 or 5, white, speckled with brown. The song may be written, C-Z-Z-Z. The Brewster's and Lawrence's warblers, hybrid forms which result from the interbreeding of the blue-winged and golden-winged warblers, sometimes occur in Pennsylvania. 
The typical Brewster's warbler has the white underparts and yellow marked wings of the golden wing. The breast and belly of Lawrence's warblers are yellow, and there are two prominent white wing bars, as in the blue wing. Nashville Warbler Vermifora rufocapilla rufocapilla Wilson Description Adult male Upper part of head blue-gray with a partly concealed rufous crown patch and noticeable white eye ring. Chin, throat, breast, and belly clear, strong yellow. Upper parts olive green without markings in wings or tail. Female, duller. Immature, almost unmarked, the eye ring being buffy and not noticeable, the sides being washed with buffy. Length, four and three-quarter inches. Range in Pennsylvania, a regular and often abundant migrant in May and September, rare and very local as a summer resident in northern counties and at high altitudes. Nest, on the ground, near a log or at the base of a sapling. Eggs, four or five, white, speckled with red-brown. The song is a series of chips introduced by the syllables We see, we see, we see. Orange-crowned warbler, Vermifora salata salata, say. Description. Olive green above, crowned with more or less concealed dull orange patch, not easily seen in the field. Under parts an obscure ring about eye, dull yellow. Sides irregularly streaked with olive green, sexes similar. Young birds, duller, length, five inches. Range in Pennsylvania, the orange crown is one of our little-known warblers, which may be considerably commoner than we suppose. It occurs as a migrant in May and September, and is to be found chiefly in swampy situations, principally among alders. The song, which is not often heard in Pennsylvania, according to my experience, is considerably like that of a Nashville or Tennessee warbler, being a series of chips, but the tempo is different. All such songs should be thoroughly investigated to make certain some rare bird is not passed by. Tennessee Warbler, Vermifora peregrina, Wilson. Description, adult male, crown clear gray, prominent white superciliary, line through eye black, under parts white, washed along sides with faint yellow, upper parts olive green, wings unmarked, outer tail feathers marked with white, along the inner margin. Female, similar, but crown tinged with greenish. Immature, olive green above, brightest on rump, dull yellowish below, brightest on the undertail coverts. Length, five inches. Range in Pennsylvania, a migrant in May and September, apparently fairly regular and common in spring among the mountains, rare east of the mountains, but equally abundant everywhere in the fall. The song of this bird is a series of chips, the tempo of which changes twice, the most rapid part of the song coming at the last. This bird is like a vireo in color, but not in actions. Young birds are sometimes exceedingly common in the fall. Perula warbler, blue yellow backed warbler, Comsos lipis americana pusilla, Wilson. Description Adult male, head all but chin and throat blue gray extending down to upper back, scapulars, wings, and tail. Back, dull yellow. Wings with two prominent white wing bars, outer tail feathers with white along inner veins, chin, throat, and lower breast, clear yellow. A dusky band across upper breast, which is bordered below with reddish brown. Belly, sides, and under tail coverts, white. There is an almost complete, but not particularly noticeable, white eye ring. Female, similar, but less brightly colored, breast usually without much trace of the dusky and reddish-brown band. Young birds, similar to the female. Length, four and three-quarter inches. Range in Pennsylvania, common as a migrant during May and September, rather local as a summer resident, having been known to nest at several points in the state. Nest, generally built of and among tree moss in a conifer or other tree, usually from 20 to 40 feet from the ground. Eggs, four or five, white, speckled with brown at the larger end. The thin, squeaky song of this species is not noticeable. It might be written, pitsy, 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 si. A thin, insect-like ascending trill is also occasionally given. This trill resembles one of the songs of the redstart. Cape May warbler, Dendroica tigrina, gamelan. 
Description, adult male, crown, black, the feathers tipped with gray toward the back of the head, patch about eye, including ear coverts, rich orange-brown, forepart of superciliary, chin and throat, sides of neck, breast, sides, and rump, clear yellow, lower throat, breast, and sides, strikingly streaked with black, wing with two wing bars, which are so broad that they merge, forming a white patch, outer tail feathers with white spots on inner veins at tip, female, much duller, the brown of the side of the head being replaced with olive green, the yellow of rump and underparts dull, sometimes hardly noticeable the wing bars narrow and obscure. Young birds, like their parents but duller, the white wing patch in the young male usually being evident. Length, five inches. Range in Pennsylvania, a migrant, rare as a rule, in the spring, when it is seen during May. It is often abundant in the fall from early September through October, and sometimes later. This very handsome warbler can hardly be called a songster. The song is thin and squeaky, sometimes like the shrill squeaking of a large insect. C, 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 it might be written, the symbols becoming louder toward the end. Usually the song is given from a rather high perch. The heavily streaked breast is a pretty good field mark for any age or plumage of this bird. Yellow Warbler, Dendroica estiva estiva gemellin. Other names, Summer Yellow Bird, Wild Canary, erroneous. Description, adult male, head and underparts bright yellow, the breast, sides, and belly streaked with reddish brown, back, wings, and tail dull yellowish green, brightest on rump, and obscurely streaked, wing with two yellow wing bars, and the inner webs of all the tail feathers, but the central pair yellow, showing plainly in flight. Female, similar, but much duller, the underparts almost altogether without streaks. Length, a little over five inches. Range in Pennsylvania, an abundant migrant and summer resident from late April and early May to early September. Nest, a neat, usually deep cup made of vegetable fiber lined with wool, feathers, and soft materials held in place with a few horsehairs. Eggs, three to five, white or bluish white, spotted with gray, chiefly about the larger end. The yellow warbler's fondness for lilac bushes and other shrubbery about our yards leads him to be a favorite and familiar bird. His bright though unmusical song is almost incessant during the days of early spring, when much time is spent prior to building the nest, in chasing about, sparring with rival males, or in courting. During these pursuits the yellow inner veins of the tail feathers are likely to be plainly seen. Black-throated blue warbler, Dendroica cerulicens cerulicens gemellin. Description, male, upper parts dark gray-blue, lightest on forehead and crown, face, throat, upper breast, and sides solid black, belly and undertail coverts white, base of primaries with a white spot, rather obscure in some individuals, tips of inner veins of outer tail feathers white. Female, dull greenish-gray above, pale buffy-gray below, with white spot at the base of the primaries, which is always characteristic of this species in any plumage. The female has an obscure whitish line above the eye. Length, five and one quarter inches. Range in Pennsylvania, a common migrant in May and September, found as a summer resident in the northern and more mountainous counties, where it occurs almost wherever there is a rhododendron growth. Nest, a neat but rather shallow cup, usually placed in rhododendron two to three feet from the ground, often in the deepest part of the woodland. Eggs, three or four, white or creamy white, spotted about larger end with reddish brown. The song of this species is deliberate and rich, though droning and insect-like rather than musical. It might be written, zuri, 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 zee, or zui, 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 zui. The colors of the male are unmistakable, but the dull-colored female and young will puzzle many a beginner. Remember the white patch at the base of the primaries. Look for the bird in midsummer in rhododendron thickets. Myrtle Warbler, Yellow Rumped Warbler, Dendroica coronata coronata lineus. Description, Adult Male in Spring. Crown patch, patches at sides of chest and rump, clear yellow. White line above eye. Rest of upper parts blue-gray, back streaked with black, 
wings with two white wing bars, outer tail feathers tipped with white on the inner webs, chin and throat white, sides of breast black, merging into streaks along the sides, belly and undertail coverts white, adult female similar but browner, and the black breast patches replaced with streaks. Immature and adults in winter, brownish, the yellow patches on crown, sides of chest, and rump, obscure. Length, five and one-half inches. Range in Pennsylvania, a common migrant in late April and May and September and October. Occasional as a winter resident, it has been noted thus principally at Erie. The myrtle warbler is usually not shy and may be identified easily. In its winter range, it spends much of its time on or near the ground, where it eats many seeds. While with us, it is usually seen in the lower trees and bushes, where a good view may be obtained of the upper parts with the bright yellow rump patch. The song is not noticeable. It does not have any particularly accented notes and will not be of much use in identifying the bird. Myrtle warblers are to be found in any sort of woodland, they have no preference for coniferous trees during migration, though they nest in them in Canada. Magnolia Warbler, Dendroica magnolia, Wilson. Description. Adult male, crown, blue-gray, line above eye and spot under eye, white. Area in front of and behind eye, black. Back, wings, and tail, blackish, wing with large white patch. Tail with the bases of the inner webs of all but the inner pair of feathers, white. Rump and underparts yellow, breast and sides heavily streaked with black, undertail coverts white. Adult female similar but duller, the underparts less heavily streaked. Immature, dull olive greenish above, without noticeable superciliary or spot under eye, but with two wing bars and markings on the tail same as in adult. Underparts yellow, obscurely streaked along the sides with black. Undertail coverts, white. Length, five and one-tenth inches. Range in Pennsylvania. As a migrant abundant in May and September, particularly the latter, when hordes of young birds are migrating. As a summer resident, rather rare and local, found principally among or near hemlock growth, chiefly in the northern and more mountainous counties. Nest, a shallow, neat cup made of fine twigs lined with finer materials and hair placed a few feet from the ground, often in a hemlock sapling. Eggs, three or four, white or creamy, with red-brown spots at larger end. This very active warbler may be squeaked up easily. As it dashes about, the white band at the base of the tail usually shows plainly, for it spreads its tail widely at times. The song is a brief, unmusical effort, which ends with a chopped-off falling inflection. End of section 21